the live stream. Right. And once that, and as I mentioned, so at the end of the day, I just click that off and I continue live streaming during the breaks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Yeah. So my recommendation would be um, during the breaks to mute yourself and to put on the um, screen share with the placeholder um, image that was included in the email. Right. Um, or or not do that and just let my embarrassing wife be the thing. Sure. I mean, your watching. background looks pretty lovely. If you want to just live stream your bookcase, that's perfect. I did that. I did that. And then my students used it for their backgrounds so that every time we have a meeting, <laughs> every time we have a meeting, they're in my, they're in my living room, which I find really, really annoying, you know, like. Uh, so. <laughs> do you feel a little bit of an invasion of privacy with that? A little bit, a little bit, a lot. Okay, let me return the host powers to you and your live stream now. So you are good to go. I hope you have good to reviews me. today. Of course, you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you for all your hard work this week. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. See you. Right. See you soon.
Hey, Yosef, how are you, man? Good morning, baby. What's up with you? Oh, can't get any better. Last day of school for real. Seriously, this is it? Yep, that's it. Goodbye, hmm. UTSOA. That's that's great. Goodbye, goodbye to the UTSOA. That's amazing. Uh, hold on, let me admit, admit Maurizio here. Uh, quick question. Oh, sorry. oh yeah, what's going? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the email you sent us is it for the collective presentation or the like, our own presentation? Hold on one second. What, what did you say? I can't. Uh, let me put my earphones on. Hold on. Hey, Mauro. Hola, hola. Hi, David. Hola, hola. Yourself. How are you, man? Good, good. Good. You're all dressed up you? warm. You're all dressed up warm. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, it's very cold here. That's it's a good to see your lovely face. I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, thank you very much. How's everything, <laughs> how's everything going down there? Uh, you know, we are in lockdown. It's yeah, right now. Very, yeah, I, I mean, there's uh, there's very little uh, 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 motion around uh, around town. Uh, right. You don't you don't go out unless you really have to. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, are, are I, you guys like, are you guys like it's not like I, I was talking to a friend in Italy and he was all like allowed to leave his apartment once a week, and no one else was allowed to leave. It was just him allowed to leave. To go no, we, no, yeah, we can leave at any time, but uh, it's better not to. So I spent ninety-seven point eight of my time at home. I Dude, I'm sorry. So, so yeah. I'm, 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 it breaks my heart to hear that. Uh, yeah. uh, any so and any uh, uh, any any consequence to the lockdown? I mean, anything with that with like the numbers there getting better or staying uh, the same? They are they are the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because uh, I think uh, people actually reacted well because at the beginning it was really awful, especially. Uh, in, I remember on the coast, was, in yeah, the coast. was just like hammered to, to yeah. a crazy extent. Yeah, so people took it seriously because of what happened. You know, Maurizio, the really weird thing is that I don't know that it's any better here. You know, like the the uh, North Dakota is actually if you on uh, a per capita basis, it's the most dangerous country in the world to be in. Right no now. kidding. Yeah, I think one in 16 people has COVID there. I mean, the numbers oh, wow. are just completely outrageous. It, 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 it's such a, a freak show here. There's, there's no other real word you can use for it. Yeah. The, uh, it, it it's the, the, the most, the, the craziest thing you've ever seen. Uh, so, much, so much for freedom. Of, um, <laughs> you, can, you cannot say no to an American to anything. No, I, I think I think Americans, you know, they have the they have the right to be idiots. I, I just wish they would, <laughs> I just wish they would also observe their right to be silent about being idiots. You know, I mean, that's, 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 <laughs> you have the right to remain silent about the fact that you're a complete and total idiot. You know, that doesn't hasn't yeah. happened. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. Anyway, I'm yeah. glad you're joining us. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you for inviting me. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I was hoping that things would get that, uh, and I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think that. I don't think the vaccines are going to be spread around the world fast enough to make uh, make teaching in Ecuador this summer a possibility. Yeah. But maybe and next yeah. fall. Yeah. Maybe next maybe. fall. Maybe. Would be, would maybe. Be option, maybe. You know? Yeah. Uh, I think it's scheduled to start in March, and I don't know in yeah. what quantities. So yeah. I think it's going to be either. Yeah, by June, July, or of next year, that we may have some control over the situation. So, so the Ecuador, are you guys? So, so we're in line for the, the vaccine that gives you two days of the worst possible. Hey, Fernando, this is good to meet you. Guys are here. Fernando, do you know Maurizio? Uh, um, I don't know him uh, Fernando, personally. Fernando, you're, you're muted, dude. Of course, this is the sentence of the year. You're muted, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys I've heard about other? Mauricio. I've heard about Mauricio, but I think I never met him in person. No, no. We, yeah, we never met. At some point, I contacted you, Fernando. Yeah. 
requesting for some uh, advice on oh. where, to, where to publish and all that. Wait, but, you, uh, when, you, when him, you were you in Kenya for advice? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, a good... <laughs> not a good idea. David knows that. <laughs> now, uh, uh, Fernando, uh, Maurizio and I talked together in, uh, in the Galapagos, actually, which with, I, I did the nicest teaching gig I've ever had uh, and the nicest partner to teach with on the planet. I mean, it I was know. just, it was a really oh, great yeah. vibe the whole time. I really enjoyed it. So yeah. Maurizio is yeah, yeah. uh, from Venezuela originally and had a, has a kind of a remarkable series of buildings he made in Venezuela and then moved to Ecuador as a consequence of many things. But uh, and it's, this practice, this fledgling practice, it starts, stops, starts, starts in Ecuador, which is quite really, really interesting. So I'm glad that you guys are meeting each other in person or face to face. Yeah, yeah. That's true, David. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Actually, I'm from uh, from Ecuador. I uh, when I went to study, uh, when I uh, went to do graduate studies to the United States, I stayed there for ten years, and then I married a Venezuelan, lived in Venezuela for thirteen years. That's what I meant about and, and now, Venezuela. And now I'm back. Yeah. Now back to Ecuador. Yeah. yeah, back to Ecuador. After one generation, I, I was 24 years away from, from Ecuador. So. Yeah. Hey, quickly, I'm going to ask a question here to Yusef. Yusef, you were asking me about the link. Is there? A, there's not a problem with the link. No, no, no. no, no. I, it worked fine. You, asked, you emailed me and Brandon uh, to send you some stuff. And I was wondering if you passed the Oh, yeah, I got, got that. Okay. Got that, got that, got that. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I got it. I, I, uh, uh. Uh, what do you expect uh, from uh, us or from me, David, the, uh, on the um, on uh, the, the comments? Are they uh, are they supposed to be on the theor uh, theoretical part of the projects or more on the you know uh, feasibility, constructability? But you'll, you'll see that the projects themselves are, uh, 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 there's some issues with feasibility. Yeah, is always the case in my, this is always the case with my projects. Uh, uh, but Maurizio, anything you want to talk about, everything is fair game, right? So, okay. so the, the, the students will, will set up the terms for the projects and I'll explain a little bit about that. But it's wide open, whatever you want to talk about. Literally, right. it, it can be code details to, to the state of the universe. Like, like all, everything is uh, all good. Uh, oh, there's Coleman. All right, sweet. So we're, I think all three of us are here. Uh, uh, hey, Yusef, would you send an email to the studio telling them to get their ass into Zoom? And I'm going to start with, the, with, the, with, with our, because we don't even have our first group here. Got it. All right, sweet. Uh, guys, give me actually give me one second, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll join you in, in two seconds. Coleman Coker, uh, Maurizio Luriaga. Coleman uh, 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 is a long uh, professor here of long standing. Uh, uh, he has uh, uh, years ago he was a partner with Samuel Mockby in a, in Mockby Coker, and uh, 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 he and, and and Sam Mockby ran that office, expanded it out into a rural studio and so forth. So. Coleman has a right. long, long okay. history of, of uh, uh, Coleman. Maurizio is a, uh, and I talked together two summers ago in uh, the Galapagos. He's a, an architect and professor in uh, Colombia. Uh, th th really some really remarkable and extraordinarily interesting uh, kind of uh, uh, buildings inspired by, by, by the good part of modernism, like, like interesting Le Corbusier, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So a, a quite intriguing architect. And I'm really I'm glad that you guys are uh, uh, getting a chance to meet. I'm seeing a couple of people uh, checking in. Gabrielle, are there other? Oh yeah, everybody's here. Sweet. Okay, great. All right. So let me. I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, I already introduced the students to you guys yesterday or the day before yesterday. I went over who you are, what you guys have done. So I'm going to keep that part. I'm not going to do normally, but I want to introduce the studio. I have a really reasonable uh, pace because there's five groups and we're going to do two. So we've got two hours to cover two groups. Uh, so it's a reasonable, pleasant schedule, kind of calm. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and uh, share a screen here. Give me one second. Introduce the project. So the studio is an advanced level studio. Uh, these are, it's a mixture of grads, undergrads, uh, half and half. The groups are, some groups are grads, some are undergrads, some are grad, undergrad. 
together. Most of the graduate students are in the end of their uh, 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 stay in the school. Most of the undergraduates are just starting in the advanced sequence. So there's a kind of crazy mix of, of knowledge bases uh, uh, that goes into the projects. You'll see that uh, a little bit, I think. The project itself, it comes from a competition. Uh, I, we, because we're teaching online, I thought a competition would help. Although the competition that turns out, we've, we've veered pretty far from what the competition is in, in pursuit of a series of other interests that I had. But the title of the studio is Hot, Humid, and Absolute. The subject is a school in, uh, in Sri Lanka. And the, the Hot, Humid, Absolute is really the thing I was most interested in in the, in the, the, the studio. So the project itself is a, a, is a, a school facility in Colombo. Uh, Colombo, the, the, the capital of Sri Lanka on the southwest coast of Sri Lanka. Uh, and the, I'll tell you a little bit more about it, but the, 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 you can see here on the, the lower uh, right, a kind of image of the, the competition site. It's in a in, in a in an in an exurb of uh, of Colombo. Uh, Colombo was a kind of coastal town along a ridge along the coast along a high ground, and actually the site, as I'll show you in a minute, is in what are becoming rapidly becoming uh, suburban city, uh, ex-urban city, or, or a really urban. It's really gradually being organized, but it's wetlands that have been farmlands, wetlands, a canal system and so forth, a kind of problematic area of the city. The program itself that we were given was just a kind of loose program for a school. Uh, there's no, each of the students has a kind of idea about what the school is that they're making. Um, and that they'll, they'll talk about that, but, the, but we tended to move away from the actual school. It was, I just realized looking through the presentations that you may see zero images of a classroom and zero images of like a lecture hall, which is crazy as hell, but it has to do with where, the, the, where we focused on the, the project uh, uh, really, which is on the one hand in a hot and humid. I mean, I love the idea of hot and humid. I like, I, I mean, I, it, it, it's one of those weird things. You, you get the sense that the entire world is gradually becoming hot, humid, and that that the the, the on the one hand, you know, uh, where we live in Austin used to be Mediterranean. Now it's arguably hot, humid. Hot, humid as a as a kind of zone is expanding uh, around the world. On the one hand, and then the other thing uh, about it that I find really intriguing is that it is uh, an area of the world in which a tremendous amount of construction is going on. And then the third uh, thing I think is really intriguing about it is that it's it's a situation which is so dire, humidity and heat, it's so problematic that it's among the most inventive forces in environmental climatic conditions in, in architectural invention. So, I mean, I, this Katsura Villa, for example, one of my favorite hot, humid buildings. I mean, even though it gets cold as hell in uh, Kyoto in the wintertime, the hot, humid condition in the summertime is so, it's so unpleasant that the architecture actually responds to that as the primary condition with this kind of lifted uh, uh, these panels that open creating shade and so forth and in the winter time you huddle under a blanket next to a next to a cold brazier that could burn your building down but at least in the summertime you know it, it, it's it, it's manageable so I, I like that that idea very much there's three factors this expanding climatic condition the fact that there's so much construction going on in that zone and then the fact that actually hot humid tends to lead towards architectural invention because of its desperation I mean, and there, there's no agreement really on what that mechanism of invention should be. There are different strategies. Now, on the, the traditional strategy has been light construction, lifted, uh, open, as in this uh, the Marika Alberton house here on the left by, by, by uh, uh, Merkut. But a mass has also been used to deal with humidity, uh, primarily by, by making kind of here at Louis Kahn in Dakar, I mean, by making very large, very heavy structures that stay cool. And we talked to a number of architects over the semester, including uh, 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 Weiss and Manfredi, who were doing a building in New Delhi, and which is less humid and less hot, but still hot, humid is a problem there, who are using mass and cool geothermal cool to basically keep the building at a cool enough temperature that actually you offset the heat. You don't offset the humidity. You have to deal with that in other ways by air movement and so forth. But there's, there's no agreement about what the correct strategy is for dealing with uh, 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 humidity. So the, 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 the issues about, about uh, uh, that the, the also I like to hot humid uh, was the first one. The second one has to do with urbanization. I mean, I, it just seems to be this kind of idea that kind of that this global expansion, global construction, the, the kind of massive kind of unchecked growth of cities, largely because of the uh, availability of private capital uh, and, and the, the kind of wholesale uh, turnover of the making of public space 
from governments or government organizations to developers and private interests. That really interests me. And we, we did a lot of reading about the whole notion of, of, of how that urbanization does and does not generate civic space. And that's, I think, the thing that you'll see in the project. This is just to me the, the, the core problem, if hot and humid. And then how do you generate with individual buildings a kind of question of civic space? That, the, that dilemma, uh, 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 linked to the idea of uh, sustainability is arguably the reason why you see so much interest right now in absolute architectures. We read a bit about the possibility of absolute architecture uh, by O'Reilly talking about the relationship of these kinds of forms and civic space and uh, uh, not linked to sustainability, but uh, arguably this is a kind of architecture which is, is being linked to sustainability as a consequence of the fact that it's relatively loose with regard to program and uh, it's relatively systematic with regard to construction and as a consequence, it doesn't require certain kinds of, uh, 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 it offers certain kinds of possibilities that were not offered before. I mean, this is, I think a good example of what I had, what I had in mind early on, this is that Baumschlager, I believe 2226 is kind of building that heats and cools itself, but it achieves this kind of condition by being ruthlessly conceived in section as a repetitive building. So those are the those are the ideas that were going into the studio, which is to a certain degree why you're not going to see a lot of classrooms. I mean, to a certain degree, the buildings are at the school as a vehicle to try to make a building that generates civic space in a in a hot and humid climate in an urbanizing condition. I want to mention a couple of other things about the competition. Uh, one is that the competition specifically, I don't know if you had a chance to look at the brief, the competition specifically asked the, the students to extend the legacy of Jeffrey Bawa. And that in our studio uh, went, or it, went or it didn't go awry. Uh, I think we all admire Jeffrey Bawa, but the issue of twofold issue of, on the one hand, looking at modernism as a form of colonialism uh, I, 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 to a certain degree threw that out the window. And then the second the idea that Bawa was working from within a Sri Lankan culture and that we as Westerners looking from without that Sri Lankan culture and coming in and trying to make any kinds of reasonable assessments about what a contextual architecture might arise from led students in other directions away from Baba. You'll see that there are ideas about contextualism and there are ideas about how a contextual architecture arises, but it doesn't really arise from extending the legacy of this great entitled modernist who is operating from within a Sri Lankan society, even though quite remarkable buildings. I mean, generally speaking, you'll see that the buildings tended more towards uh, uh, this kind of idea of, of, a, of a kind of liberating uh, 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 kind of thoughtfulness uh, within this condition rather than a... Uh, uh, all right, so a couple more things about uh, uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, precipitation here is compared to Texas on the right. I mean, it's we get the, the uh, Colombo here on the, this dot gives you some sense it's wetter than even the wettest part of uh, Texas, it, arguably wetter than the wettest part of the, the US uh, uh, here in, in inches. The site itself here in red sits in, here's that coastal ridge of uh, Colombo, the old city. This it was uh, uh, for many years, uh, wetlands and farmlands. At, at, at one point, the kind of Colombo, the, the other villages were here on the higher grounds along the river. And then this has gradually begun to be infilled with city. And, and as it's begun to be infilled with city, it's been drained. What we're looking at here are a system of canals that were put in by the Dutch to, to move through that landscape. Those have all been to a certain degree supplanted by roads. And the, one of those canals goes by the, uh, the site itself. Uh, those canals are now problematic. They're largely, uh, 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 filled with dirt and with detritus. And uh, they're also the, the breeding place of dengue mosquitoes. So there's, there's a, a lot of issues with the idea of those canals being viable public space. You'll see that almost all the students have dealt with uh, this particular fact. It's worth noting that the site itself is in a, the, the one thing about the site, which I, I really liked about this project, I like the fact that we did, couldn't go to the site because it meant that site issues didn't, weren't really the things that predominated the discussion. Um, but the one thing about the site that is particularly viable is the fact that it floods. It floods annually in uh, monsoons and, and it will probably end up flooding more than annually. Currently floods up to a meter, but we, I think, assume the worst case conditions and you'll see that in the projects. Most of the projects deal somehow with that flooding as a, 
built in condition in the tropics as uh, Mauritius is a, a your your, uh, your memorable solar diagram right the sun is essentially overhead all year long it, it doesn't vary a tremendous amount it's there arguably 12 hours a day and there's 12 hours of darkness it springs up into the sky very directly it's mostly an overhead condition there's not long low not many hours of low slanting sun it's almost entirely a problem of overhead sun with actually a very very kind of limited range and this also then uh, it means that the kind of temperature range uh, is fairly consistent over the course of a year there are two uh, sets of, I'm just mentioning this because the projects almost all deal with this, are two sets of kind of wind diagrams. There are monsoon winds from the cooler monsoon winds uh, uh, in the, relatively speaking, the winter months, January, uh, December, January, coming off of the Himalayas. But the bulk of the winds come from the uh, south, southwest, uh, across the uh, Indian Ocean. Uh, they're strong winds, but they bear a lot of humidity, a lot of moisture, and Colombo is right in the path of that wind track. I mentioned a couple of other things we're just about done. Uh, one of the things that I asked the students to focus on this semester because it's something that we don't do well in school. We don't, uh, we don't ask the students to explain to us why their buildings are good. Uh, so I asked, this took a fairly long uh, a, a chunk of time in the studio. I asked the students to, to write out uh, uh, kind of operating principles uh, much as uh, Le Corbusier does, uh, 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 talking about the kind of larger condition of the world and then trying to actually name that in an architectural strategy. And uh, uh, the groups that you're gonna see were formed based on those principles, based on kind of alliances between principles. And then the groups were asked to rewrite the principles. And I, I asked them today to present their projects in a very straightforward manner, to present, tell you what they have, tell you what their principles are, tell you what the organization of the building is. So there's five projects, I'll just show you them. The, the, we're gonna look at the first two. Uh, uh, we're gonna look at this one and this one for this first session. Uh, there are three others. I'm just going to show them to you now. If we have a little bit of time at the end of the discussion, I may ask you to kind of talk about competitions and competition entries and, and what kind of making competition entries amounts to. And I would particularly like also, aside from design comments, if you would comment as the as you're looking at the project at the end about, yeah, if you're, if you're going to enter this, we've got two weeks before the students have to enter the competition, 10 days, you know, that, uh, you know, what you would change, what you would alter, what kinds of things you think they might add. One last comment, uh, this is the last, uh, last project we'll look at. One last comment is that we, uh, uh, we just realized this last week. We don't have Sri Lankan scale figures by and large, uh, which is uh, something that we, I mean, you, you'll see the scale figures in our drawings. This is something I totally stupidly forgot to go. We need to track down Sri Lankan figures to add into the kinds of images it's a little bit jarring and i think it's a correction that'll be made before the the, the competition entries let me end there uh, let me see if you guys have questions and then uh, we'll, we'll jump in so Everybody they are okay? going they will enter the comp the competition anyways okay. i uh, i read i think i read something about the height uh, uh limit on the, uh, on the Mauricio, you're, you're, you are so sweet. We all read about that height limit during the first week and it lasted about two or three days. When, when we realized we did a, a series of studies look, looking into school typologies and, and asked one group to take school various school typologies and insert them within that envelope. And it was almost actually impossible to do so. And then, and then we quickly left it behind. So at, at, okay. on, on the assumption also that competitions are, are, are most often by won by, by entrants that, that flout the rules and, and we, we let that one go. So, David, so. Uh, quick, quick question about the overall direction of the, of the investigation. Um, how much did you as a collective focus on local materials and the sustainability response? I mean, is that a factor or you abstracted a little bit in order to have so you'll, you'll see, you'll, so you'll see that, that actually the, in this first group, actually we'll see a project that, that dealt with it quite directly. So one of the things that we looked into one group during a kind of research phase of the semester, during the research phase of the group the semester, one group looked into climatic conditions. One group looked into kind of typological conditions of schools. One group looked into local materials availability and so forth. There are traditional materials, uh, kind of rough stone and particularly kind of a, a, a uh, high clay-based uh, 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 soil blocks, and then uh, 
clay tiles that were used to, but all of those sources are, and then hardwoods, uh, the hardwood forest of every single one of those local materials are now gone, right? The, 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 you, the, the, almost all the kind of clay pits have been dug out. Uh, the hardwood forest has been decimated. Almost all the quarries have been uh, 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 abandoned because there's, they're, 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 they're pretty much tapped out. So really, uh, the, the, that question it came up, and you'll see it with the second group, the kind of question about like what, you know, wh what's the relationship of vernacular to available materials as opposed to local materials? So, I mean, the local materials that are available are trash and bamboo at this point in time, and salt water. I mean, that's, that's, that's the, the most useful way to describe what's essentially available, right? Or, or, or pipe, you know, or, or steel uh, and industrial trash that is available by other means, right? There, there, there's no, there's no uh, readily available local materials that are associated with traditional architectures uh, in that context. So we had this discussion at length, actually. It's, uh, I'm glad you brought it up, Fernando, thanks. I don't know if that answers the question or? No, it does. I just wanted some kind of boundary in order not to, not to step out of boundaries. Well, well, just to be clear, right. I don't care about you guys stepping out of boundaries. I, okay. I think everything, all things, I, I, every incoming point of view is useful, especially for kids going into a competition, right? Because, because knowing what, what it is that people think that are not is really, really useful, right? Okay, sweet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I, uh, I'm gonna, I've already stopped sharing. Uh, let's start with uh, John and James. Good morning. I'm John, studio partner is James. Hello all. Can anyone not see my screen? Great. Okay, so David has laid a lot of the groundwork for all of us um, to which we're grateful. And so James and I have set out to design the Sri Lankan Institute of Technology in Colombo. And we're going to start you off just with, just with orienting you and, and letting you get familiar with our building as a whole. And then we'll, we'll, we'll dive through a little bit. But our project is about the desire for comfort and a sustainable building typology. And it's this, there's a relationship in architecture um, between cause and effect between a building that could act as a tool or a machine and then the product of what that tool is doing. In our case, the desire for naturally conditioned space in the specific setting of an educational facility. So our building is, is, it's one building with two main elements. Uh, one ma main element you see on the, the lower left here is a cooling device that then conditions this, the resultant space after it. But why do this? Why does this matter? Uh, why this desired effect or result? Well, it's because, and you'll see in this image, humans will do anything to get comfortable and to be comfortable and to stay cool. And for James and I, this, this this image has been a, a driving thesis for us of the links that humans will go to to not just alter their environment but to alter it for their comfort and the idea of people conditioning and that is relevant uh, even more so today as we are in a constantly changing and more detrimental hot and humid client climate uh, as David said, we've been operating off of some principles that we've been crafting and chiseling for the semester. And if you look on the left, there are some things that James and I intuitively believe about architecture. And these were the things that we came in on, on the same page with, that we're looking for ways to realize sustainable design, to take into consideration social contextual values. We believe in creating culture and creating good culture. And that means different things for different places. But a lot of that can happen through the realization of civic and public space. So our project will focus on that as well. We believe in passive comfort uh, and harnessing inherent energy. And then specifically with schools and education, classroom design has always been about how to handle emerging technology. And classrooms today that students are in that design from the 60s and 70s is based off of sight lines from how far can the kid in the back see the classroom in the front 
Um, but that was that now changes because students have their own screen. So that's changing spatial conditions. But we we don't know what the next thing might not be. It might be the what emerging te technology will define that space. So we're keeping things open and flexible um, in this belief that architecture is elemental and social uh, than those two driving this project. But the, the, the main thing that James and I came together with on this project was the idea that today as things are changing, uh, architecture operates like a survival kit. Um, and, we, and we're thinking about these, well, what comes in a survival kit? Um, and it's this idea of, of equity and then surviving or the promotion of living. Um, and so we sum it up here. No longer can buildings require um, more than they provide, but they must be operatively designed to promote living. And so we've created a set of operating principles that designed this building that, that made this building come to be, but isn't limited on this one. Could be a many other uh, ways that this could come together to create more buildings. So how do we do that? Um, this studio focused on three things, like David said. The intersection of a hot and humid climate, the legacy of tropical modernism, and the idea of absolute architecture. So James and I's idea was to create and design a tool that cools. Um, and here's how we did that. We have the idea like Dave was talking about was there's a discussion, there's a, there's a debate, it's up in the air between mass and light and how to achieve this comfort. Uh, going with mass, we identified that in the in India and in Sri Lanka and in hot and humid climates and you know, we're looking for the conversation after this, you guys, the experts in this, that these courtyards are the way that people cool themselves. That is, that is what we have found to be uh, proliferant and what we have been talking with architects in Sri Lanka about. But the idea of the courtyard, to have open space, um, wind blowing through, um, hitting a, different types of materials that could be used to, to cool the space. So we, we took that idea of the courtyard and flipped it. We made that vertical. Uh, we have then amplified the effect of that, knowing that we need to um, fit our school of around 250 people, um, but also bringing that into like we're the, the Glen Market building where it's light construction, but it's in the air. So we're combining mass with going in the air, amplifying. We then are extracting cools in our building, and we'll show you in a second, with these deep um, structural columns that penetrate from the ground, extract geo geothermal cools, and then are exposed in our building where the, the building is oriented to embrace the wind, as much wind as possible from the Southwest. And then we can then populate the space right there and behind it. And then because of the way that our building is situated on just a, a, by the equator, we're shading this building from the top. Um, I've been talking, James, if you wanna kick in <laughs> with the floor plans. <laughs> Yes, so, so with this uh, aggregation of the diagram of, of these tools and these, this program, um, on, the, on the left side of the drawing, you'll see the, the uh, cooling element. Um, we're calling it the, the radiator in our, in our scheme. And this is cooling the, the, the program block that resides behind um, this radiator. And so, so our site is situated um, skewed to the to the southwest wind so this the, the radiator is is um, receiving all of the wind and then the, the site is uh, aggregating itself to to the street um, raised two meters to prevent some of this this flooding happening in this area but also to create a lifted uh, urban space this this uh, civic plaza underneath this entire building and so here we have uh, Two typical sections. Um, we have two. We have two main elements on our radiator facade. One plans. is um, what's that? Plans, not sections. Oh, plans. Sorry. <laughs> um, we have on the left side. We have uh, a plan cutting through what we're calling a mouth. So this is the the large opening that um, wind blows through this space across these radiator fins and into the auditorium space. And then on the right, we have the plan cutting through the small barnacle at the bottom right of the uh, plan. And so this is a uh, more of a gathering space, a circulation element. So we just have this oscillation in our facade that is also translated into the, these plans of 
um, how the wind moves at the space, but also the spaces for people to congregate. Um, as well, you can see that the program block is the auditorium and that there's offices underneath those things. So, to, so trying to aggregate classroom space, gathering space, social uh, space, where can people congregate, talk, teach, gather? And so coming in from Columbia, a lot of the studio we've been talking about the presence um, of, of how these buildings are perceived um, and then drawing to that as a as being a part of this, this neighborhood. So coming in from the highway, uh, this is what you will see. This is the backside of the building and you see um, the radiator, the, the cooled space, and then the, the roof on top shading that space. So this is, um, we'll show you the backside of that where the main cooling element, this is coming from the neighborhood and in the the legacy of, of um, not just Jeffrey Bawa, but tropical modernism at large and studying uh, buildings like Golconde, these operable louvers that could control the airflow on this side um, on, on, and the backside of the building. Um, but then also these, these, the since air needs to be pushed through to get to the art terms at the backside, we have created and, and laid out these specific apertures for that to happen. And here you can see that exactly. So these are the, this is the image we started out with, but these mouths on the left side of this uh, radiator facade, which is acting like this large AC unit that is pumping cool conditioned air into the tent, which is the school. And following the, the ideas laid out uh, in the Venturi effect from going from a, creating a pressure differential from a small, smaller opening to a larger opening, that is what our building is doing. You can see that in section on the right where the, the mouth, those four mouths, we're cutting through three of them right here, are at, let's, they're at X, um, five meters. And then that travels through the building to 4X uh, on the backside of those auditorium spaces. And then the slope of the auditorium um, creates, that's what leads, makes it lead to, down to a 4X. So, so what, what John is indicating here is that this, this project was designed um, systematically and ruthlessly in the sense of how can we achieve this sustainable building type? How can we provide that desire for comfort? And it's achieved through this, the systematic understanding of how can we draw cool air through this space? Well, first, it's actually not cool, it's hot, right? So, so we bring it into this radiator, we move it across these, these geothermal fins um, into this public circulation uh, vein and then across into the auditorium spaces. So, so through all of the circulation, gathering, talking, communicating places, we're dragging this cold, cooling air through this space and into the building. So we're producing this desire for comfort by being ruthless and systematic in the way that this tool or mechanism of the radiator is created in order to generate good space um, for the program. Uh, and then a huge component of this project is to create meaningful civic space. Um, we had talked about this area of floods um, and we know the implications of establishing a plinth uh, in an urban setting um, and what that does to the perception and use of a building. Uh, we are doing that here um, and we are creating an elevated ground plane uh, that also serves as a buffer between floods. Um, this is how we perceive the envision the building being perceived. Uh, there's a walking path across the canal, um, looking into the into this space um, with the hanging gardens coming in as the entrance um, to both either the radiator or the auditorium from here. I'm just going to show some more perspectives. So this is some more of the what we're. we're, we're, we're we're working with the term herbs. This is this is part of this cultural public plaza that is is underneath the building. Um, it is is connected to the the large mouth of the radiator, um, and the goal of this the this large opening at the bottom of the building is is how much 
air and cool can we bring to this space, but to create a very large public gathering plaza um, with the, underneath this program. So it's, it's not just an institution for someone to learn, but it's also a community asset tool to use, congregate, share. Um, and so, so you're viewing this large uh, urban outside amphitheater underneath the entire building. And this is very much so that um, <clears throat> that space, that looking up from that space is then looking down to that space, but more towards the street uh, with the vertical gardens behind. Um, and we do imagine this conditioned space, this is where people gather. This is the cool space. This is the tent. Um, and while it's functionally very, uh, that creates the circulation to, to dig up and down the spaces, as well as ele elevators within both the, what we're calling the radiator, um, and then the auditorium tower. Uh, that this is where this is where people sit and gather and meet and have impromptu um, and ad hoc conversations, um, which is not only vented horizontally with our, with the coming across the building sectionally, but also a vented chimney at the top. Which, if we need to go back to that section, we can show. And this this is all possible because of this this mechanism of this this large facade on the radiator that is operable, open and closing to allow the comfort level to be changed, right? So it's all about our desire for comfort. We can, we can change or adjust that, but essentially how, how much of this air can we capture and cool and bring through the space? And so here you're seeing two barnacles on the right side and, and a, a mouth on the left side. Those are the words we're using to kind of to, to talk about these openings. Um, so these, these are all elements that will drive congregation, social, cultural space. Yep. And then just to wrap things up, this is our last slide. Uh, show you the machine uh, from this angle. That's all we have visually. If you want to go back to anything, we can easily go back to that slide. Hey, James and John, a couple of questions before we get started. Um, are, is everything in here passive? Or are there any active systems at all? Mechanical. Passive. There's there's no there's no machinery. Um, we we envision the only thing that is maybe that maybe mechanically driven would be the uh, louvers on the outside, whether that's driven by human or machine. But there's no there's no other conditioning of this space. Um, the only operable system or mechanical system would be the, the louvers. Everything else is completely passive. Yeah. I was thinking about the geothermal, um, how that gets pulled up into the spaces, particularly uh, as it goes higher. Um, I guess cold air tends to, to um, not rise. Uh, the next no, thing so, is, yeah. so they've so, got, they, they have, that whole roof is theoretically PV panels. So there's that, that geothermal system is being driven by that power source. Okay, so so there is some there is some active system there, and second is uh, Golcon. Um, you mentioned Golcon, which I want to talk about in a moment. But Colombo is a um, uh, coastal city. Do you know the average wind speed here? Are you always going to get a breeze? Most coastal cities there tends to be a constant breeze. I'm just curious if you all research. We're, we're, um, on the diagrams that David showed. We I don't I think it was at least ten or fifteen kilometers an hour from the southwest about every day. So there is this this constant airflow. Yeah, and Coleman, I'm going to add to that also. There is occasionally also quite powerful storms here. Oh, sure. High winds as well. Yeah, uh, cyclones. All right. So cool. Yeah. Okay. Of course, I'm muted again. Uh, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about the materiality uh, of both the radiator facade and the interior, uh, the renderings look like masonry, uh, some kind of masonry or concrete, but can you elaborate on that? Yes, so, so with, with our, the operating strategy of, of mass, we, we want something to hold that thermal energy. So the, we do, do envision uh, this to be mostly concrete. Um, we, we are as a studio aware of the, uh, implications of concrete, but we, we all have come to this, this decision of we don't know what to, to really do about this, this, this uh, material. But um, 
I, in this case, we think it serves as a, as a good material to hold and change that thermal uh, temperature value with this material. So the difficulty that I see here is that you have the radiator wall on the west side uh, because that's where the prevailing winds are coming from, southwest. But it's also where you're going to have the most amount of thermal uh, uh, impact because of the afternoon sun. So the, the other side, the morning sun, it should be okay, I think. Uh, but the afternoon sun here on this facade that we are seeing uh, is very, very intense. So the more mass you have there, the more, the higher the temperature inside in the evening. Uh, maybe it will help you a little bit right after noon because the wall will be cold from night and morning. Uh, but when the sun starts hitting this wall, in immediately after uh, 12 uh, p.m., uh, it starts heating and then it starts radiating warmth to the inside. So by the time you get to uh, 5 p.m., uh, close to sunset, then, then you have a really hot wall that is radiating. And then that, that's the, the contradiction there. That's the difficulty there because you want those winds, but those winds will pass through hot walls. So that is, that is why this isn't just one, one sheeted wall of operable louvers, but that these, these louvers can close and not let wind pass through them, but that these apertures of what were the, the horizontal mouths, we've just been calling them, and then these barnacles are always open because the cooled mast fins are, are deep in the building. Um, most of that fin will not get direct sunlight and wind will always be blowing across those primarily cooling factors of those columns. And to, to add to that, the, the radiator is, is op you can occupy it, but it's also, it's not the main program block. So it is, it really is this, this heat shield, this, this, this mechanism that is cooling the actual program block behind it. Are you, are you familiar, did you look at the architecture of Ken Young out of Malaysia? Uh, no, Kenyan, Kenyan has been designing those uh, green skyscrapers. So it's a, it's, a, it's a vertical building that is surrounded by vegetation. And that's highly criticized because the, the high maintenance that you need to keep that vegetation alive after six or seven stories. I mean, it's not, it's not that simple. But I think it may, might make sense here because you, you have the humidity to keep those plants uh, in good shape in the above the seventh or eighth uh, story. I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it might be an interesting thing. I mean, my, my uh, instinct is that you need to shade this Western wall. Uh, you need to reduce solar uh, intake on this Western wall Otherwise, you're going to have a hot wall that will radiate heat uh, to the inside. And yes, if the wind velocity is high, you might uh, move this hot air fast. Uh, but you're still uh, radiating heat to the inside. And uh, I wonder if there's some device, some uh, strategic device. I mean, the, the way that it's being done with most of... Uh, mid-century tropical modernism is horizontal louvers. So the horizontal louvers, they protect from most of the, uh, of the Western sun. You see that a lot in Nehemiah. Uh, you see that in, in uh, 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 Villanueva in, in Venezuela. Uh, so any kind of horizontal uh, uh, louvers or horizontal element that you have on the Western facade will uh, shade the, the mass of the facade and allow the wind to go through. And you, you kind of have them here, but they, they, they are not deep enough, I think. They are not... Uh... 
Yeah, it's funny. They, I, I, there was a there was a moment I actually listened to what you described. It. They, they had the solution early on, and they moved away from it. They had a they had that whole set of louvers pulled out from the building, and then a heat chimney behind that set of louvers uh, before you got to the concrete frame, mm -hmm. uh, which which is actually the kind of smarter way to do it. It's funny because normally in the West you'd need vertical louvers, but in the in the tropics, horizontal louvers actually work against Western sun because the sun right. rises so quickly. It's mm -hmm. really remarkable, right? Exactly. So but I think you're right. I think pulling them out and then having them be made of probably like bamboo, you know, like, like consolidated bamboo planking uh, as a way to, 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 so that they don't absorb heat is probably a better solution is it with actually something that they had earlier on. <laughs> Sorry guys. And, and, and you got it. I mean, in the, in the, in the Northern latitudes, the sun moves horizontally. Uh, and in the low latitudes, the sun moves vertically. It goes up and down uh, while, yeah, that's why we, we need uh, vertical louvers here in Austin on 30 degrees. And they need horizontal louvers in uh, lower than 10 degrees from the equator, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just going to uh, comment on Fernando's uh, observations a bit. Um, I'm not sure, Fernando, the, the mass is on this elevation that you're talking about. The way I'm seeing it, these are adjustable louvers. And uh, have you all identified what material they are? At Goldcon, they're concrete. Uh, what are they here, do you know? We're, we're uh, imagining these to actually be uh, PV panels so that we were gaining some of that, thermal, that uh, energy for the use of the building. Okay, so they're PV panels. Well, then, um, if those are being adjusted manually to control the the uh, wind flow or or electronically, whichever way you choose, um, it would diminish, I guess, the PV um, capability of it. So, in order to increase that, you'd want to keep it exposed to the su afternoon sun. But uh, the, the thing about the mass and so forth, you could uh, by controlling the spaces between the louvers create that Venturi effect you mentioned earlier. And um, I guess the only thing I would, would, we're not mechanical engineers, the only thing I would say, perhaps the, the Venturi effect would then offset any heat gain that uh, Fernando's discussing. It would take sensitive engineering to understand all of this, but I think that might be a way out for you. Um, I do agree if you can pull them out, it would be advantageous, but um, I, don't, I don't think the mass is there since they are adjustable, uh, that it might it might pose the problem. Fernando is exactly right about the mass, but uh, it, it, heat gain. But I'm not sure it's there in the, in your particular project. That's fair. We are imagining the 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 fins themselves are the mass that we are mainly considering to be the cooling agent. Is that these columns? That's the mass. And everything else. Those, those are very protective. Those are ways. Yeah. Those are yeah. ways inside your building. Those are very protective. So I think you guys are going the right direction. Uh, if you have the PV panels here organized in horizontal strips, and if those PV panels provide some level of afternoon shade to to the next uh, uh, volume, the volume right behind that, that's perfect. That that should work. Maybe you guys could go to another image and, and uh, just. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I, I have a question on the. Uh, if you can go please to the floor plans. I was I wasn't sure where uh, where are the uh, planters uh, where the vines grow. Guys, you guys are going to have to annotate to show that, but they're they're here. They're, they're, there's no planters shown. The, the vines are growing along that edge, Maurizio. Okay, I was imagining that. All right, uh, but that means uh, on uh, we have a usable floor space right there. On that, it's uh, it's not an open space that goes all the all the over there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so this is this is so this is the main circulation across here, but this is actually um, another congregation gathering space. This whole this whole block. Uh, where the vines do reside. Okay, all right. Yeah, there are no views of the other side, the side opposite to the canal, right? <laughs> there are not, no. 
Yeah. Okay. My my comment, uh, uh, I think it was very similar to what Fernando was saying. It, uh, this uh, the the general appearance of the of the building. Uh, uh, no, not, not the general appearance. The um, for this machine to be able to operate all the time, it uh, I think it's uh, this is designed as a corner building. Uh, you are you are putting a very tall building on that place. What the, I'm speculating here, but what happens if uh, the next door uh, neighbor builds a building of the same height? What happens with the with the radiator? Maybe the maybe the placement of the radiator is not uh, is not creating the distance the sufficient distance so that it can actually catch air. I don't know if I'm uh, if I'm uh, Making my, uh, myself, uh, uh, yeah. If, if no, you that, understand me, we we do. There's a golf course on the back side of the lot where the, the ra radiator off. where the radiator faces. Uh huh. So it's uh, it's always going to be open, and that's this why is, you rotated the building and that. Uh, this, this, yeah. this this portion of it, yeah, it's going to always be open. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, where where's Southwest over here? There's no north uh, indication. I thought it was uh, all right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, north, the, yeah, north is misses, like that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and can can we now go to the cross section, please? The um, uh, there's a comment here on the on the uh, on the roof. Uh, if uh, I think there's a chimney effect uh, going on inside the building, right? The, uh, as the as the I don't know people moving inside the building, the the activity is going to make the inner space to get uh, uh, hotter. So the exactly the the air is going to go up. In order to uh, increase the pull, uh, uh, the wind pull. Uh, you can also, if the if the wind is coming from the right side on on that uh, on that image on the on the left, if you tilt the 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 uh, if you incline the the roof, uh, it would be uh, if you can make the uh, exactly that way, you can create a a negative pressure uh, point underneath the roof, so it actually increases the it can actually increase the the pull factor of the hot air. Yeah, you could actually get it's a, it's a really good point. You could do it by actually tilting these. You, you if you want to achieve this flat level, you can do it by by simply increasing the 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 sawtooth at that far end. Uh, you can you can. There's a number of ways you can make it work. Mm -hmm. And there are no elevators on the on the um, on the building at all, right? There are. I, I was, there are. Yes. Um, oh. They uh, they. If you go back to the plan, John. We we have uh, the the systems uh, to allow uh, people to move through the space up and down, but at the, we imagine them to be you know not you know hotel elevators that are enclosed, but some. Some open air mechanical system. Okay, I, I didn't uh, I didn't read them as uh, elevators, probably because of the, of the doors. I, I was uh, my, my, the question in my mind was, uh, what's the reasonable height for a building if you don't have uh, elevators? So you have active active systems uh, operating in the building. Yeah, they're they're probably arguably probably better here than they are here. Like the ones that the ones that kind of that come up through the classrooms are probably arguably you don't want them there, right? I mean, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. guys, we have about ten more minutes, five to ten more minutes. Why don't uh, uh, talk about things that just make you uncomfortable? Uh, uh, Coleman, uh, well, I, I uh, like Fernando. To, I don't want your head to explode on this one, David, but. Um, what makes this particular to Colombo? Why would this not just be as valuable in Houston, Texas? 
is there any cultural indicators in this that you're trying to convey other than just the dynamics of the wind itself? Is, the, is, is that part of your, your task as a designer here to think about this, first of all, as a school, uh, um, second, uh, its, its impact uh, on sustainability, which it seems like you've done a great job with, but the cultural aspect of it, is there, is there any um, indicator here? Concrete is used a lot in this part of the world, whether good or bad for the environment. Um, it's used quite a bit, that in block. So um, I'm, just, I'm just pushing you a little bit to, to, to get a response out of it. Um, that's, a great, that's a great question. Um, I think there's two or three ways to go about that. And, you know, we don't want to be proponents of cultural appropriation. We're not Sri Lankan. We're not Indian. I know that that's a can of worms. Um, so th there's one way to answer your question in regards to how to design for or, or include something that would be reminiscent of, of cultural something that would that would fit or belong like that's a that's an interesting conversation um part of what we think drives our project is that is that people that humans are desperate for comfort and condition space it, it's just that it happens to come at the expense of of so much energy and so our building is designed to to resolve that universal felt need um, in a sustainable way, using principles that David has been hammering us on all semester that could be built in Houston. And we actually think that that's a good thing, that this could be the, not that universal design or, or, or talking about the, the legacy of, of colonial modernism, but, but the idea that a building out of these principles could be built in other places, that th this isn't the only manifestation of our principles is this building, but it could be, it could look like something else and it could be somewhere else. Yeah, it, I guess it's not the appearance. Uh, yeah, you are picking up, I think, on some specificities uh, to the city by catching the winds. Uh, concrete is a material that's used here a lot. But I'm going back to Golconde and wondering, is that, is that to you a colonial imperialism? Uh, in relation to yours, because I see similarities in the two projects here, a lot of similarities, and, and in a good way. Uh, but I'm curious how you feel about that. Uh, that was not designed by um, uh, local architects from uh, India. It was designed by Westerners, right? It was. We actually had uh, 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 Pankaj came and talked to the studio for an hour, or two hours actually. Uh, from the middle of the night in New Delhi it was very sweet about Golconda and we, we, it, it was a pretty influential building in the studio. I do want to jump in and say that one of John and James's argument has been that, that and this is a kind of ongoing kind of discussion, it, it may not actually succeed because of the kind of presence of the building. Maybe Coleman, this might be a kind of interesting way to, to open this discussion up. I mean, they made this argument that the, the building, they meant it as a life preserver, literally oxygen mask as a thing that arrived in a place of crisis anywhere in the world and, and served in that capacity to make, to, to be urban. And, and I wonder where you, where you, where you feel, and, that, and you just heard John say that, right? This building could land in Houston. It could, it could theoretically land anywhere, but it has, the, the argument would be that it comes in as a life preserver, oxygen mask, emergency tent idea, right? As the air conditioning unit that arrives anywhere. And so the question is whether you feel like the building achieves that difference or not, because it, 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 it it, it may be that it's too Golconde like uh, and that it, that it engages too much in a, in a kind of memory of, of, uh, of tropical modernism. I, I mean, Coleman, I'm, I'm throwing the question back. I mean, there's a, a, a oh, is, out this, to, is this a question for me or for the students? Oh yeah, no, it was a question for you just in terms of oh. like, like, like that argument, because it's an interesting argument. I, I, I know where you're heading. I agree that it's, it's a problem with the building that, that it is simultaneously not of the place and of, but they had made an argument early on the semester that the building was that in, in that one of the kind of subtexts of the studios is what will sustainable architecture look like what what becomes its what becomes its kind of what becomes its landscape making capacity and they made the argument that it, it arrives sort of as a oxygen tank, oxygen mask 
heat shield face mask. It arrives as a kind of emergency kit that, that enters into the landscape in that way. And the building may not have achieved that condition of emergency kit. It may be too much like the presence of, 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 of tropical modernism as a memory. Uh, 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 I, is, that, I will, is that your sense I, of it? I will, I will use Mexico to respond to that question because I think it's an important question and a very, very difficult one. So in the 1970s, when Barragan became uh, internationally famous, uh, most Mexican modern architects hated that uh, because Barragan was showing an image of a colonial 18th century Mexico, although in a modern spatiality, but the, the texture, the image, the colors were associated with the colonial times. And they wanted to show Pedro Ramirez Vasquez Anthropology Museum or Mario Pani's uh, housings, or uh, they wanted to show the modern Mexico. Uh, so I think it's a very difficult question. Uh, I don't know the answer. I, I have no idea how Sri Lankan architects are elaborating their own ideas, their own identity. Uh, I do think the building tries to be both. Uh, it does try to be international, uh, green architecture, cosmopolitan, 21st century architecture, and it does try to be uh, Sri Lankan. Uh, I, I, I will go back to that conversation later after we see the second project, uh, because I think it's one of the most difficult issues of, of the studio. Uh, can we speak for the Sri Lankans? Can we speak for the tropics? Uh, and and it's, it's a difficult question in itself. I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I, I think you, you may have answered it to some extent though, Fernando, in that this building would not be a comfortable building in New York City, wouldn't be a comfortable building in Montreal. But there is that cultural connection to the way that they build in this part of the world uh, and in response to the environment, to the climatic conditions. And as you said, there's a tension here in this building that I find very admirable. They're, they're walking that fine line, yet they're, 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 they're not unsuccessful in, in doing that. I think we just have a few more minutes. Uh, I, I want to uh, have you guys kind of lob in anything that, that uh, leaps to mind. Yeah, I have one more comment. Uh, uh, can, uh, can we see the um, uh, side view? The, uh, implantation. Uh, an, an aerial view, maybe? So one of the perspectives or? Uh, yeah, yeah, that one, that one, that one okay. is good. The, um, where's, where's West on the, on the, on that uh, image? Where, uh, where does the sun uh, uh, go down? On that left, yeah, where that mark is, with that left staircase. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, the, you know, again on the roof, it needs to uh, be extended in the in the western direction a bit, so that uh, so that after so that after uh, uh, noon exactly that way. So that after twelve p.m. it uh, it doesn't uh, start uh, getting sun on the on that uh, terrace. I, I think if uh, we, if we we continued, I think our roof would slowly just uh, take over the whole landscape for this entire city. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> yeah, it's the afternoon sun, and in, in, uh, uh, you know after three p.m. it's going to start getting uh, the uh, an angle that it's going to. But yeah. Uh, uh, guys, quickly, uh, 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 we could talk about it a little bit later, but any quick comments about what you would add, change for for the, entering this into a competition? Uh, just in terms of the explanation. I mean, uh, for example, just 
a diagram just saying, look, this is what's happening as opposed to having to, to say, you know, uh, are there other things that you guys would have quick recommendations? If not, let's, let's, uh, let's see the next project. I do think more diagrams how uh, the wind is, this is a bit of an air conditioner, right? A passive air conditioner. Now that's working. You, you refer to it, but I think you could be more explicit with it. Um, get, verbally, you had to point out things like the uh, geothermal and so forth. So you show, show how that's operating as well. And um, I wasn't aware of the PVs until, until it was pointed out. Things like that, just, just minor clarifications, I think would help you. Yeah, although just hearing it now, I, I would say that these things being PVs, operable PVs is a problem, right? Yeah. I, I actually, I, I actually think operable, the idea of those things moving and, and, and all the kinds of possible joints that could break, it's just, uh, I, I would argue that these things be, be made, out, that these louvers be made out of, out of just recombined, recompressed wood, just to lose heat, just to not gain heat, you know, the, the, and, and, they, and, and stack them up with a chimney behind them. But actually, it brings up a kind of interesting point which is that, that, that you know, uh, we did not work with, uh, I mean, the, the general idea about engineering in the studio has been, uh, we're gonna do the best that we can as architects to propose what the consequences might allude to. As, uh, at, but just getting to this point, I mean, it, Coleman, you, you bring up this really kind of interesting point about, about the need to work with, the need to work with engineers on these kinds of projects. It, it is mind bending, you know, like, like these are, these are, these are uh, such best guesses uh, but but they are they are best guesses in a void. You know, the, uh, it, it really is remarkable the the amount of the amount of distance you have to cover to, just to get to a point where you could sit and begin to work with an engineer and begin to test what these ideas how these ideas might actually play themselves out. All right, John James, thank you guys. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, let's. Uh, thanks, David. Uh, let's thank start. you, reviewers. Yeah, thanks. For appreciate it. it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great work, guys. Thank you. Yeah, great work. So group two, Ananya and uh, uh, Gabriel and Sydney. Hello, good morning. I am Ananya. I'm Sydney. In Sri Lanka, after secondary school, a select group of students goes to university and others are expected to enter the workforce directly or attend vocational school. In this project, we are interested in another form of higher education geared towards personal growth and development rather than productive labor. The building is organized as a multi-tiered base for flooding and circulation, a mat infill of program and modules, and a roof that utilizes wind catchers and creates a civic presence. The base and wind catchers reach through the modules to perform vital functions, while the modules serve as an adaptable structural framework. In order to justify new construction, new buildings must have a net positive impact on the environment to offset the current climate crisis and to ensure a future for humanity. This is done through natural ventilation, solar panels, and water collection. Natural disasters are a regular occurrence and must be considered in design. Due to seasonal flooding, there are levels of program that get abandoned during disasters, which requires altering the status of the ground plane. The building should act to protect the users from the chaotic outside world. Consequently, nature is a valuable calming element and not something that people should be closed off from. This is done through passive cooling layers and connection to nature. The previous vernacular language is a form of colonial control. Therefore, a new vernacular should arise from what is plentiful in order to connect to place. For our modular structure, we're using bamboo, which is native to Sri Lanka and easily grown and replenished. For our walls, we're using eco bricks produced from plastic waste. Materiality must aid in the building being real through structural expression. We want to embrace the inherent strengths of the materials, bamboo for its strength and flexibility and eco bricks for their lightness and ease of movement. The building serves the community, not the other way around, in order to offset the privatization of the public realm. Therefore, the ground floor is an entirely public extension of the street realm. Truly public space should be identifiable for ease of access. Therefore, the building must function as a landmark. The large wind catchers can be easily seen from a distance. 
The roof breaks down the scale of the vast structure and the colonnade welcomes users at the street edge. Civic space should be created using formal typologies that provide legibility. The grand gesture of the colonnade is welcoming and the repetitive structure of the modules is easily read and understood while inside the building. All spaces should be equally accessible. Vertical circulation is provided by a large central ramp and circulation on the ground plane occurs through a series of smaller ramps. So just to recap about the site, um, one of the major entry points is from this highway to the north and coming down. Um, this area is very diverse in terms of programmatic types, but also the different scales of the buildings ranging from a residential area to bigger skyscrapers. Uh, additionally, we are located right on uh, next to the Kinda Canal, which we'll see uh, impacts a lot of the flooding issues. This is an approach from the highway. At the city scale, the wind catchers pierce through the roof line, providing visibility uh, from the adjacent highway and the surrounding neighborhood. As you move closer, the roof breaks down the scale and the colonnade welcomes the community into the building. This then leads into the center circulation ramp and the public base. Entry to the school is provided from the ground floor, primarily through a central triangular ramp signified by a large cut drawing people in from the street. Encircling a courtyard, which arrives at many smaller spaces around the ramp and connects to the stepped base at the highest step. Sri Lanka experiences seasonal monsoons. Currently, during three quarters of the year, Sri Lanka can expect monsoon floods up to half a meter in depth and can see floodwaters as deep as a meter during the southwest monsoon. Due to the nature of flooding in Sri Lanka currently, and as projected as the climate continues to change, we've programmed the building in a way that as the water rises, non-essential programs can be sacrificed. The stepped base maintains access in up to a two meter flood, double the current highest flood level, allowing the community to tie off boats on the lower level to seek refuge from the flood in the building above. For example, the amphitheater can be occupied by the public on a sunny day for informal or impromptu performances, versus under a flood level of one and a half meters, the building becomes accessible from all directions and provides refuge. On the upper floors, program spirals around the wind catchers, creating a variety of differently sized spaces, all naturally ventilated. Operable doors can be closed to provide shelter or privacy when needed. Additionally, connection to the floors above and below are created through double height spaces. This floor is similar in organization with slight changes in program in order to create more quiet and private spaces. And here is a view on the second floor through one of those spiraled spaces oriented toward the wind catcher. To initiate passive ventilation through the wind catchers, the solar panels at the top harness the power of the sun becoming, ex becoming extremely hot. This air temperature difference created allows for air below to be directed upwards and out, creating air circulation and cooling. When it rains, a balloon deploys, effectively blocking rainwater from entering through the wind catcher and redirecting it to the system of gutters. The rainwater is stored in underground cisterns. This section highlights the wind catcher, its relation to the nearby modules, and the double height spaces that puncture the building. And here's one of those uh, double height spaces near the wind catcher on the ground floor. This section taken through the triangular ramps at the core of the building highlights the relationship between its different levels and emphasizes the connection of the building to the street and the canal. And this is a space inside the wind catcher where one can sit and look up on a clear day. In conclusion, our building intends to be able to transition from a civic ground plane on a sunny day to a welcoming place for the community to seek higher ground as floodwaters rise. Overall, we wanted to develop this relationship between the base, the modular mat infill, and the roof and wind catchers.
I, I think they're done, guys. Yeah. You can jump. You can jump. You can jump. You can. You can jump in. <laughs> if I, uh, if I may, the uh, uh, the uh, the appearance of the of the this compound is very interesting. It uh, seems that uh, some of the forms are derived from nature. Yeah, uh, when I first saw it, I uh, I thought of the. Uh, uh, spider at the Bilbao Guggenheim, the, uh, uh, I think it's by Louis Bourgeois. It, uh, it, uh, you can, uh, the next thing uh, after seeing this image is you can see the, the spider started, starts walking in, you know, in, in many directions. There are other forms that also seem to be derived from nature. The, um, the wind catchers uh, that, have, uh, that have these uh, lily, uh, water lily shapes. I, I was trying to wonder how uh, how they work, and I uh, I'm glad that I, that I saw the the explanation. And, uh, I'm still curious on um, how the the balloon would uh, would work. If you can uh, uh, elaborate a bit more on on that, I would be grateful. Um, <clears throat> one of the um, uh, uh, you know, uh, after seeing the appearance of the building, I, uh, so not too long ago, I designed a building uh, uh, built in, in bamboo. Um, it's not built, uh, but the, uh, the specialist on the area told me that the, it was very, very important to have uh, very large um, eaves to protect the bamboo. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to that material is exposure to sun and to water, and worse still, and sun and water, because it's going to, uh, you know, take a toll on the, on, uh, on the material itself. So my question is uh, probably about the, uh, the outer portion of, the, of, the, of these uh, uh, parabolic arches. How, are you, uh, how, will, how will the, that material be protected? And uh, I think that uh, that I'm posing questions more than uh, making a, a critique on, on what you on what I'm seeing. At least in terms of the flooding, we did take special care to make sure none of the bamboo was the, below. Uh, they are sitting on top of a uh, concrete. Uh, right. uh, uh, see, yeah, but the, mm -hmm. how about the sun and the and in rain? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we paid as much attention to that factor, but it is. Maybe uh, some uh, intermediate um, louvers, uh, yeah, yeah. See some some screening to protect the the material that is actually holding the building in place. Yeah, some you know some sort of uh, bristle ale, uh, larger, longer eaves, something to take into consideration. I I would actually propose a different solution for that problem, which is the fact that the bamboo will last for three to five years and will be replaced, uh, and uh, the replacing of the bamboo much like the, the mudding of the walls or the whitewashing of the walls is a biennial tradition or a yearly tradition that people do to improve their buildings. Uh, I, I, I like the idea that the, the building will age and people will have to, uh, to engage with its maintenance and replace components. Now, it is quite difficult to replace part of the bamboo of this large, large structure. It's a, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, but if it's, if it's really sustainable and if it, people are really into that mode of construction, then it becomes part of the building maintenance. Uh, I really like the, the, this design. I think you guys uh, went deep into understanding the place and trying to build with some kind of local material. I mean, David said that bamboo is the only thing uh, that they have left. 
after being uh, overwhelmed by modernization processes that uh, took all the other materials away. Uh, it reminds me of one of my favorite buildings uh, in the Americas, which is the Botanical Gardens in Medellin, uh, the Orchidiorama, uh, designed by uh, Felipe Mesa and others, which uh, is, is more of a metal structure with, uh, with wood plants, but it, it has a similar effect of being a, a, a condenser for, in this case, because it's for orchids, they want to hold the humidity, not to get rid of it. Uh, but I am, I think this, this investigation, this design goes in many, many interesting directions that are really, really powerful. Um, again, we have that question, is that the image that Sri Lankans themselves want? Uh, and that's a very, very difficult question. Uh, but this building is grounded in that latitude, in that place. Uh, and uh, I think, I actually think that uh, if infused with technology, like uh, things that can, uh, I don't know, measure the wind conditions and uh, things that are already available, but can help people maintain the building. Uh, it's, it's a powerful idea of how to build something sustainable yet in the 21st century. I, I, I want to commend the group for doing that. I think it's a, it's a really good response to a difficult studio challenge. Yeah, I, I wonder just to, to bind together Mauricio's comments and Fernando's. I mean, I, I think, that, so Fernando just, uh, and Mauricio, just to, to, to expand this a little bit, we were having a, a, a very interesting discussion with uh, Pankaj uh, Gupta, an architect in India, and he, was, he told us this really interesting story. He was working, he just arrived from the United States, back from being educated here, and he designed a building in concrete and the structural engineer says, why don't you make it in brick? And he said, why should we make it in brick? He goes, because if you make it in brick, you make endless jobs within the community, right? And, and, and it began to kind of, so one of the kind of ideas this group has had is that the bamboo simultaneously begins to lead towards a, a, an idea of a justifiable vernacular. And then following on what uh, Fernando had said that the, the kind of constant upkeep has its own advantages and disadvantages. I don't think it's currently detailed for upkeep, which I, I think is a, an interesting point maybe with Mauricio was picking up on. I mean, I, I wonder if, if this whole piece might not be better served either as, as steel or rebar uh, and as, as opposed to, and that it transitions to bamboo at some point in time. Or, I mean, because Mauricio's suggestion, which is that you, you somehow find a way to, to protect this elevation is probably correct because replacing this piece is arguably a nightmare, right? I mean, the, the replacement is really here and in, in these zones right here. And then that's the kind of kind of first kind of question then just to ask the jurors. But the other is that you actually then detail in your drawings, you know, that you detail the, the connection between the, the bamboo, that you have to literally kind of think, how do I remove the bamboo? How is that shown, you know, in, in the way that I draw it as a, as, a, as, a, as a piece, as opposed to as a kind of continuous thing? So but I want to go back to the first one, this question about whether or not the, uh, Maurizio Fernando uh, uh, Coleman, whether you accept the idea that this outer bay might be better served constructed in steel as opposed to in, which then means that also this kind of first bit of roof really is a, is a different material as well. I like I think, it in steel also. I think it could be, yeah. I think it's a viable solution uh, in another material uh, and, and it progresses to bamboo as you, you get indoors. But to reinforce what Fernando uh, was saying, and, and I I do completely agree with Maurizio. It, it's, it's, it won't last uh, more than five years. We did, uh, we designed a school in uh, Tamil Nadu in 2015 um, with a group of Buddhist nuns there. And um, the um, scenario that Fernando was giving uh, where the villagers in this case took an active part in uh, every five years, replacing the bamboo, uh, not quite as structural, well, as this, but it was a significant part of the design, was a way to have them buy in and stay committed to the school. Uh, different scale altogether, but that is, that is a way to bring a community together. 
Now, this is, a, I guess, a university level um, institution. I don't know if a community buy-in would be uh, the same, but that is one option. I don't, you know, you, and the students can answer this, I don't think you all were considering the uh, temporal quality of bamboo here. You were thinking of it as, as being more or less permanent. Um, and so back to David's comment, that is one option as, as a compromise if you're thinking of along, along those terms. But also um, to, have, to have a commitment to this, rebuilding it um, piece by piece, just as, as they do the temple in Japan, would be uh, would be one way of looking at this. I think it's a it's it's almost a ph philosophical approach you have to take on on uh, your intention here. Can uh, can we see um, uh, close-ups of the construction details? Exit out of. Yeah, it's interesting because arguably you're going to have to transition to steel here as well, right? For these larger, these larger structures that also are exposed, but they're more problematic if they they rot. Yeah, 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 I think it's similar to what uh, David was saying a minute ago. Uh, it would be uh, great to have a more believable detail on the uh, on the place where the uh, um, bamboo bundle uh, meets the, the concrete um, cone. Uh, something that shows how it's actually uh, put in place. And probably something uh, also in between just the uh, the the floor slab, and I think the, the more distance is needed on the, between the floor slab and the arches themselves. And, uh, I think uh, it looks like uh, the the, uh, the those plates are resting on the arches directly. I'm not sure if that's the case. There's a couple of maybe you should go back to the module and pack on. Yeah. Uh -huh. There was a yeah a 3D. Maritza, you're right though. I mean, I, I've been asking them to make it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. It's 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 been getting deeper. It needs to get deeper still. Yeah, I think more distance is needed between the slab and the and the arches, so that uh, to uh, to do a uh, a better transition of uh, loads from the from the floor to the to the columns and, and the arches themselves. Yeah, I think even a doubled system might help. Uh, one of the things that's been frustrating to them about drawing a building with this many small pieces, Maurizio, is that it keeps crashing their computers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you really need a supercomputer to draw it because it's it, there's so many pieces. It's just, it's mm -hmm. it's really mind bending. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I think it has to be deeper. I, I agree. Something yeah. that's also quite hard to get across is that these are create, like these arches are coming up to be flat in some components of this like web structure that then underlie this larger floor plate system in a way that like we are pretty sure works but cannot for the life of us find a way to draw convincingly mm -hmm. like the structural with... depth of this is quite deep at those points yeah, it's about 16 inches. David, you described this, I think, in, in your email to us as a schematic design level, right? It's, yes. Yeah. So the intention here is is uh, clear. The details have not been worked out. You know, but, I, but, but, I, but, I, but I think I, I think in all fairness, this is precisely the criticism that's really useful yeah. because I, I, I don't mean schematic as in I, I, this group is arguing that this system of construction and the and is the, the becomes the basis for a revived vernacular. I think the vernacular arises from some system of construction, so that and 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 a, and a material usage. So then that, that has to be critically developed. 
And I think the point that's, so I have zero concern about you guys saying that's got to be deeper or you've got to make more out of that. Or, or, I mean, you know, the, 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 the same kind of question applies to this usage of this kind of plastic bottle walls, whether that's the kind of most critical way to deploy that, or if there are other alternatives that you guys see as being viable and so forth. I, I mean, I, I, the, the, the groups made the argument, so they're open to that, that criticism, I think. Well, that, let's, uh, let's explore that a little bit. I mean, uh, do, what kind of slab, what kind of floor plates have you imagined for this building? Uh, because I'm here wondering uh, if bamboo is a local resource and bamboo with the proper technology can be transformed in a huge number of things, including the screens, including uh, floor plates. And if you have, for instance, bamboo floor plates uh, that allow the air to go through, so you, you don't need to have the sealed floors that we are used to because you, you can have ventilated floors. Uh, and, and that could be part of the push that uh, something like uh, Sri Lanka should get the finance for having a bamboo, high-tech bamboo plant there in order to produce uh, bamboo uh, uh, pressurized or treated bamboo materials. It's, it's the kind of things that the World Bank finances all the time. There actually is a UN, I think, project that is concluding now that was um, establishing a bamboo kind of infrastructure in Sri Lanka to uh, produce these kind of like, things. Like we have laminated wood, you can do it with bamboo. With, so high-tech bamboo. Uh, uh, the basis is the bamboo, but the material is much more uh, durable and much more resistant because it's treated. So I would, I would totally go that way. It's an interesting argument. So what you're arguing is that this plate right here could be made out of uh, essentially bamboo made into into mm -hmm. slab yeah. chunks and that it's, it, it, it's an interesting it's an interesting question about how you'd actually like assemble it like what the geometry would be but then what you're saying if, if i was hearing you correctly was that the, that it could at the center for example be open uh, or do you mean that or, it would be planks that would have gaps between them? I, I, I think I you have to plants plants with gaps plants with a quarter inch gap so I wonder because so essentially the idea of this building, which I think is really intriguing that they're starting to develop, is there are concrete shear towers, and that you from the concrete shear towers you can extend floors off, right? That that then that you can then tie into this bamboo system, so that these, these things have to be somehow rigid around their edges, mm -hmm. and then can be open in the center. Uh, 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 it's, it's, it could be then it's a very intriguing idea that you, that you basically you, you go from a kind of steel to bamboo to concrete to bamboo to steel to bamboo mm -hmm. that you keep changing the system in between and allow the allow the allow the the, the module basically to develop yeah it, it would be useful to, 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 to make a commitment to, to that material in this drawing and, and, and it's to all say about what, ventilation. what it is and it's all about yeah. ventilation because the only way to deal <laughs> with high temperatures and high humidity is to increase the speed velocity, uh, wind velocity. It's the only way you can be comfortable in high temperature, high humidity, as you have a breeze. Uh, so the more uh, permeable the building is, the better for the wind. Mm -hmm. We were definitely considering it being bamboo. That's how we've shown it in the renders, but yeah. It was not drawn into this. I wanted to comment on the cross section. I think it's a beautiful section. Can you take us there? That right there. Yeah. Yeah, you find all sorts of uh, spaces, double height spaces, really, uh, spaces that relate to other spaces. I think it's a neat uh, cross section. I'd like to hear a little more from uh, 
the, the designers about this um, revitalized uh, vernacular that that you're discussing because I, I, David David I think being his devil itself uh, having this first project we looked at and now this one um, we're not even commenting on how they're both the same building but so uh, visually uh, different and the goals of course in both of them are quite different and uh, you this project is is tackling a new vernacular revitalized vernacular, vernacular, whatever um, you prefer to call it. And the intention in that is what? Is it from a uh, 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 technique, technology, or is it from uh, a cultural um, um, indicator of, 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 of Sri Lanka, of pride? Where, where, where are you going with this? Is this strictly the use of the bamboo, uh, a vernacular from a structural standpoint, or is it a cultural signifier? It's definitely both. Um, when we were looking into materials, um, you know, the tropical modernism is so about this like clay tile roof and this like very wood framed structure. And all of those things are so drastically over farmed that they are so overpriced that they're completely inaccessible to any average person. Um, they're basically luxury items at this point. And the purpose of the vernacular is to be able to be accessible and to serve all of those people. And so because this bamboo grows so avidly in the area and is so accessible in a way that it will probably never be over farmed, um, it's something that we can look forward to in terms of starting to establish something that, that people can use in a highly technical, technological way or in less so ways. Or then are you teetering on um, the comment you made in, in your original um, manifesto, whatever the, the points uh, that you are about um, uh, colonial appropriation and colonialism, imperialism, that sort of thing. Is there a, is there a, a risk of being guilty of that and, and, and an approach you're taking here. I think that's a fair criticism. I think we've tried really hard to come at it from a point of view of this is what is available and we'd like to make it the best thing that it can be um, in terms of this bamboo is going to be plentiful and we would like to see what bamboo can do. Um, but in terms of the fact that we are three American students designing for Sri Lanka, it is, it is hard to toe that line. I don't know. It's up to you, I guess, whether or not we're doing it successfully. I, think, I, I, I commend you for trying. I'm sorry, Coleman. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'm just like you, Gabrielle. Uh, I, I haven't drawn a conclusion about that either. You know, it's, it's not openly um, imitating Sri Lankan culture, but it certainly uh, through form and, and uh, detail um, patterning and so forth ten, tends to, to reference it. So maybe, maybe that's, that tension is good. It's certainly uh, open to conversation. Um, I, I want to commend you for the effort. I, 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 uh, I think it's, it's the key question of any time you, it's called to design something outside of your region. Uh, and it's, it's a little problematic when you have to design in Minnesota uh, or in Mexico. It's much more problematic when you are designing half away across the world. Uh, but it's inevitable. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying here to think, uh, to make my comment on the modern coloniality, right? So... That is a huge body of theory that uh, elaborates on the fact that after 1492, the world developed into what they called Sistema Mundo, a uh, world system that uh, tied all the world together. And the, the man who's credited uh, with, with being the trigger of that system is Cristoforo Colombo. Uh, now that said, the name of the city where you were designing, Colombo, 
has nothing to do with him. Uh, the name is the name of, uh, of a river. It's the name of the port that existed there before. And, and the name is very close to the name Colombo. So when the Portuguese, my ancestors, uh, took over that, uh, that strait between India and, uh, and Sri Lanka and the island and controlled the, the shipping lanes there, uh, they, they, uh, they, they, they Latinized the local name for, for Colombo. Uh, and it, this is a beautiful example of how the word system of modernity coloniality operates. Uh, it takes something that is local, the name of the river, and it westernizes it to celebrate a uh, Genovese that uh, was looking for India, but never found it. Uh, he found the Caribbean instead, and he has never been there. Uh, and our history, the history of all our ancestors uh, were changed. Uh, no matter, we, we live in the Americas, so no matter if our ancestors came from Europe, from Asia, from Africa, or if they were here for 30,000 years, the history was changed by, by that system. So uh, architecture is an integral part of that system. And the fact that you are trying to design in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and you are torn between using the local bamboo, which is the only thing that survived the modernization, colonization, versus uh, using steel or, or aluminum or, or, or titanium. Uh, it, it's part of the system. We, we are inevitably tied to this system. Uh, there's, there's no way out except running for the woods. Uh, and uh, I don't think any of us want to do that, which is to, to run to the woods and, and be uh, hunter gatherers again. Uh, so we have to engage this question. And I think this group engaged it in a beautiful way because as much difficult as it is and as much contradictory and as much as we don't have an answer, you struggled with the question. And, and I want to commend you for that, for struggling with the question. Yeah, I agree. Could we go to the, the view uh, in the rain from across the, the street? I mean, I, I also, yeah, I think this is an interesting question. I mean, I, I think that there, I, I think the, the question of, uh, uh, I, I think it's, I, I think it's a struggle uh, because it, 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 no matter, no matter how, there's a whole question of style and style. Style is a verb, style is the noun. And, and so this group has made the argument that style as a verb theoretically brings you to a, to a condition which can be likened to a vernacular and, and, and therefore sidesteps the question of language. The language always comes creeping back in, right? It, it, it comes creeping back in no matter what. It's the, it's the uninvited guest that always has a key to your Thanksgiving party and always sneaks in in architecture. And I do think for me that like this drawing then, then poses is, I think there are parts of this that are quite successful and parts that, are, that, that warrant more consideration. That, and I looked at this drawing a long time trying to think about why I think these towers are quite successful. And I, and I think that this profile somehow is less so, right? And, and I think that part of it, and actually there's a third piece, which is this, this Gothic tracery, which I actually like, right? It's, it's actually, it's, a, it's, it's, it's very much a kind of a language that comes in from, from England, you know, like the, from English kind of Gothic churches, right? As opposed to from necessarily from bamboo. It's very much a, an element that just comes in because of, it was a way to make kind of small stone pieces hold up a flat wall, a screen wall in Gothic churches. Actually a very interesting, a, a, a bit of vernacular that turns into a language that then finds its way into the project. I mean, I think that the, for, for me, the, the, the issue isn't that you, it, you get to a kind of stopping point and actually the stopping point is the one that's the most interesting. I think that you would then have to begin to explore. What I like about these things is that they're arguably not vernacular, right? They're arguably shapes that have arisen maybe with regard to a construction system that bring you to a point which actually cannot be linked to anything that you could say is within a colonial context, right? As opposed to these things, which arguably they can be, right? They can be easily linked to. The, the ones that are in the middle are the, are, are the ones that it seems to me that these are the ones that require further consideration. Like you have to bring them to a point where they're neither nor, they're neither, they're neither kind of orientalist 
nor are they somehow just purely kind of geometric. I mean, I, I think they're the ones that, that, that arguably could be pursued the furthest. I think the, 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 the way that that might happen really has to do with going back to Maurizio's comments and then the kind of discussion we were having about pursuing them further structurally and pursuing them further constructionally, like, like, like actually asking, well, what are they really made of? As opposed to, they're, they're, they're really not made of my thought about what bamboo might be, but they're, they're probably going to be, need to be made out of something else. And, and where does that, that new thing take me or take us as a group into, into, uh, into, in, into, into what might be? I mean, it's really weird. I mean, the building, I think, that does that the, the worst and the best, and, and it's, it's this building that I have completely mixed emotions about, is that crazy Renzo Piano building in New Guinea. You know, the one with these crazy things that come out of the woods that, that, that you, it's a love-hate building. I don't know how Fernando and how you and Coleman and, and Maurizio feel about it. It's, but it's one of those buildings that's trying this, to walk this line I also. It. I love it. Yeah. You love it. I love yeah. it as well. <laughs> Maurizio, how do you like, do you like that building? That's that piano building with the, the crazy things that come out of the woods in, in, in New Guinea. No, I don't, I don't. You're going to have to look it up. You're going to say you, you don't know it or you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can precise it. Yeah. And uh, anything that comes from geometry, I think, uh, justifies itself. Uh, I, I see the um, these uh, wind catchers as they they are uh, hyperboloids, right? They seem to have these uh, rotating, yes. yeah. Yeah, they're, Anything ro that, they're uh, rotating hyperboloids. They're, they're uh -huh. really bizarre. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's neat. It's uh, it's the um, Le Corbusier's uh, enchanting idea, only built in in bamboo instead of uh, uh, concrete. It's as if the world of Blade Runner uh, concrete were taken away from them, and they had to build it out of out of bamboo. These look bamboo. very futuristic mm -hmm. in that sense. Yeah. They do, they do. Well, uh, uh, we need to, we're here uh, time. Oh, we still have a little bit of time. Wait, is it 11.43? Now, yeah, we're, we're, we're okay. We're, we're all right. We, we, we have a, about uh, 15 minutes or so. Could we go to the diagrams just briefly? I, I wanted to, to pursue uh, 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 Mauricio's comment about geometry. Okay, let's go. One. Let, let's go through them. There's one that you guys have. Keep going. Going, going, that one. Let's go back one. So I, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because this is the part about the building which is not drawn. Right, this is the concrete portion of the building, right? And and I, I wondered if the jury had had particular thoughts about this. Uh, 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 I mean, this, this is a very funny, th this group only just a week or two ago came to this idea of this very systematic plan. And, and, and uh, 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 you know, Maurizio, I wonder how you feel about it. I mean, this is the, so then this becomes a kind of geometric logic within the building, which allows the, the building to grow or it allows the building to kind of flourish. Uh, but it's itself a kind of strange imported idea, right? The, the idea of this kind of rarefied, purified geometry that that that, uh, and I, I wondered where you were on it, just or, or, or where the jury was on on this kind of uh, this kind of highly systematic, almost monumental kind of uh, 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 basis for for uh, for for these kinds of buildings. I, I think uh, uh, there are uh, when you uh, when you look at the. Um, the floor plan, you see these uh, uh, triangular pattern uh, that uh, uh, mandates on all the uh, uh, placement of uh, ramps and uh, stairs and elevators and everything. But uh, when you go to the to the renderings on the inside, it, uh, it uh, I think the pattern actually disappears. The, it becomes very a very flowy. Uh, space underneath the 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 roof. Can we go slowly to those renderings and, and, and jury members? If you see things that you just go like, "Oh my God, I hate that," just, or or 
or that's working or that's not working. Let's stop there for a moment. That that rendering, thanks for pointing that out, uh, David. I think it does look a little bit too vernacular and too local. Uh, I I would argue for some level of uh, invention or technology to come here. It uh, uh, it it does look a little too. Uh, too heavy on the locality for me. Yeah, I think part of it might be that, that there, there's something might, might, you know, this whole kind of question about how these floors are actually made, right? Like, like here actually it's lost, right? You, you, lose the, you lose the idea that there's actually a triangular basis, that this is a, a, somehow a, a panel, right? That, that, the, that this bamboo might have to be replaced and as a consequence, it might need to have somehow, you know, a, a kind of point where it has joints you know that and that 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 that, that re-enter the, the drawing. I, I I think following on what Fernando is saying. Aside from getting rid of the balls on this handrail, <laughs> but I, I, so yeah, Fernando is an interesting point. Is that, that, that you that what what happens here all of a sudden is it becomes very much a, 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 an image as opposed to a kind of a the, the the kind of system reading through. You you tend to lose it. I think Maurizio, you were saying that, and I, I think it it could come back a, a little more strongly. Both in terms of the, this kind of triangulated organization that that says that this is a this is somehow a, this is actually a structural plate, which is here rendered as just materials running across, uh, as opposed to like a, a piece of furniture by Khan or a door by Khan, where you see all the the way the, and then and then the, 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 and then yeah the, then the kind of question about how these things are maintained, I think uh, would be would be useful. Uh, Uh, so, guys, uh, any final comments? This is a bit of calm review. It, yeah, I will ask about the uh, the wind catchers that uh, you're referring to. Are they more thermal chimneys? Or are they really wind catchers? It, it, the way you were talking about the heat rising at the uh, heat at the top, causing the cooler air below to rise. Um, if they're truly wind catchers, it seems that um, they would be angled somehow towards the predominant winds uh, at the top. It's just a, it's a question of thought and terminology, I think, if, if you pursue this in your competition. A slight hybrid. Um, the plan is oriented in a way where they function as wind catchers sort of at this like opening point that you can see in terms of all of the air kind of gets caught and flows through, but they mm -hmm. function can, can largely, we see that I think, as section, maybe. Yeah. They function largely as thermal chimneys, but they are also catching. But maybe <clears throat> thermal chimneys is what they is, is I think I think Coleman's correct. I think yeah. uh, uh, for, from the yeah. point of view of legibility, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would love to know more about the balloon. I, I'm like Maurizio, I didn't quite get that one in the beginning. I, now that we're here, you've just got to explain it a little more. Yeah, do you want to go to, Sydney, do you want to go to the, um, yeah, this there one. Mm -hmm. Right, so we have, first we started with the um, idea of the, you know, the wind catcher and the wind flowing up. Um, but then we were faced with the problem of rain and what happens in that situation. So I think we still need a consultant to help us figure out uh, all the details of it, but this idea that there's um, sort of this compartment where the balloon lays in which when it's not raining, people are able to sit and enjoy that space. But once it begins raining, the balloon is able to deploy and sort of fill in that space um, to protect from the rainwater. Okay, I thought it was a mechanism to uh, at some point stop the air from uh entering or, or going out. It's more for rain. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, on the one hand, it's not shown, it's not shown hidden away here, right? It's not shown like, and, and then it, like, it's this thing which, which becomes quite large uh, having reached this point. So there's some, there's some oddness to it that it's not quite clear how it, how it does that, uh, even in this drawing. But yeah, Maurizio, it's an interesting idea. The idea was that, that you go, well, I mean, it, I mean you, could, you could have, they, they struggled with it for a while but for, with having something up here that prevented rain or, or got rain to fall onto the surfaces so it could then gather right. and you could collect it. But the problem was that then that disrupted the heat chimney. Yeah, right? in the, the, uh, the light. Yeah. And added just additional structural dimension to what's already a structural nightmare. Mm -hmm. Up above. Very messy looking and filled in with that. You have an underground cistern, a water catchment system, right? So, and that's catching the water from these um, uh, wind, wind uh, scoops. Yeah, in theory, it's, it's being, it's All being carried on the roof in theory the roof has a system of gutters that 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 tracks around the these these roofs right and and then it brings the water to points here away from that uh but it, it so this is a, this is unclear in the drawing so this shows it as water but the truth is it's not water there the water is centered to these other columns okay that are that are bringing water over somehow yeah, you might clarify that then because it reads, yeah. it reads as if it's catching water from also from the uh, wind tunnel, wind scoop. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, our jury has quieted down <laughs> to, to the point of uh, uh, of, of muteness, which either is a very good thing or is a, is a scary thing. Either it's just, it started, it's, guys, it's a start of I think it's a very good thing. I think it's a very good thing. I think it's a, it's a sign that the building, uh, the proposal achieved the, the, the goals of the, of the studio and the competition. Uh, I just want to make a comment on the balloon. Uh, the Brazilian pavilion Expo 1958, which was in Brussels, was designed by Sergio Bernardes and it had a balloon. Uh, the pavilion was a rectangular, thin concrete shell that uh, with a hole in the middle. And, and the balloon was supposed to go up or down according to atmospheric pressure. So if it was sunny, the balloon would go up and sun would shine on this atrium. If it was rainy, the balloon would come down and you would close the atrium. And uh, take a look at that if you, if you want to make an architectural reference to, to your competition entry. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. I just remembered it. I, I just remembered it. I, I, and I think it's in your book, Fernando. Is that right? It is, it's in, yes, yeah, yeah. It it's so beautiful. It's such a great idea. It's such a like spectacular idea. Well, uh, maybe let's, let's, uh, uh, well, we all, uh, are there any last comments, uh, Coleman and Maurizio on this project? It's just bizarre enough to be interesting. I love it in, in that regard. <laughs> how, how would the, uh, how would the, uh, the, uh, the, those are solar panels. Uh, they don't, they don't, they are, are they to produce electricity or, or heat? Uh, uh, how, how, how do they get uh, warmer? So this is a completely so we, fair question. Yes. Okay. So I think it would produce electricity, but um, because inherently they're getting hot, um, we it's helping achieve that pressure difference that we were seeking. Mm, maybe if there are some uh, water pipes uh, Around uh, around the panels, so that uh, there's some uh, mass that actually uh, keeps the uh, the heat in place. Mm -hmm. Because the panels themselves, they they will just catch light. It's Again, a really is there point. a yeah. dark glass surface under a high sun? Hopefully, they'll get quite hot. Mm -hmm. But that is a very good point. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe it's point. a matter of color also. 
Right. So you it, don't, they, they don't have to be painted uh, uh, black under the under the glass. But it's actually a really interesting point because, in, in, in truth, the, the ones that are most effective are the ones that are most close Closer. to horizontal. I mean, this, right. the, the sun is here, so these arguably these could be another material, right? That these are materials that just that just absorb heat. Because Maurizio is right. I mean, the really great thing about about PV panels is that they absorb heat, but they transform it to something else, right? So they lose heat. They they don't they don't innately become they don't innately stay as hot as some other materials that might become part of the system that remains hot. So this center section might be registered as another material and these and these lower are, are actually the pv panels that that are, that are in play so i'll do a bit uh, of a shameless advertisement here uh i am sharing something on the chat uh, i'm the editor of a series of books on latin american architecture and this is our latest release uh, the book the party was Monday, and the book is for sale as of yesterday, December 1st. And it's on the work of João Filgueiras Lima, uh, nicknamed Lele. Uh, Lele was a Brazilian architect that worked with prefabrication, and he designed a series of hospitals that were totally uh, operated on passive climate strategies. I mean, the only room that was air conditioned was the, uh, the surgery room. Uh, everything else was passive, and uh, it's worth taking a look if, if anybody wants to study more uh, how he dealt with ventilation in the, in the Brazilian tropics. And the Brazilian tropics, where he worked close to Brasilia, the capital, is very tricky because for half the year it's very humid during the rainy season, and for half the year it's very dry. So the strategy has to be adaptable to hot, dry, and hot, humid throughout the year. Uh, the, 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 the book is a PhD dissertation, and uh, the, the author created a dialogue with uh, Richard Neutra and Jean Prouvé. So the book is called mm -hmm. Lele Dialogues with Neutra and Prouvé. Uh, if anybody nice. wants to continue on that path, uh, there's, an interesting, uh, there's an interesting resource there. We, we have no problem with shameless promotion uh, 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 what, whatsoever. Maurizio, uh, uh, Coleman, do you guys want to sell anything while we're here? Uh, old furniture and so forth. Listen, why don't we, uh, 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 while we just have a last few moments, uh, uh, if you guys could quickly comment on uh, things in this presentation, uh, and then we'll go quickly back to the last presentation, perhaps, the uh, things that, they, that for, for, for uh, 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 actually, if you guys will just bail out, uh, and I'll share my screen. Uh, if you guys have comments about things that you think need to be changed for uh, for uh, uh, to, to, you know change or altered b before you commit to uh, a, a final presentation, uh, what, you know what you guys for would recommend. For the competition entry, for the competition yeah, comp entry. Yeah, for the competition entry. What, what you know for, the, on these two projects, what, what kinds of recommendations you'd make about you know what what kinds of things you look at just with your memory of the drawing. Uh, what you would take in, what you would take out, what was missing, what you didn't get, what you what you got, you know, what you would change. I mean, I think Coleman, you've already been really clear about this one, which is that you, you've got to make an explanation about where, you know, very clearly what what the what the what the what the idea of the, this international presence is in in this contextual condition here. I think we, we've already talked about the contextual is is addressed. But what other issues would, would you think have to be really affirmed? Uh, concentrated on so on, on this second project i think the main issue to be very flashy on the presentation is the fact that it only makes sense if it's a trigger of a local industry based on high-tech bamboo processing uh, that's how i think it made sense i think if you go if you try to go back to bamboo, vernacular, etc. it loses a lot of its power. Uh, right. It has to be bamboo in the 21st century. And, and make sure you flash that out. Yeah, in, in that sense, I, I think uh, some uh, uh, more study on uh, the detailing of the joints, uh, the process of how it gets built. Is it uh, built by people or with cranes? Are they 
pre uh, prefabricated uh, offsite, and then uh, the pieces are brought uh, just to be assembled here. I think uh, probably if 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 you think of uh, um, of a uh, prefabrication process, the, uh, the the you will know what the details are. So it's a, it's a, it's it's a it's a sum of pieces more than uh, uh, handwork uh, done uh, on site. Very nice. Yeah. I would um, add um, the concrete uh, inboard structure uh, needs more expression uh, in your renderings. I think it was pointed out in the floor plates and it's just not clear uh, when you look at the renderings uh, or most of, the, most of the project really except um, um, that um, axon, that there's even a concrete structure inside it. So I, I think if you can clarify that a bit, it would help. All right, and then quick quick uh, comments about uh, your remembering back to this project, uh, things that you would alter, change, just if you go uh, a drawing we really need to see or, or, or what, you know, like just looking at it, what it's a juror in a, in a competition, what you'd wanna know. Uh, I, I think that there were some uh, small pieces missing for me uh, that I didn't uh, quite understand. That, and that's why I had to ask, for example, the, the where the planters are, you know, just show them on the floor plans. And maybe also show, uh, at some point, show the other, the, uh, the facade that is opposite to the canal, just to have a complete grasp of uh, what the building looks like on, on all the you know, sides from, from all sides and add as many diagrams as possible to explain the main points ventilation diagrams structural diagram uh rain catching diagrams solar diagrams well what's funny they had that little they had that little page of diagrams which started courtyard rotated courtyard and so forth but it didn't quite make the connection to the building itself right that was the the not one thing to the final building yeah not to the final, final yeah. not to the final yeah. building i mean it, it explains the process but i think they need to flesh out the final building the functioning of the final building i couldn't agree more because i've been telling them all semester long no one gives a shit about process only everyone cares about is the final building well, and if it's good. If there's an architect <laughs> in the jury, he or she will give shit about the process. But only architects care about that. You're right. Coleman, any last thoughts on this one? I would support uh, completely uh, uh, comments from Maurizio and, and Fernando. I think if you have the opportunity to get more renderings um, in the last week to get you inside the building, I think there's some great spaces inside the building but we're just not seeing them seeing, uh, yeah. yet. Yeah. All right, guys, we are at, uh, I wanna thank you for, for joining us. We're, we're here at, at noon. We're gonna take a break till uh, 1230. Uh, Maritza, I'm gonna uh, uh, bail out, make some coffee, grab some lunch, but you're coming back at 1230. We look forward yeah, to Absolutely, it. yeah. Right, so uh, Coleman, Fernando, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you guys uh, uh, joining in. And uh, uh, we'll keep you informed of how the students do on uh, on uh, final review. Pleasure students, to be uh, here. Thank you, David. Yeah, man. Students will uh, see you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Colin. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. So I guess see you at uh, at noon thirty. All right.
Hey, Pierre Jana, how are you? Hey, David, how are you? Good, where are you? Sorry. Are you in Austin? Are you in Austin? Are you? Oh, no, I'm in Utah. Dude, that's so nice. Where in Utah? I look like you're in the epicenter of like, like, like there's disease all around you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm uh, in Salt Lake, have family here, um, so. Oh, that's nice. I like Salt Lake. It's actually one of my favorite cities in the U.S. I think it's so strange. I mean, I just, it's, I love it. I mean, that, huh? It is extremely strange. Well, I like it because, I mean, like the, the like there's a whole kind of thing about the, the modular vision of, you know, and, and, and the street width and the, I mean, I love it. I mean, that part is just like kind of completely amazing. I've got to get Annie Chu is coming in. There's Annie. Hey, Annie. Hi, guys. Good to, good to see you. Oh, there you are. Yeah, I'm here. Lovely to see your face. Uh, Annie, you see Pierre Jana up there, right? She's one of the other, we have two other reviewers joining us, but you are the two, Pierre Jana, Annie Chu. Annie Chu uh, is, uh, oh, I guess I should wait for everyone to join us. Annie, how are you doing? How's LA? Good. Good. Um, 72 degrees to something like that right now <laughs> finally right because it's been like like walter was saying it's been brutally like hot i mean he fled at, at, at some yeah, point it was hot it was just... for like we were over 100 for a few days and then um and then we have on thanksgiving day we had like super santa Ana winds which is the condition of hot winds from the desert and it just comes in and blows at like 80 miles an hour you know, so all these outdoor, so-called outdoor social distance Thanksgiving gatherings were all blown to bits and pieces. <laughs> but at least you had yourself, like you had yourself, this Wilfred joining us. You had your, yeah, you get your kind of treatment Hi, Wilfred. There. Hi. Wilfred, how are you? You're muted, Wilfred. You've got... Uh, uh, I just had a little bit of dinner. Oh, nice. Because you're in, the, you're, what time is I'm it? I'm in, in Berlin. Berlin. Yeah, yeah, oh, no. you're in Berlin. So, oh. So Annie is in LA, Pierre yeah. Jana is in Utah. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 we're gonna be joined shortly by uh, uh, Maurizio Luturiaga, who's down in, uh, I've got to admit him right now, who is in, in Quito. So we've got, we, we literally, <laughs> we have both sides of the world, both mm -hmm. sides of the Atlantic, uh, very nice. Both the, um, um, I, the students, I talked at length on Monday with the students about you guys, who you all are, and, and uh, uh, but I don't know if you've all been introduced to each other. Uh, 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 Annie is uh, uh, just going for who I've known the longest. And he is like an old, old friend. We worked together at Todd Williams' office. She and, and uh, uh, Rick Gooding have a terrific firm in LA, kind of uh, really kind of central member of the whole kind of LA architectural a world and a remarkable educator and uh, at Wentworth. Uh, then I think I met Wilfred. Uh, I knew of Wilfred at the GSD when I was a student there, but uh, I, I don't think we ever crossed, we may have crossed paths, but Wilfred's been a professor here for many, many years. He teaches here in the uh, fall semester, uh, has deeply involved with, uh, uh, with uh, the, I think the most remarkable uh, series of, of uh, public events we had here, the Latitude series, which brought architects from the essentially the kind of Arctic Circle to Patagonia together over a series of years to talk about kind of connections back and forth through North and South and Latin America. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, Piagiana, I met you and Maurizio more or less at the same time. Nice. Piagiana is a, 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 a kind of remarkable emerging scholar who's been with us for the last two years. Uh, and then, Pietana, are you off next year? Where are you? You're, are you? you're not leaving us, are you? Yes, I'm leaving in the spring. Damn it. Uh, yeah, I just have one more semester. <laughs> are, are you leaving just like to wander out into the desert of Utah? Or are you have you landed somewhere? No, I'm going to start my PhD. Where? Uh, Cornell University. Oh, congratulations. That's really, really nice. Um, thank you. Right. It's, it's ranked up there for a good reason. It's really uh, remarkable. <laughs> and then Maurizio, uh, I met Maurizio uh, through, Maurizio is an architect in Quito and has done really kind of intriguing, remarkable work in, in, uh, in Ecuador and Venezuela. And uh, we met uh, teaching together uh, uh, two summers ago in the Galapagos, which was like 
for me, like the high point of teaching, I just had such a great, I had such a great damn time. Uh, but a large measure of having a great time was, was getting to teach with Maurizio, who's just about like, 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 I think of us as matter and antimatter, quite, quite like literally the opposite in terms of like, a, like, like, a, uh, just, he's calm, I'm hyper, he's like, grounded, I'm not, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But really a remarkable uh, architect and teacher. So I'm glad to have this, this group together. Let me introduce the, the, the studio too. We have a, a decent schedule. So we have two hours, we have two group projects to look at. Uh, it's a, uh, so we have time. Uh, so let me uh, uh, set the, the uh, project out for you. Uh, if you don't mind, I will just uh, do two. So the title of the studio is Hot, Humid, Absolute. Maurizio, I apologize, you're gonna sit through this again. Mm, uh, because, uh, and the, the vehicle for the project is a, is a student competition for a school in Sri Lanka. The school itself has no particular program and you'll, you'll see it, to a certain degree, my interests in the studio were not in the school. They were m more precisely interested in this kind of question of hot and humid. And then in the question of absolute, absolute uh, architectures in particular. So the the I'll give you just a brief on the the the, the actual the vehicle the problem. The site is in Colombo, Sri Lanka. So on the south uh, west coast of Sri Lanka, it, the site it, this kind of square area with a golf course to the west and a canal to the east. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Is in a part of Colombo. The the original city of Colombo uh, is. Uh, uh, one second, I'm going to annotate and I'm going to go back one here. Sorry. So the, the original city of Colombo is essentially a kind of rocky outcrop and ridge, coastal ridge, behind which are wetlands. Uh, that was all farmland. This is now in this kind of expanding exurb of, of, of Colombo, which like many cities, around the world and this kind of hot humid region are growing tremendously rapidly as people move in from the kind of farmlands the uh, cities increasing in scale uh, quite tremendous speed and that area is is essentially becoming as you can see in these kind of middle drawings a kind of this kind of strange form of continuous nascent urbanism that's happening everywhere around the world with not so much public control, but a whole lot of private capital. So I'm, I'm particularly interested in that condition on the one hand, how buildings uh, act in that condition. And then uh, especially interested, there's a bit of a program for the school. The, the students will tell you what the school was that they were working on and so forth. But, but really it didn't in the end, it wasn't really the focus of the, the, the studio on all the projects. And one of the projects you're gonna see is very, it is an explicit concern, but uh, uh, there are not a lot of drawings of classrooms. There's more uh, drawings of buildings, building conditions, public spaces, civic spaces in the city. I'm particularly interested in hot, humid and, uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, the first is that it just seems to me that, that with the exception of Berlin, uh, Wilfred convinced me everywhere that I know is becoming hot, humid. I mean, hot, Austin wasn't hot, humid. Now it's hot, humid. And the hot, humid zone is expanding kind of tremendous, it's the kind of first thing. Second is that if you look at this kind of band of construction around the world, so much construction is happening in this zone, in, in especially in South America, in Asia, in that kind of band around the world. And then the third thing that interests me about it is that it hot, as opposed to cool, dry, other conditions climatically, hot, humid, it just, it, it generates so much desperation. That it that it becomes the mother of invention more than any other, with the exception of extreme cold, the, the more than any other climatic condition. So here, Kyoto, for example, I mean at the, the 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 Imperial Villa. I mean, it always amazes me when you look at this kind of era of Japanese architecture that essentially is a, a mechanism to escape the hot and humid summer, even though the winter is actually miserable, cold, and freezing. This kind of paper paper thin architecture lifted off the ground with these kind of layer upon layer upon layer means in the winter you huddle under a, a cloak with a, a brazier that can burn your building down just so that in the summer you don't have to kind of deal with humidity you know or Paul Rudolph so far I mean hot humid is a great uh, the great uh, the great kind of moment at which architects abandon propriety in favor of kind of direct response somehow to this extreme uh, condition. And then that said, within the studio, uh, generally speaking, the, the, I, there's a concern for obviously for sustainability and kind of passive response. But the question about passive response and it, it, with regard to, to humidity and hot and humid is not settled. I mean, the traditional 20th century notion as 
evident in this kind of uh, uh, market building was that you used light construction, you lifted it off the ground, you got, you maximized air movement, you maximized, uh, you minimized heat retention. But increasingly, there's a kind of argument to be made that mass is actually a, a particularly wise and smart tool to be used against hot and humid. And a great example is here at the Louis Kahn of Bangladesh, but we talked to, for example, uh, uh, Michael Manfredi and, and, uh, uh, and Marion uh, Weiss, who are doing a, a building in New Delhi, which for the embassy, which is, although it's not as humid, is nearly as hot. And they're using deep, deep, you know, grounded mass walls that are bringing cool up from the ground and dealing with issues like condensation uh, indirectly, right? Like there's condensation, but the cool and getting air to move over those cool surfaces is as crucial as getting air to move. So the hot, this, the hot component is, is, is one that they dealt with with mass. And you'll see the students dealing with this in different manners in the studio. So that, as I mentioned, that if heat and humidity is, is one kind of thing that I'm really, really interested in. This kind of condition of the city, here's the, the specific area of the site between 1981, 2008, this kind of the, the shift in the control of capital the worldwide reduction of interest rates, the kind of explosion of construction, and, and then the whole question of, about, about how that world generates strange civic space and, and what is civic space in that whole world. The other subset uh, uh, of considerations in this studio, which is what brings up the kind of absolute end. We, we read uh, Aureli, for example, about the, the whole kind of question about absolute forms and the creation of civic space in this kind of against urbanization. And you'll, that's a kind of thing that is uh, present in most of the student work in one way or another. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm interested in it as much for the question of civic space as for the question of how absolute architectures have a relationship to sustainability and that kind of idea of a repetitive, predictable section that's not tightly bound to program, but it's relatively loosely bound to program that allows for program to evolve and change uh, over time. So one of the things that the, the, the competition asked for was for the students to extend the legacy of uh, Jeffrey Bawa. In the studio, that ran into a number of different uh, 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 table saws, <laughs> better for worse. I mean, the first is the idea that modernism itself is a, a, a problematic, has a problematic legacy with regard to uh, colonialism and context. Uh, and the second, the Bawa himself was a, you know, Bawa, Bawa came from a kind of unusual circumstances within Sri Lankan society. And uh, generally the conversation within the studio was as, as kind of Westerners looking at Sri Lanka, that it was difficult to imagine how to actually proceed with regard to, uh, with regard to contextual response uh, in any kind of imagistic way. And students struggled with that question uh, by other means, uh, uh, particularly with regard to systems of construction, local materials, how a vernacular might arise with regard to new sets of materials. I mean, it's worth noting that the, the local materials present in Sri Lanka from which their kind of vernacular tradition arose, uh, hardwood uh, on the one hand, terracotta clays on the other, and then uh, local existing rock quarries have almost entirely been tapped out. There's, there's no more available hardwoods. They're, the clay quarries pretty much gone. The, the rock areas that were used to quarry stone have been pretty much protected. And as a consequence, really the available materials are plastic trash, bamboo, salt water. You know, there's, there is a local industry that generates a kind of a, a, a ground block, a ground-based uh, compressed block uh, that some of the architects have used. There's a famous project by uh, 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 Shigeru Ban for emergency housing that uses that uh, block in Sri Lanka. Uh, just want to mention a few things about uh, uh, just uh, uh, the site. So here's Colombo in this dot on the lower left of Sri Lanka. Uh, the brain map there is compared to Texas on the right, just to give you a kind of relative sense of, of the kind of driest part of, of Sri Lanka is about the uh, Roughly equivalent to the wettest part of Texas, uh, you know, between three to four thousand uh, millimeters, three to four meters of of, uh, of rain uh, in a, a year, and that uh, comes to, uh, in two monsoon seasons. Uh, the the 
the drainage pattern uh, for the island is a series of rivers and then a series of wetlands as waters get caught between the, the, the these, these kind of ridge systems. So the Colombo is in, in this uh, drawing would be the white area, the old city of Colombo, the white area on the left, and then the highlands on the right, the highlands on the right, a series of farm villages. And then the whole kind of area in the middle was drained through a series of canals by the Dutch. And that became then agricultural land and uh, still is a series of vital wetlands. Most of those canals, the dot in red is our site. Most of those canals still exist, although they no longer function as a, as a suitable or active drainage or transportation system as the Dutch use it. They're now pretty seriously polluted and also the source of uh, uh, a dengue fever carrying mosquitoes, which is a, a quite a, a serious emergency issue there in Sri Lanka. This is that the site, you know, one of the great things, and I got to tell you, I, I, I've never felt as good about this in, in my entire life. Wilfred, you may feel differently about this or in Annie. And I mean, we didn't get to visit the site, which was revelatory. I, I thought it was really spectacular to not know the site and not have a kind of chance to get to know it because it, it became a, it didn't become a kind of excuse that the students turned to uh, for why things were the way they were. Now, on the other hand, the, the one thing that you'll see that, that, we, that we did know about the site was that it floods annually. The, the, it's an area of Sri Lanka that floods usually up to about a meter. And that condition is only getting worse uh, over time. And uh, that is the one kind of response. In the tropics, with this remarkable solar diagram where the sun is more or less in a band all year long uh, overhead, it's eight hours of sun, uh, I'm sorry, it's 12 hours of sun a day, and 12 hours of darkness. The sun comes up pretty much straight, sets pretty much straight. I mean, it, it, it's a, a very short morning and short afternoon, very long period of sun overhead, uh, fairly directly all day long. Uh, sun both to the north and to the south of the site. Um, quickly, there's two kind of seasonal, uh, um, the, the continuous wind uh, on the site. Uh, wind uh, patterns are uh, the, the, the coastal town with wind. There is a short, a shorter, cool monsoon that comes off the Himalayas uh, in uh, January, December, February, a bit, uh, primarily December and January. Uh, most of the year, the wind is off the south southwest, coming across the Indian Ocean, very humid. Uh, uh, also fairly strong. There are occasional monsoon, or occasional typhoons uh, and cyclonic typhoons in this area. Uh, it is an earthquake uh, prone area as well. Um, uh, a couple of other things about the studio. I mean, one of the things, uh, Annie, you uh, 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 are less aware of this, but Wilfred and, and Pia Jano will probably know this more intimately. I mean, one thing our students don't do well is explain why their buildings are good. They, they're, they're good at explaining the process that they got to to get to the building, but they are never really asked to step back and say, I don't want you to explain your process. I just want you to tell us why the building is good. So we spent a, actually a fairly large uh, part of the semester asking the students to name principles, like first principles that they would apply to all of their own architecture and, mm -hmm. and to try to ground those principles in the world as opposed to in autobiographical things. So if, for example, the question of urbanization with private capital leading to the problem of architecture privately being the kind of necessary source for civic space. It was a subject that some of the students addressed, for example, or questions about sustainability and not all buildings should be sustainable, but how that then literally directly affected formal considerations that they had in their own projects, much like how at the end of Towards New Architecture, Le Corbusier actually suddenly goes from talking about the world to saying the Peloti, which is a really, it's a really remarkable kind of jump that he makes between so we spent a lot of time doing that early in the semester and the groups that you're going to see were formed up by, by by groups of people who had similar principles which once they then formed up as groups they had to rewrite and restate and i've asked them to present those principles as part of their their presentations i'll quickly show you the for the five projects the, this is the, the the first two we saw this morning this was a kind of large uh, tower which it, it was meant to be a kind of radiator uh, with kind of giant cooling fins that kind of ran up through it that then sucked air through through a series of large classrooms and a kind of social space. It's the first project. Second project, a project uh, exploring how a system of construction and a system of air movement here in, in a kind of composite structure, primarily of bamboo, partly of concrete, might act to generate a, a kind of new vernacular in some way. 
the two projects that you'll see today, this uh, first uh, project for a, a very serious uh, kind of market space, uh, uh, and then the second project, a project for a kind of a religious school elevated above a forum. And then the one project that you won't see uh, later today, a kind of project for a, 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 a really a kind of a, a, a public building set against the, the flood line that acts as a kind of a, a, a place that you go, uh, which is itself a kind of a protected courtyard school and uh, public building. So first thing, uh, that was kind of super fast. <laughs> uh, questions that you might have about the studio before we uh, jump in. What's extreme temperatures in the winter? What would be the January time versus the hottest time of the year? So hottest, you know, uh, hottest, it, it's mostly hot. So uh, generally any, the kind of daily temperatures uh, average between set the high 70s, low 80s at night to the mid 90s uh, during the day. Coolest is in the high 60s, uh, you know, and, and that's rare. So I mean, it's 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 tropical. I mean, it, it is, it's uh, 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 the average is, is is the average is. So this is a tough call. The average is just above uh, average comfort for Westerners, but obviously for people living in Sri Lanka, that range is far broader. Uh, mm -hmm. What is comfortable? What's comfortable humidity is quite literally outside our. If you mm -hmm. take that the kind of right. psychometric chart and you just right. bump the thing up, you're 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 within reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other questions? Where no, are you I there? have a comment that um, probably like Mauricio, uh, Ecuador is in subtropical or tropical rain? Uh, it's uh, really hard to say. We are uh, uh, just on the equator, but the uh, because of the mountains. Mountains, you don't have the humidity, right? We, uh, uh, at the, at the uh, at the western part of the Andes, then uh, then it gets uh, it's a jungle, it's an Amazon jungle. Right. But that's uh, probably one third of the country. Right. I'm I'm just polling like people who have actually lived near subtropical or tropical areas. I, I well, I, I, years. Uh, my first sixteen years of life is in Hong Kong, which is subtropical. Subtropical. So it's a little bit comparable, I think. Sri Lanka is a lot hotter and more humid because it's like purely tropical. But yeah. the monsoon, I mean, basically the typhoons and the monsoons are there. I think that that's correct. I mean, it's its not, for example, as hot as the Galapagos. Uh, yeah. I mean, in large measure, because there's a, there's much more elevation and that, that elevation generates far greater yeah. uh, wind speed and wind cool speed. air coming down. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'd say it's it wouldn't be far to uh, say to say Hong Kong plus 10 degrees. Yeah, it's something like that. Eh? If you bump that whole that whole range up. Okay. Uh, one other quick comment. This is a student competition, and 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 so if we have time, I'd love to just get like literally off the cuff input where you guys look at it and go, "If I were a juror, I would be so offended by this, or I would react positive, or you need this." So that's okay. another thing I'd like to throw out there as part of the add-on. But we'll make time at the end of the at the session for cool. that for sure. Okay. Okay. All right, sweet. So uh, let me let me stop share, and we're going to go with the uh, Amaya, uh, Daniel, and Nelly. You're there, sweet. I'm Nelly, and my partners are Amaya and Michael. Um, we're going to dive right into our project. Um, so we are proposing a vocational culinary and agricultural school in the Colombo district of Sri Lanka. Our concept stems from a focus on sustainability as a forum, as well as on creating a school which becomes a part of the public infrastructure by continuously generating interest in the larger civic condition. Um, so just running through the general organization of our building, our building is made up of four absolute blocks raised on a plinth of water infrastructure, which stores and filters rain and flood water. A large overarching roof blocks the harsh Colombo sun and utilizes a beam gutter system to collect water. The, dissolving, the building dissolves west of our site to allow space for an aquaponic pond, an aquaponic greenhouse, and a dry dock. There is a transformation within the building program on the weekends, which allows the community to enter the spaces within the aisles of the building. 
And during this transformation, the building transforms from a school into a farmer's market, as well as a dining experience on the weekends um, through the opening and sliding of specific walls and neighbors. Okay, so our seven principles <clears throat> are organized under our zero principle, the building should be a gift to the future. We believe that architecture must work to improve the environment and overall quality of life. Our first principle, no person is an island. We believe that the community benefits the individual and vice versa, and that there is a symbiotic relationship present in which the success of one is tied to the other. And confrontation counters complacency. We believe that contradictory external stimuli help to escape one's own insular thought process, and this in turn prevents the stagnation of culture as a whole. Uh, nature as a disruptor to order, uh, experiencing nature ground to us with a datum that is reflective and introspective, offering a contradictory experience to our daily automatic lives. The ground plane cannot sustain life, but can still support it. Due to extreme weather conditions, the ground plane is not fit for human inhabitation. However, the ground plane has valuable resources which can be collected and used to support habitation above. Sustainability as a form of cultural expression, creative originality through the practice of sustainability presents the post-colonial country a unique opportunity to reinvent itself. Water infrastructure as a resource to be channeled. Through the collection of unused dirty rainwater and canal water, we are able to filter and repurpose the water for farming and human use. Anarchic appropriation has exponential abilities instead of played out outcomes. In a Inhabitation anarchy allows the building to be aspirational, capable of generating and liberating life beyond its own limitations. The building order is just enough, ruthless and absolute until it is disrupted and jarring. Uh, the building defines itself as an absolute entity that is both different from its surroundings and is its own thing. The building is composed of two logics, the dialogue and the neutral. The neutral is a reaction to a, a, a statement of facts uh, that are tangible, while the dialogue is an open-ended discussion that is in, uh, open to individual interpretation. Um, so a little bit about our site. Um, our project is located on the east coast of Sri Lanka within a suburb just outside of the main city of Colombo. And our actual site is wedged between a canal and a golf course and the context surrounding it is quite dense and residential with a few outlying tall towers. Um, this is the front elevation of our building. Uh, there are four absolute blocks which both filter people through the site as well as confront people outside. Um, there's a large roof that provides shading for people to sit on the steps outside. And the windows provide a glimpse into the water infrastructure which is uh, what the ground, ground level has been given up to. Um, and then this is just our building within the site um, facing south. Um, our building almost matches the scale of the surrounding buildings. We wanted to continue the urban fabric and the scale of the city at the entry level. Um, but at the same time, we wanted to utilize the need for a large shading structure to also become the civic marker within the city. And here we have a longitudinal section of our project. So interspersed between our four school blocks are open alleyways, which encourage social and outdoor engagement. The folded plate roof opens to allow slivers <coughs> of light to, um, oh, the folded plate roof opens to allow um, light and air to circulate through. And then our floor plate um, are disconnected slabs, which allow slivers of light to permeate below into our water infrastructure. Um, so this is the first floor plan showing it during the farmer's market event. Um, so within the blocks of the actual building, we have a tasting room in the middle and kitchens at both ends. Um, this floor really gives itself a way to its civic program and the civic nature, which we felt was so important to our project. Um, the aisles are what bridges you and almost pulls you into the back of the building where the aquaponic farming is, and it's also where the farmers set up. 
So during this event, we would imagine the community would be invited to come and sell their produce along with what the students have been growing during the semester. Um, and this is a view of the farmer's market at the back of the building, which interfaces with the aquaponics and the aquaponics view. Uh, and then this is a visual of what the inside of that greenhouse would be like. Um, we, have the pave, we have a paved path cutting through this wild greenery on either side, which kind of contrasts with the ordered nature of the shelving of the aquaponic greens. And here's an alternate version of our first floor plan. So our building undergoes a secondary transformation for a weekly communal dining event. The central panels and tables pivot into the alleyways, creating a new access and civic space within the heart of our school. And here's a visualization of that. And moving to our second floor plan, um, our second floor contains the more traditional school programs, ranging from lecture halls, classrooms, admin, and libraries, all connected by central study spaces that are lofted above the tasting rooms below on the first floor. Um, this is a side of elevation of the building, which is uh, the largest public in entry into the site. It also expresses the underside of the building, which is given to the water infrastructure and one can sit on the steps that lead to it. Um, this is the ground floor, the current ground floor, which is the water infrastructure level plan. Uh, there's a central water body, which is relatively uh, clean water that's been filtered through the canal, as well as these sculptural cisterns which sit inside, which are uh, completely clean. You can walk around the central water body and there are some ramps along the side to take you closer to it. Um, these are the sculptural cisterns which are also structural and hold up the building and they're supposed to elevate what is essentially a water infrastructure into a temple for water. Um, this is a section cutting through the site from the canal and one uh, culminates the journey by um, you can go on the piers which are uh, sit uh, which are among the treetops. Um, finally a wall section of the cistern uh, and it's deliberately thicker and massy to uh, extract pools from the underground and radiate it throughout the building. Um, to conclude, uh, we are building as a school that enacts what it reaches in a, uh, uh, by creating a progressive environment. It responds to the site by creating its own condition, which filters the urban life into a cohesive civic space inside. And finally, it's a monument to sustainability that poeticizes the necessary struggle for sustainability. Thank you. Was there um, any specific reference to the figures of those hollow cisterns? Like, were you proposing certain commemoration of important peoples in the Sri Lankan culture? Or can you speak a little bit about the origins of that figures? of the heads? Um, so the heads were a way for us to elevate the water infrastructure into a temple for water and to poeticize this infrastructure. Uh, we deliberately stayed away from uh, religious iconography uh, and tried to be secular. And, um, and the second reason was that it came from the necessity to have a larger cistern and structural support which isn't really constrained by any form uh, of its own. Yes, but they must have some meaning. I don't think you can just choose, you know, 
large oversized heads to support an entire building value free right um, I think they you guys go go to the go to the section please mm -hmm. they're, they're just there or the, the rendering fine yeah yeah I mean, there's an immediate historic reference of karyatics, you know, of what, what holds up buildings or the female slaves right, in classical architecture. But I think, uh, you know, this is actually kind of a minor point, so I don't want to start the review process with that. It's just one thing that really jumps out because of the, you know, the, the ex exactness of these, um, you know, one of them look like some kind of, um, almost like a Buddhist figure, you know, with the long earlobes and stuff. But here it looks like maybe some kind of cultural leaderships, you know, I don't know. Um, uh, if if I may, yes. yeah, and, and actually that's the, probably the, the feature that uh, most uh, jumps up when you, when you see your project because it's so unusual. You don't expect that from happening on a project that, probably deals with, uh, with other things. But, but actually, it, uh, this is uh, what it uh, brought to my, to my mind. I, uh, uh, these images uh, reminded me of a book that I read a long, long time ago. Uh, and it was sort of like a take on the, um, the, uh, the Naked Ape the, uh, by Desmond Morris. Uh, it, uh, th there was a, a, a book that uh, followed that one. It was, the, I think it was Naked Eve. And uh, the author explained uh, that uh, during the Pleistocene, Pleistocene, I don't know if that's the, the way you pronounce that word, mm -hmm. it, uh, when the humans uh, started uh, uh, becoming more uh, of a semi aquatic uh, people, uh, they related more to the water. They started, you know, eating fish and all that. Um, and uh, I remember from that book, the explanation that uh, probably one of the reasons why the hair of women is thicker and stronger than, than men, and I'm a leaf proof of that, is that um, because the, uh, the babies used to, uh, when, uh, when women uh, went into the water just to uh, uh, be far away from uh, wild beasts, the babies would actually hold on the hair of women uh, while, the, while they were in the water. So this is the, the image that uh, brought me, you know, I, uh, I recall that, uh, that book. And, and I think it has to do with uh, the relation of uh, humanity with water. And, uh, and probably that's, uh, that's something that you act, it's actually there, you know, on, on, your, on your proposal. You are uh, letting water get into the building and become the base of the, of the whole proposal. I think that's a very, a very kind interpretation. I mean, there are all sorts of other associations one could have. And the question is, uh, how, how open are the readings to be? Um, you know, the, the fact that you are using these uh, busts or these uh, uh, representations of uh, people's, oversized representations of people's heads, you're filling them with water. They serve with, uh, they serve as uh, filtration devices and, uh, they stand in water, uh, you know. I mean, uh, other associations like, uh, um, you know, um, interrogation techniques, uh, etc., could also be read into the uh, into these things. So I think you have to be very careful why you want to choose uh, these figure figures, oversized figures, to um, serve as your foundation. Yeah. I mean, maybe we can table this particular item since it's, you know, it jumped out as, at all of us immediately. And that's just something to be noted that, you know, jurors would probably have a similar response to your entries and they'll be uh, intrigued very much by this imagery. And then it would conjure up quite a few associations that may or may not be what you want. So let's maybe return to the site and the and the upper part of the building and make our comments on that. Um, 
I have a question. If uh, you can help me, uh, are there movable pieces on the those uh, wooden uh, uh, pieces? Are they do they rotate? Do they uh, make the space change? Is that what you uh, mean by anarchic uh, arrangements or appropriations? Um, yes, so that's what we meant. These uh, louvers as well as the panels uh, facing the aquaponics both shut and open uh, for the farmer's market. It looks like in your plan is the central uh, thoroughfare area that has the pivoting panels, right? Uh, yes, that's the secondary transformation for a community uh, dining event. So are we looking? Are we looking at let's say towards the middle of the table? Are these two wooden panels in plan? The ones that rotate? Uh, yes, these are the two that rotate. I mean, forgive me for saying. Uh, forgive me for saying this, but uh, you know, your your representation of the of the users is rather one dimensional. Yeah, my, my bad on that one. I, I introduced it with the first. So uh, we we realized only at the very last that we didn't have Sri Lankan scale figures. And, and then <laughs> literally trying to find Sri Lankan scale figures is turned out to be a complete and total oh. nightmare. I mean, yeah. like, it, sorry, it, well, we're, we're all painfully aware of that fact. So yeah. I, I, I just, that, but literally something that when we began rendering, all of a sudden, everyone just like, yeah. Well, you know, we're talking, <laughs> we're talking about, uh, trying to be um, sensitive to sight and location and culture, right? I mean, dot, mm -hmm. dot, dot, dot. Um, so. Yeah, uh, I think point well taken. Uh, you know, maybe before it gets submitted, um, <laughs> I would swap them out. Yeah, I can take some pictures of my Sri Lankan friends. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Um, can we talk about the the siting and like the sort of larger scale approaches? Um, I was very intrigued by your principles of this kind of comparison between the absolute and the neutral, you know, as a way to think about uh, the viability of spaces and the usability of those spaces. So maybe, yeah, maybe the plan is a good place to start. start. So, I mean, it looks like your Southwest uh, Prevailing winds will be running through the kind of central up and down axes right now, right? Like if the wind comes through, it's going to blow right through the the center part of those um, um, communal areas. Is that correct? Um, yes, it enters uh -huh. from the bottom left. Yeah, mm -hmm. through there. Through there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just trying to study it a little bit more. Do you mind zooming in a little bit on the plan? Or I can do it myself. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm <laughs> doing. Oh, I can do it on Zoom. That's right. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm not sure if we can do it in presentation mode. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, I'll just look. Um, you can do it. View options. You can Zoom. Uh huh. Could could we look at the plan again? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can do it. Great. Can you uh, maybe the team speak about, and you know, feel free to annotate to illustrate your point. I'm wondering in the assignment of this um, puzzle right here, what do you consider to be absolute and which areas do you consider to be neutral? Um, <clears throat> we would consider the school to be more absolute and the absolute and ruthless part of our project, sort of the organization, the spacing of the box. 
Uh-huh. Yeah. So basically, the four blocks that face the street to be absolute, um, and like mm-hmm. Michael said, the aquaponics, the water infrastructure, and the movable parts to be um, uh, more in dialogue. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering um, in in sort of like scrutinizing the the pieces that are absolutely necessary. I can see that the four blocks either facing the street or the um, the aquaponics side. Um, if you know those are kind of bun- tightly bundled uh, functional uh, pieces to it, and then then everything else, uh, it's kind of up for grabs, maybe the circulation as well. And I'm looking for the actual real estate of the neutral spaces, the spaces where people can actually uh, appropriate. And um, that becomes, I don't know, is it okay for me to annotate to show you what I meant? So I'm, I'm just sort of thinking like, are these areas right here, what you meant, you know, are, they, are these the areas that are uh, sort of free for grabs, so to speak, uh, or maybe even including that, or maybe including these? Um, I guess, I think we've been thinking about um, the neutral and the absolute as synonymous almost. So the entire structure of that building. So um, the, the, the reason I asked the question back to your principle of absolute and neutral is like, I think I'm understanding it simplistically that there's sort of uh, problem solving functional pieces that has to be there to see the activities uh, and to support activities of this area. And then the neutral area um, can accept any kind of wireless dreams possible in terms of how people were to use it. And, and you've spent quite a bit thinking about the occupation of spaces in these neutral areas. And they tend to be um, shown as kind of a communal dining or maybe a small sort of gathering this is a marketplace, right? Yeah, that's yeah. a farmer's yeah. market running through where, the aisles. Where are the vendors? Um, are the, Michael, if you would zoom in, you can, it's yeah, very- Where are things being mind. sold? Yeah. Um, so they're being sold outside and that panel also opens so one can stand inside and- um, Oh, so the, the vending space is actually is, is in this uh, horizontal area. I'm, I'm thinking very pragmatically of the proportion of spaces for the vendors versus spaces for so, uh, so-called uh, like a food hall situation. Um, and I'm wondering if there's a disproportionate amount of um, gathering spaces versus um, selling spaces. Do you have that feeling? Or maybe it's just a way that you, you know, could, could, the, could the vendors be everywhere? Because in traditional uh, market halls, um, a, a great majority of those vendors are typically right inside aisles and then you walk through and you're double loaded uh, and you can sort of there, there's a, there's almost like a, the vendors have so-called like a back of house and the front of house uh, so that they, they can display their wares towards the aisleway where people are walking through and shopping uh, and you have enough width of it so that the shoppers can stand and like, taste the foods and stuff and while people are passing through them more towards the center of the aisle. Um, that seems to be a, a you know, a pretty, um, typical sort of circulation pattern of a marketplace. And then the food places are either sprinkled in between in the middle or towards any of the ends and stuff. So they don't distract the, the issue of buying and selling and stuff. So I'm looking for some kind of recognition of the function of a marketplace in your planning. Um, and I know, yeah, so, I mean, that's just a, 
really kind of a functional question. Um, yeah, we were imagining the farmer's market to occupy the aisles as well. And then these kitchen spaces could be where they sold food. Uh, so they actually put it on the platforms that open, open out. Okay. I think that for your um, entry into a competition, I might suggest that you mix it up a little bit and take over some of the uh, gathering spaces for and, and use that to show a, a fair amount of both the selling activity and the gathering activity so that your, your pattern, your absolute pattern of distribution of spaces actually uh, supports a variety of uses um, because the, the so-called the neutral zone should also be the most sort of varied and most active and and activated right from different activities and that that would I think be convincing um, there are very small items such as you know I don't want to really dwell on it but you know just the issue of visual privacy from toilet stalls you know looking out I mean uh, you know I, I think that that's a little bit kind of problematic to think that you know, that people might think that, well, you know, you think we're a third world country and so you have our toilet doors open to the outdoors and you don't have that kind of layered privacy or thresholds that uh, developed worlds have with, you know, the issues of, you know, not being seen going to the bathroom. I mean, there are, there are things that one might read into that, you know, from that kind of audience. Um, so I would be careful about that, yeah. Yeah, I think like uh, on the same note, um, I have or I found certain uh, issues with the project and th that go beyond, let's say, uh, probably, and this is going to sound bizarre because we are indeed in an architectural review, but go beyond, uh, you know, the architecture itself uh, of your building. And one has to do with another part of architecture. So in a way, my question is indeed architectural uh, because it revolves around discourse and the words that we use uh, to contextualize our own projects, right? So my first issue uh, I found with the project is its lack of specificity, right? Um, and I, I mean this by, uh, by how you have constructed your context, right? and what are the hints about the context that your project is able to provide us, right? As external reviewers of the work. And of course, like many of those comments uh, as Annie and Wilfred has, uh, have already mentioned, right? Revolve around issues of representation, right? But mostly my biggest concern revolves around the use of words, right? You say like the title of your project, or at least when you, your first slide is a gift for the future, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I find issue with the word gift, mm -hmm. right? As, uh, as uh, practitioners and designers um, that exist in a different reality, right? Um, so th that is my, my, my first, you know, comment or um, avenue for you guys to, you know, think uh, uh, more broadly about also the power of certain words and how those words um, exist and reinforce power relationships that uh, we are now you know, in conflict with, right? And then the second word would be sustainability, right? Uh, I, I am really looking forward uh, for, an uh, for a clarification on how sustainability is enforced throughout your building or how you have conceptualized the term within the project itself, right? Is it the reuse of a natural resource, water, or is it the re uh, like um, the the way in which uh, local labor is uh, enacted or finds an avenue to exist within the building? Is it you know a, a, um, a research on materiality, but then you know we see a lot of concrete in your building. So there are many questions around that that for me are not super clear. Again, like, because I, I think like the biggest issue then with the project is with that lack of specificity, right? And again, like finding issue with words has to do with also the fact of how, you know, contexts are formed, right? And that has to do with the fact of what are the predicaments or parameters that you're taking when you study a context, especially a context that is not 
yours. Um, and you know, how do you make uh, or find architectural references um, that might go beyond the canon, right? So for example, like I'm interested in rituals, everyday rituals, you know, how people eat, right? That is a fundamental question based on the fact that you decided to go for a culinary school and to provide spaces for eating, right? Street food is a huge thing in Sri Lanka, right? And the fact that, you know, it is a culinary school that elevates uh, or let's say that creates like a, a, a disjoint uh, in the notion of, you know, everyday street food versus, you know, an elevated form of culinary process. I find issue with that. Uh, and, but also because um, we're, we're talking about something that I also like, and I agree with David and what I like about the um, studio prompt is like the possibility of creating a civic space, right? And for civic spaces to be actually usable and inhabited and actually appropriated by, by those that will end up uh, using the space, you really need to take a, a look at what are the rituals that can start to emerge or proliferate in that particular space, right? Or that are just there to provide the space for them, right? Um, so, you know, and I've had similar issues with my students this semester, right? Uh, uh, it's like, how do you build a context, right? Uh, when you're so far away. And I would say like, well, maybe we can expand, right? What our sources are as architects, right? popular culture, popular media, <laughs> newspapers, like all of those, um, you know, forms of knowledge that have existed at the margins of our, the architectural canon, in which, you know, the only reference is a building by another guy in, you know, a, a few uh, years ago, right, could be, you know, a, an interesting starting point, right. Um, and I'm going to leave it to that. Can we uh, go back to your really beautiful section through the whole site? I think just a previous view of the section. Uh, the section. Michael, can you get to the section? Yeah. Come on. There we go. I was really, I, I think, you know, Pierre Gianna mentioned something that was so important about, you know, defining one's context, you know, because as a, as a task of a translator, you're coming to this context that you cannot visit, but you can mine in many different ways. And I'm wondering these rituals that Pia Gianna talked about um, will find itself in things such as even the dimensions of these first move into this context of this, like into the site, you know, like this particular dimension here um, becomes like critical. It, it talks about whether one can gather or one has to move through. And the idea of hanging this one moment in the, you know, just, I mean, this threshold moment, I'm just thinking about in the one kind of building characteristics of the kind of continuous building experiences in the tropics and subtropics have to do with these kind of thickened layers of um, thresholds and building skins. And I'm thinking about that this threshold itself is a very potent, area to discover a very unique solution because you have both this kind of water coming down are you you know and, and people gathering and people kind of sitting facing it um i think that we're we're missing that one re rendering actually of this very critical experience that uh, would make a big you know uh understanding of the project because i think you have some 
building of some very sort of poetic and strong moment here in the architecture that um, is, is not shown to us right now. Um, and wondering also, I mean, I, I think they have no issue with the concrete. And I think earlier when David talked about, you know, we're more and more understanding that the, the mass is important. Um, and I remember when I was young, you know, in a concrete house that uh, you often sort of put your skin against the interior of that concrete wall because it is really cool. And there are also other rituals and talking about Piagiana's rituals is that there's certain moments when in the monsoon where there's certain numbers, you know, like the warning numbers, you know, number one, number two, you're still going on and going to go shopping and all this stuff. And then later on, when you go to the number eight and nine, you got a shelter in place. But what you do is actually find, if you find yourself sort of like in these situations where you're in between the numbers and suddenly the weather change on you and the monsoon is here in full force, you're in an observation zone where you can actually uh, feel safe enough to observe the kind of awesome power of the wind and the rain coming down. It's like anyone who has experienced that in their life know that that's like, you know, it's just an amazing uh, phenomenon to be watching. You know, you really understood that kind of the, the dark side and an awesome power of nature when you can observe something like that. And your civic space right here uh, is almost could be functioning in those situations where in good weather or bad weather, you are here and there's a, a and, and you have this kind of safety of these little blocks that actually can shelter you in a little bit. So there's a lot of potency in this project in terms of uh, what it can provide for the kind of cultural civic life of the area that needs to be further mined, I think. Um, so. Yeah, the, you know, the mass is usually the mass issue is really funny. You know, we talked to architect after architect after architect. And it was this question we kept posing. You know, like how do you achieve mass without concrete? And I mean, just because concrete, not great, right? And literally, there's there, no one. No one. Everyone's yeah. Everyone's just throw their hands up. And go. I, I I'm desperate to achieve mass, and there's nothing. You know, there's 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 nothing that that, that and it's it's just this bizarre. This, I mean, Pierre, Johnny, you're after it, right? You're going, well, I mean, the, the, it, you have the language of sustainability and then the question of concrete and you have to be precise about it. But, but this is this is one of those things that falls precisely in the zone of imprecision, you know, concrete or not. You know, it's just. I mean, I, th I think that, you know, that, that for me, I'm, I'm on the concrete side because I think we need heft sometimes in our buildings. Um, you know, it's it's a sense of stability, especially in civic spaces like this. You, uh, there, there's a practical problem of pests in building in these climates. You, you know, wood is actually problematic because there's so many different insects at work and there's so much about uh, water uh, damage to, I mean, you're fighting nature in, in building in this climate and you're fighting the pro proliferation of pests that would eat away your building. So concrete is one of those solutions that um, that sort of check many boxes, you know, except for you know, of course, the, the ones that we know. But I would I would actually just say, you know, you know, you're going to have the concrete. Do it and do it with that kind of understanding of creating that kind of heft um, that actually makes the, the the sensation of let's say for example this space right right here so if you were to kind of make the concrete even like a little bit oh this is really bad um no and you're absolutely right it does, you know like, like make the concrete <laughs> thicker towards the bottom here right so that you can actually really kind of hold a person hold that activity in and those are areas that people can sit on, you know, um, you know that. But it give give the base of the building that kind of sense of, uh, you know, the of weight. And then you carve out the ground in front of it, and then you have the light coming through into the cistern below. Uh, 
and maybe your foot is bridging, you know, between those areas or something like that, yeah. that you can really play up the poetics of the, you know, those experiences, um, even with this very kind of rigid, absolute, you know, geometrical solution. So I would just encourage you to, you know, really kind of rub your skin raw and kind of feel the space. Because I hate to say that we're in Zoom time and, and, and our time has already um, kind of gone, absolutely. gone by. So we like, just have a few, uh, few minutes. I, I would like to talk about the roof, if I may, uh, or make some, some comments about, uh, about the roof. I think the cross section is good. Um, the, uh, uh, but also we can see that on the, uh, on the uh, uh, perspectives, the, the, uh, the aerial views that you have of the project. I believe the, the roof, um, because it's a folded plate, uh, I think it needs to be, uh, it, it needs to have a, a, a more pronounced camber beam. I don't know if, the, if that makes, uh, if what I'm saying is, uh, is correct. You need, you need to do uh, the foldings more uh, apparent, especially uh, when you get closer to the, to the, plate, uh, to the column. There, because there's where all the forces are going to gather, all the weights are going to go there. Um, you want to bring the water towards the columns because the, uh, uh, there's where you catch the, the water and, and uh, bring it down to the, to, the, um, uh, to the lower part of the building. But uh, I, I think that you have to uh, change the proportions of the foldings uh, to make it more uh, believable. The, uh, uh, I don't know. The, looking at the scale there, uh, the um, the cantilever on the right side is probably like 20 meters long, maybe more. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to think, uh, how is that going to, you know, stay in place on the first uh, on the first place? Uh, so I, I think the uh, the uh, roof needs to be more uh, believable. If that, if, uh, if I can use that. That, uh, that work. And there are uh, really Please. good uh, uh, examples of, of how that uh, has been done. In the 50s and 60s, you, you have heard about Felix Candela. Uh, there are some um, metro stations in Mexico City that uh, have very, very pronounced uh, foldings. There is also a park, uh, it's an acoustic shell that uh, has the, the feature that I'm that I'm uh, thinking about, maybe I will, I will a little later, I'll, I'll write the, the name of that uh, project. I, I think it would be a good idea to look at it. Um, there, are, there were also some uh, detailed drawings of, uh, of, that, uh, of the place where the roof meets the column. I don't know if we can get closer to, to, those, uh, to those views. Michael, could you scroll that view? Oh, I, I, uh, by the way, uh, f uh, just for a second, uh, I don't know. Uh, could you go back, please? And, and for, all, uh, uh, for what I understand also, uh, on this particular cross section, the wind would come from the left side. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, if, the, if the wind comes from the left side, the opening should be on the opposite side, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, the uh, warm or hot air uh, uh, escape route would be better. Um, uh, done if it goes on the same direction towards the same direction from where the uh, the wind comes from, because it will the the roof will create a negative pressure uh, 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 volume just That's behind the, the just flipping, behind the opening. Flipping, yeah. flipping, fl flipping that. Yeah, that has right. to be flipped for it to uh, for it to work uh, better. Can I just say a few things? Um, uh, I think that your projects, um, your project is seemingly about a relationship between ideas and um, a solution. Uh, however, your principles are not really tied to any formal solutions. Uh, I don't see that uh, realized. I think uh, your project is really full of discontinuities and uh, the clearest uh, aspects of these discontinu discontinuities uh, is in your, A, in your structural system. I don't see the uh, a kind of a logical system uh, between the foundations, um, the cells and the roof. 
I know that you've got some walls uh, that carry uh, some elements, but um, besides the issues that um, Mauricio has mentioned, uh, I think your, your roof system, um, the large cantilevers and the, the thin shells, I, I don't see that that is a realistic uh, roof. I also think that if you look at the floor that you have as, as your main floor, uh, it's very, very thin. I don't see any beam constructions. Um, so that's the structural system, which is, you know, a pretty major aspect. Uh, the other thing is that while there's a kind of a logic to the water flow um, and an airflow, uh, I don't actually see a, a logic to a lighting, a daylighting system. Um, as these units all seem to be internal. And, and finally, I, I don't understand how you have a, a six bay um, uh, series of, uh, or a triple food production to a quadruple cells and why, why you've got four to three. Uh, don't understand that in, in plan. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm wondering how you're going to make this into a scheme that um, will survive the first round of the competition, frankly. You know, this, this sounds very um, negative, but I, I'm, I'm afraid there are so many things that still need, need to be addressed uh, that uh, you'd have to spend a lot of time and, and actually thinking about the continuities uh, that you need to actually resolve. We're going to have to end. I actually, I think these are great comments. I mean, they're all very direct. They're, they're very kind of clearly about what what doesn't read through in the drawings and what does read through in the drawings. So I think they're actually really, really useful comments with regard to the competition. Uh, uh, I appreciate them very much. I, we have to end there. Uh, uh, the group, uh, group Amaya, Michael, uh, and Nelly. So let's do that. Uh, let's move on to uh, Andy and Danielle and Fatima. Thanks, group. Thank you all. Yeah. All right, hope everyone can see my screen. <laughs> okay, hello everyone, um, I'm Danielle. And I'm Fatima. Um, and our project is um, visualized as a 21st century school in Colombo, Sri Lanka. So this is our project um, within the scope of the city, just showing it in context with the surrounding buildings. Um, and then our thesis statement goes, um, the urbanized 21st century is characterized by increasing political, ecological, and social uncertainty at a time when the public realm is increasingly given over to private control we believe modern civic societies require the school to evolve beyond its traditional conception to address the transience and metamorphosis required by our time. So as we developed the project, we were looking at examples of um, people carving out spaces in Sri Lanka in the past. Um, so one that we were really attracted to is Sigiriya, which is a uh, monastery and palace complex from the 400 CE in central Sri Lanka um, that really stands out as something very unique from its surroundings. And another one that we were really interested in more was more common, more of a typology uh, called the, the Ambalamba, which is these rest stops that existed um, at various points um, across the island. And they were just, um, they were defined sectionally in this, um, which also reflects the gaining of height at Sigiriya as a way to separate yourself from the everyday. Um, but they were just these spaces that were created as um, something different from the surrounding, something that stood as its own place. And we decided to, uh, to conceive of our school as a piravena, which is a type of food. You're breaking up. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? It's okay oh. on my end. I can hear you. Okay. Um, well, if I start breaking up, just hop in. Or um, I can also turn off these headphones. That might be it. Um, 
Yeah, so the school is a, is a Piravina. It's a type of Buddhist monastic school that is indigenous to Sri Lanka. So there's about 650 of them uh, currently on the island, and it's about 15 to 20% of school-aged children in Sri Lanka go through a Piravina at some point in their life. So it's both monastic and lay education. Uh, and there's a couple elements that are common to almost every Piravina. One is that they are always spatially limited by a gate and a wall. Um, Two is that they almost always contain a central hall or some sort of central building. And that three is that they have gardens that typically, con typically contain shrines and a body tree. They are usually um, in the same site as a larger Buddhist temple or shrine. And then the fourth element they typically have in Sri Lanka is a stupa, which is typically um, a, has a traditional form. Um, and generally that the, the Piravana and the temple is organized around that stupa. And you can see a typical layout in the top left corner here. And so rather than being one building, it's really a complex where the temple and the school kind of intermingle and are set up as these different, uh, different spaces. You can go to the next slide. Um, are you able to see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay. So this is just the perspective view from the adjacent highway. Um, it's showing a little bit pixelated. Yes. Uh, we had some graphic issues, but um, we can zoom in at a later time so it can be clearer. But this just shows the building in the larger context um, at the adjacent highway um, and the different components of it, which we'll get into. And so in, in um, showing that, what we really establish the school as is, and we'll, we'll go into more into detail as we do this, is we have the Piravena is essentially on this top layer that's floating over a public forum and is connected by this vertical circulation and residence area. We'll call it, we call it a T a lot. So we had five principles that we really tried to keep at the forefront of our minds as we made the decisions for the school. Uh, one was that civic buildings must foster a symbiotic relationship between the people on the outside and the inside. Two, buildings should resist the privatization of the public realm by fulfilling a public need. Three, buildings should embrace the unpredictability of the external world and its climate and climatic events. Four, public spaces must be spatially limited but visually connected. And five, 21st century buildings should encapsulate the transience and metamorphosis inherent in contemporary life. And at this part of the project, we just wanted to walk you through a diagram we made to illustrate that. Yeah, so our building's really composed of three main components, this plinth um, that has programs that I'll explain in a little bit. And then um, this vertical T um, that comes in, that floats above the plinth, which is composed of a horizontal front and then um, a, a vertical front and a horizontal uh, kind of secondary plinth that uh, floats above the ground plinth. Um, and inside of this, we really have these three objects that are brought in from I guess we'll, we can say Sri Lanka, these outside objects that we did not create, um, which is the rock, which symbolically for Sri Lanka um, has this meaning of being distinct and unique and can spatially uh, define a space um, historically as well. Uh, the stupa, which is a part of the, of the Paravena program, but also culturally symbolic to Sri Lanka. Um, and our idea with the, with the stupa is that there are actually a lot of stupas on the banks that are in danger of destruction. And ideally, we would take one of those um, that are being eroded or destroyed by the erosion on the banks and bring that in. Um, and then bringing the Bodhi tree in, um, the body tree in at the top as well. Um, you might just let this play out one more time just to illustrate that. 
Um, and then another thing that was interesting to point out is the role of the rock in the spatial organization is that it is in strategically placed to disrupt circulation. So it's almost as imposing, these three objects are imposing into the project. All right, so just another diagram of that. Yeah, so the forum um, really is defined by the present day idea of assembly and gathering. And so when we chose these programs, we really thought of what are those programs? What have they been in the past? What are they in the present? And so it's composed of an auditorium, a library, a debate area, and um, these this pool and badminton courts, which are kind of these sports facilities um, that we see in the forum area. And then in the Paravena itself, um, we on that horizontal, T, we have classrooms for the school along with meeting areas and the Bodhi and the stupa. And then on that vertical part of the T, we have dormitories and um, public circulation to access that stupa. And so this is just a plan showing the Piravena just from above, the 60 meters above. Um, this is cutting, actually cutting through the Piravena. Um, so you can see those classroom spaces as well as the residential to the right, um, as well as the stupa and the body tree kind of disrupting the circulation within those spaces. Um, um, the forum, oh, Andy, did you want to say anything about the, the remissing? Yeah, so I was just gonna say, sorry. Um, so one of the things with the Piravena is it's typically residential. So the vertical T here has these essentially cells for the monks as well as for the students. Um, and it's designed so in the library, you can see the circulation wrapping around so that people from the forum can ascend through the library up to the, um, up to the shrine level and experience this public plaza within the private Piravena and then go back down either via the stair or via the elevator, which is in the top corner. Um, and it, so there is this experience within there that because typically in, um, in Sri Lankan temples, like gaining height has a spiritual significance and this idea of circumambulating, not just the stupa, but the temple itself um, has a ritual significance as well. And the forum itself, sort of how Danielle had implied earlier, it really is defined by this rock, um, which is one of the like defining elements of the space. And then this program is really brought in and is placed around um, this central figure. And so people approach this from the West End, you come up um, and there are a couple of uh, market spaces, those boxes that you see um, those are some open market spaces for the public to use. Um, but this really is something that you um, ascend and proceed onto this platform. Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. Um, so this is an elevation of the front of the building showing, this is essentially if you were looking at it from across the canal, uh, that the site. Um, so you can see there's carvings in where the, the dormitories are rowed away and it's still is screened, uh, providing these glimpses through to spaces beyond, so it, the stupa, the tree, and then underneath at the bottom of the building, the, um, the screen and the vertical portion lifts up to create this inviting entrance into the forum. And this is an elevation, uh, also an elevation of the side of the building. So you, you can see the openness um, looking through. So we really wanted to achieve this quality of the Piravena really floating over this public forum. So these two spaces that are related, but spatially distinct. Um, and then this is just a north-south section, um, just showing at an angle how that space, those two spaces actually relate um, and so it was very important for us to have the forum be this um, sectionally defined um, space. And so you kind of, uh, 
you go down and you are elevated in different parts of the forum, depending on what program you're in. Um, and then also showing the relationship between that vertical, that void that becomes that public space that pulls you into the forum, um, as well as this more private part of the, the scheme, which is the school, um, as well as the residential. Um, this is just the auditorium space and then the pool we're cutting through. And then just a zoomed in version of that same drawing. And you start to see the Bodhi tree and the stupa as these cultural icons um, in the cityscape. And there's also like cuts through at strategic moments. So like you can see the pool, you'll be able to swim in it and feel the rain falling on you. Yes. Do you, um, this, sorry, do you, can I just ask, do you really think it's a good idea uh, to uproot a tree and to uproot a stupa? To lift things off the ground? I think I believe it more for the stupa. The tree is maybe a little bit harder um, to fully, I guess, realistically see. I mean, yeah. you, you could certainly uproot a tree and put it in a big planter, you know, and, and it'll grow. You can do that technically. The question is, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that to the stupa? And why do you place the stupa on that level? Yeah, I think yeah. we really um, were considering like flooding as a major issue in this area. And so I guess on a on a deeper level, we do see this forum in some ways being flooded and um, slightly being destroyed. Um, but that this stupa, this Bodhi tree, this school is kind of um, this future gathering place that isn't touched by these waters. Should we go to those drawings? You know, and yes, we, have, we can come back to these. Yes, so this just shows it at rest and then but like at the typical flood level now, so this happens periodically every you know, every month soon, you get about a meter of water in the space. And so the forum itself is lifted to, you know, provide separation from that. But then we also were considering, okay, what happens in 20, you know, 2100, 2150 when sea levels have risen over half a meter in Colombo. And so what would a, the worst case scenario look there? And so I think we've been considering this floating area almost as a refuge. And the idea is that maybe, you know, maybe the stupa, it's, it's represented iconographically because we feel that it's brought in from one, a stupa that is, we have a particular one that we had chosen, but it could be a different one from a, a temple that is essentially being subsumed by rising sea levels. And the same with the tree, right? So you would take, you would take something that would otherwise be destroyed and put it here, um, but it could also be planted. So I think there's a degree of ambiguity in those symbols, which is why we chose to represent them that way. I'm super intrigued by this project because it, it's got this kind of weird cabinet of curiosity, world's fair kind of quality to it. It's almost like an exhibition uh, a, a kind of a wild proposal in some way. And if I accept that as a premise, you know, and say that these dislocation of these iconic objects, right, and buildings are, are there to provoke, you know, uh, a, maybe a different level of appreciation or understanding of the you know, the danger that these things are in, I'm okay with that then, but then I want to push it harder. Um, the, the, the rock, I call it the Stella, uh, seems to be like irritatingly <laughs> in the place where one want to circulate. And I understand that you want to force people to walk around it. But when you build such a massive volume of a space and then you fill it with this massive object, you kind of kill the space. I would have proposed to put the rock somewhere between the inside and the outside of the building where the stair comes up to the platform 
where you actually maybe allow this piece to kind of erode part of the facade or, you know, occupy the stairs in a way when there's even nobody around there and maybe mark the, the, the level of water change when the flood comes up. It, it just feels like you're asking too much of this uh, first centralized space to house these, uh, you know, the pool, the tennis, uh, badminton court uh, and spaces of gathering. Because even in your section, you can see that you've reduced the kind of civic scale space into a very sort of domestic scale circulation path, which, you know, I guess it could be provocative, but it's also could be, you know, irritating and doesn't really give room for the, the significance of this piece to find a forum, you know, um, and just a massive amount of people that be coming in and out of the forum and gathering to watch the badminton or the pool, you know, looking down at it, which is a very kind of uh, provocative spectator angle. Uh, there, there's all these different moments that are great that you. I think you're loading it too much. Um, I would actually loosen it up more. I'm not a big fan of steel in this climate. Um, yeah, I wish there was another way to do this base frame because uh, you'd be constantly painting the steel structure like constantly, because the rust is a big issue, yeah. And we, we, we learned that too late. Like we, we, we like by the time, by the time someone reminded me, I grew up in Houston, I should have known better, right? You don't know, like everything rusts, right? <laughs> yeah, so the time someone that kind of noted that too, is this, this group is already so deeply invested in the space frame that it's just, it's just the George Washington Bridge thing. You know, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like the, the students at the Piravena paint it continuously. The rock thing is actually really interesting. I, I just, just wanted to note about it that, that in Sri Lankan spatial typology, a uh, uh, civic space is actually given order by the disruption of a rock. So oh. there'll, there'll be a system of circulation and then there'll be a major rock which disrupts that matrix. Uh, it oh. Almost always, it's actually one of the most interesting things about it. They could disrupt it more or it could disrupt it more lucidly. Like so you, you have a grid and then a rock arrives and all of a sudden the grid has to adjust for the rock. Right, so it, 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 it doesn't yeah. have that sense of, of I, I tend to agree with the other reading, it doesn't have that kind of lucid sense of, of disruption. Right. Yeah, we I, do have, oh, uh, sorry. Well, I'm just thinking then that the destruction of the grid to, to kind of deal with the rock, I think that, that, uh, that quality is missing from the, from the design right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a very intriguing thing to say your four things and the, and the ground plan is already making a space in between. And then you mark the space with this rock, right? Which denies the making of that space and you displace the space to its periphery. So making you kind of always dealing with the rock. I mean, that, that whole sequence of, of relationship is really interesting, but it cannot be just a, a sort of a rock dropped in and then the grid doesn't find a way to deal with it. So that's my only concern about that. We did have a couple of images, if we could just show you to finish um, the presentation really quickly, mm -hmm. just so you can get a better feel um, for the inside. But this is a view from the pool um, with a couple of elements of mm -hmm. kind of what it would feel like. Um, and then we have one looking down into it into the space. And yeah, I feel like the mm -hmm. rock could definitely use some work with the grid. And, and this rock is a real rock? It is a real rock it's in our rock. minds. And you know how much it weighs? No, but a lot. I guess it weighs around 80,000. Tons. <laughs> huge, yes. I was just wondering, uh, I think this, this project, I mean, has many interesting and refined elements um, to be absolutely sure. Do you know um, Hannes Meyers and Hans Witwas Peters School in Basel project? No. From the regular commercial airport to the city. I once took a family day trip to Mexico because my parents wanted lobster. 
Somebody needs to turn their somebody's, mic. Yeah, somebody's listening to <laughs> television or something. Um, but no, I don't think we know the. Pro we don't know that project. Let me uh, look it up for you. What was the name of it? Is a school? Yeah, it's uh, the Peter Schule. Um, I'm afraid. Wait a minute. While you're looking it up, let's let's keep going. Just time wise, yeah. it's yeah. about time. Uh, I've, I've got time is just like a killer. Uh, well, I'm just thinking that you know sometimes you, you you win a competition by something that is like so provocative you cannot. You know, you just get overwhelmed by the idea, and there's a potential for this one to do that. Can you see this image? Yeah. Yes. So there's a generic series of classrooms with a uh, um, cantilevering uh, deck that is used for uh, for breakout space. But the point is. Uh, what, do you, what is your primary interest? Uh, is your primary interest this kind of amalgamation of uh, uh, spoils of climate change with uh, uh, a school um, and, and then becomes this, uh, this infrastructure that holds up these emblems uh, or can it do without these emblems? I mean, are these emblems important contributors to the project? I think initially they they weren't. I think initially we really, we had a deep desire to stake public space. And we kind of found a solution in the space frame in this like T form, this floating school above um, this public space. And as we explored this and the school of the Piravena, I, I think that these elements started to become inserted and um, I think are actually, I think in, in our minds, in our minds really important to the feeling of this being a public space. Like the, these elements aren't really, okay. even I though would, they're a part of this school, they're I think Sri Lankan would, in some way. I would recommend that you talk to some Sri Lankans about the dislocation of a stupa onto this platform, because I think it may touch some religious feelings you know, just saying. Yeah. Uh, and similarly, you could ask uh, them about the dislocation of a tree. Uh, the the rock is basically on the ground, so, and it's sort of pretty water resistant. So um, I, I think that's less of an issue. But uh, the other two elements, I think, are questionable uh, from from my perspective. I'm not a Sri Lankan. I can't say I've never been to, to Sri Lanka. But it just seems that it's being treated like, a, yeah, a spoil of the climate change uh, issue. So actually, I mean, I think what 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 you're hearing, group, and I think this is a really important point. So just to go back one step, so kind of originally, civic spaces in Sri Lanka were piravanas, right? So so the civic space of a town was the re this religious forum, and mm -hmm. and there's an idea here about kind of a secular forum and then a quasi-religious one floating above it and a relationship between the two kind of displaced historically and even post-historically, which I think that the group has kind of just, they've neither made clear in, in terms of their discussion and uh, presentation, but also it's, it's where the kind of dilemma lies in, in all this. I mean, Wilfred, it's literally meant to be a religious school floating over the, mm -hmm. the thing that the religious school had evolved into over time, the, the civic forum. In Sri Lanka, so it, it, there's a there's a kind of strange component there, which is which which uh, I, I don't disagree. Fine, but, fine. I mean, if it's a religious school, that's okay. But I mean, why the stupa not at the highest level? You know, uh, it's a it's a sepulchral monument. Uh, typically, uh, these monuments are not to be overlooked. There happen to be taller buildings around uh, in the world nowadays, and in Colombo as well, and they overlook these things. But originally they were probably constructed a great effort uh, to dominate, to be looked at and to be looked up to, rather than to, to look, to be looked upon. I'm just saying, I'm just wondering whether 
people might feel, you know, uh, it, a little strange if, if Catholics would feel a little strange if the, the, the dome of St. Peter's were translocated onto a lower platform on, on some multi-story uh, uh, high rise. I think they would. Uh, I would like to make a comment on the on the way I was seeing the project before all these uh, all the comments uh, uh, arose. Uh, I saw it as a reinterpretation of this. Uh, 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 what was it? Sigiriya uh, uh, place. Uh, and uh, from that, uh, what I. Uh, 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 I guess the, the point of doing that is to uh, 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 reenact something that is uh, of local nature. Uh, now, the elements that are on top, uh, I think uh, the, the, they may be questionable, probably not the tree too much, uh, but, uh, but the stupa, yeah, it's a, it's a yeah, probably it's a piece that is a world heritage, and I don't think that you would get a permit from, you know, Doko to to uh, let it uh, let that happen. I think I think it's more. Um, I think uh, it should be more of a, a, an exercise to reinterpret uh, uh, features that you see in in the place, but not necessarily being so literal. I think with the with the rock, it's probably a bit a, about the same. Um, if, if I'm not mistaken, I I even see that the rock is uh, put to hold the uh, the uh, the uh, this uh, la upper layer. Uh, it, it's uh, it's very weight, right? Yes. I I, I think uh, I would liberate it if uh, if I bring it. I I wouldn't uh, make it uh, you know part of the construction. I think it's. Uh, Going against its own nature, um, and um, I, I wanted to uh, rescue the the. Uh, I think Andy talked about the uh, the fact that when you go to a religious play, uh, place in Sri Lanka, you always go through an arch, and I saw the arch. I I, I saw the arch as the uh, sort of like the threshold between the what is the city and the, and the project. I like the way the, uh, the, uh, that uh, roof that uh, reminds to Jonah Friedman uh, captures the, the, uh, the place uh, underneath. I, I think that there's actually a, a neat place of, uh, uh, for, for, you know, urban purposes uh, below the, yeah, what's, what was the name uh, that you were using a forum, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I think you are capturing a neat space there, but probably it's a uh, it's a bit too busy, uh, too busy on, at the at the uh, at the forum, and also too busy on what's going on uh, at the at the uh, you know where where the stupa is. But also, you were talking on on your discourse. You were talking about the the private, what is private, and what is and what is uh, public. I I. I if if that's a religious space, the uh, is uh, the, the temple that you are pu uh, putting up there. Do you need to be a monk to to go there, or or is it a public place where anyone can go? It's a so public it, it, component. You, yeah, Mar you don't Mar enter a stupa, right? You don't enter a stupa, do you? You just walk around it, right? Yeah, it's like re relics, like bones of somebody in there. That's correct, yeah. yeah. I mean, would you consider, you know, and, and the pairing of the Bodhi tree and the stupa is like this kind of, yeah, like you say, you find one, you find the other type of thing, right? Yeah, I mean, at least you, for the Paravena. Paravena. Would it, would you consider having the Bodhi tree and not having the stupa, but having a trace of the stupa you know, so that the loss is even more registered and not just try to save it on the platform. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about, you know, everything that Wilfred has said and, and, and I'm worried about the, you know, like even the representation of stupas as like in Buddhist 
literature, there's like six different kinds of stupas or something. And I don't even know if this is the right Sri Lankan stupa. <laughs> you know, like we could be offending someone where you put the wrong stupa, you know, figure into, into the competition. And, um, Actually, separately, there's a really beautiful uh, history of, of, of Sri Lankan stupas, any that you'd really appreciate because the forms, they're, 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 there's three primary types and they're given their name by these shapes. And one is what, pile of sugar? Oh. There's three shapes. One is called the pile of sugar. Okay, so that's one, well researched here. Yeah. What were the other two? It's like pile of rice or something. Pile of rice. Pile of rice. And then there was another one, teardrop? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there was, a, they, they, there's three primary types. There are, they did some of that research and it's really just separately, whether it's right or wrong, it's actually quite interesting typologically. Because right, right, right. It, right. No, I, I am worried about what Grof has said is like, can you really move these things? Because there's, you know, I, I know that in Asian cultures, once you put like a certain bone in place, you don't disturb it. Um, you know, and this is like pretty collarbone of some special person, you know, that you can't move it. Um, I mean, to move it means you reconstruct this. So I'm, I'm just like more of the kind of dilemma of, of how, to, how to actually maintain this kind of provocation and maybe loosen up and not be so literal about it. I think it's, I think that's fair. I, I, I do want to note that body trees are actually moved regularly in the kind of- Yeah, yeah. the trees I think should be- Stupid is the issue. And I appreciate the fact that you guys are getting hung up on it. And, 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 and therefore it's gonna be a thing that's gonna, that's gonna hang up a jury. And as a consequence, it's worth just kind of like taping over in favor of other sets of discussions that, that might take place mm -hmm. with regard to the urban presence of this building, with regard to the, the I, I think what's getting lost to a certain degree in, in the project is the, is the question of the forum, but there, there are other things that, are, that, are, that, are, that I think are, are, are being, uh, uh, toned down as a question as a, as a consequence of that problem which i think mm. is a really good it's a really good point mm. i mean it's just uh, as a very provocative set of images that you guys put together for the representation and certainly you know you go through these projects and then this one would be memorable you know and that's one of the aspects sometimes as you go into competitions with the you know the the most provocative thing you can think of, just to get in the second round and then work on it kind of thing. Just um, thumb in eye kind of thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we we need to kind of slowly wrap up. Uh, can we can maybe go back to the like one of the first images of the of the building in the city and, and uh, or if there are other images you guys wanna talk about? Uh, yeah, I just had a, a quick question though. Um, I'm intrigued about the, um, cells uh, for the monks and their living quarters. Uh, you provided very, very little information about how one might live there. Um, so I, I was just curious, or maybe, you know, thinking about your second stage or phase, uh, in what ways that could be more uh, clarified as well. Right? Um, I think like the only snippet, we see it in this section, but it's, it's not enough. Um, so I'm curious to understand again, like going back to my previous question regarding rituals and how those rituals are able to organize those spaces and in what ways they're emblematic um, uh, of the people that would end up living there. And then the second question uh, though, is just, uh, I'm curious as, as well, like to understand in what ways uh, you think you have uh, modified or um, updated um, the, the typologies that you have used, right? Like there is a lot of, uh, as Annie mentioned, you know, like a, a repository of different types existing within, you know, your building. So I'm just curious to know, like, if there could be a, a sort of, also in your second phase, um, a series of diagrams that uh, help us understand uh, the typological tra transformations uh, uh, within your own type. And then also like the observation of how civic then that grand staircase becomes, right? Like it, it takes a lot of space, a lot of real estate within the, your own project, right? So to understand how a staircase in, of that magnitude can not only serve as a space of um, 
spectatorship, but also for civic encounter uh, might be also an interesting, uh, you know, ex exploration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the Sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to actually, um, for the dorms, yeah, we we definitely need to develop them a lot more. We did, um, I feel like Andy um, specifically paid close attention to this idea of um, really navigating through. Um, and so in order for someone to actually get up to those classrooms or to those dorms, you actually have to slowly kind of navigate all the way up. So it's not a quick transition, it's a slower, like movement through almost every single platform, um, which was kind of trying to touch on that earlier precedent that we had of um, the rock temple. Yeah, we're really take. Sorry, go ahead. I was also suggest that you know if you're gonna keep the stupa or something, really study the base of the stupa, how the stupa stupa actually mediates the ground plane, because there's a there's a, a, you know, that kind of thing. I think you guys probably read it. Uh, the base of the stupa is about the kind of cross leg, right? And then you enter that through those stairs and then you spin around this little kind of gallery around the stupa with these short rail walls and stuff like that. It, it almost remind me that that kind of meditation ritual, I don't know how, how people actually use it, what that ritual is about the circulation around the stupa. It seems to have some significant meaning that we haven't really talked about. And I'm thinking about, of course, like, you know, this totally inappropriate reference about the, the, the places of the monk and the cloister, you know, and that kind of relationship, right? And it, it seems like if, however you're gonna deal with the stupa, the base of the stupa, is somehow integrated into that kind of walk level of that elevated floor in some way and has some relationship to the monk cells um, mm -hmm. that is not fully articulated right now. Yeah, I think it's a really crucial point. I mean, I, I think the least effect effective drawing is the very last one, which is the view within the Piraveno. There's that sense of this kind of continuous kinds of circular circulation that yeah. can make up this strange space in the sky I mean, it has a tremendous potential and it's not yet kind of articulated as opposed to this kind of strange matrix down below. You know, that, that, that disjunction or the difference between those two conditions, it's not quite as strong because now when you're describing it, that you, that you move continuously around the cell of monk's room, you move continuously around the stupa, you move continuously mm -hmm. around the body tree, yeah. you continue so each of, it's a, each of those is a form of meditation. Yeah. And all of that is lifted up above this kind of world below where you're, where you're moving in a fundamentally different way, this disrupted way. I think yeah. already is a kind much of really more convincing yeah. diagram, much more, yeah, yeah, it's really, really useful the observation yeah. to, to pursue further. Yeah, I think going back to Pierre Gianna's point, we, we definitely need some diagrams to show that. Because I mean, even in like the library, it's this double chord thing where like the people are ascending, rapid. basically all the circulation is you're always circling something and that comes from that rich circulation. Yeah. Yeah, it's not coming across, you know, like we've got knit several drawings together to kind of begin to understand it, but the insistence of that kind of circular meditative walking movement uh, stacked on top of the plaza below, um, have, I think it's critical, yeah. Have you guys come across uh, Lisitsky's uh, skyscraper project, the Wolkenbügel, the so-called cloud hooks? Yeah. No. Uh, no, I'm not familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, show it to you. Mm -hmm. This is 1924. Mm -hmm. uh, Elisitsky, a uh, mm -hmm. project called Wolkenbügel, cloud hooks or hangers. Hangers, yeah. Hangers. Mm -hmm. So the point is. You know, I mean, there's, there's the history of architecture is full of different kinds of examples and uh, schools, there are plenty of different typologies of schools. Goes back to, in the West, goes back to religious uh, examples, courtyards with uh, chapels at the, at the end of the axis. And you then jump to the enlightenment with Jefferson's UVA, uh, University of Virginia. Do you know that project? Mm -hmm. where um, the library takes the place of the chapel, mm -hmm. 
library as a symbol of the enlightenment, the books, the reason, uh, you know, evidence-based uh, knowledge is uh, replacing religion. And so the question is, what is the next step? Um, the knowledge of architecture with, you know, the kind of modern architectural history of 1920, 1930, what is your contribution? How are you interpreting uh, a, a school, a religious school in the 21st century? Basic question. You know, I mean, you have the you have the uh, organizational compositional skills, but you also need to fundamentally dig uh, at what you're trying to do. And at the moment, uh, you know, there is a library which is supporting a platform uh, that is also being supported by the accommodation by the monks. What is the meaning of that? You know, knowledge is supporting the teaching facility and that is being supported by the monks. There's something programmatic and symbolic in that, that is in itself symbolic without ad adding all these emblems. Yeah, I think originally, I don't know that it still holds true now, but um, I think we had this view that the school was almost equal to this public forum. And so we were kind of putting them on the same kind of stratosphere of like, the space is for the public and the school is the, this future public space, this future um, amenity almost. Um, and so we, Originally, that's why that move happened. Um, how, but many, I'm not sure. how many public spaces at an upper level, or in this case, it's on level five or level six, do you know that work as public spaces where people freely mingle, where they go up casually and they come down again? How many public spaces do you know where that works? I think that was the original purpose of putting the temple up there because there's there are so, like a bunch of examples in Sri Lanka of this idea of gaining height as a religious experience and so the idea to put it up there was that we needed some we wanted some sort of program or some sort of thing up there that actually would draw people and so yeah we started from a place like yeah, people won't go up there unless there's something really singular okay so why don't you lift the uh, that upper level all the way to the top and put leave it as as the new altar space altar platform as it were as opposed to having it sort of two-thirds of the height uh, of the monk's slab and then create a you know create this kind of spreckelsen uh, paris uh, arc a 2.0. Uh, do you know the project I'm talking about? At the end La of, Défense? Yeah. La Défense. Yeah, La Défense. At the end of La Défense, there's this big cubic volume with, with a giant opening, and it's just a new form of an arc. But in your case, it would be uh, the place where the stupa is then rescued, and it would be the highest point. The stupa mm -hmm. would be on the highest point of the building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, they 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 played around with that and actually uh, left it behind. And I and there's many kind of instances. And there's different reasons why it might not be that. I mean, one of the strange reasons is that typologically, these religious spaces actually tend to form up right adjacent to even if they're on the top of rocks, they tend to form up in this condition, right, right there. Like not they don't mm -hmm. take the highest point. They take mm -hmm. point just below the highest point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's a natural setting. Uh, and the, the reason why that is done is in respect to nature, right? That is clear, but this is a, an artificial construct. Yeah, I think this goes back to, 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 to really to, to Pierre Jonas' point that the piece, that's, the, the piece that remains the giant mystery is the, the, the wall back behind there and precisely how it is uh, and how it, how it enacts its relationship. I, I think the, the, the bigger problem right now is- But if the, if the monks- if the monks are the servants to the monastery, mm. then I think that that is the right expression. Mm -hmm. 
Excellent. Anyway, I think it's worth thinking about. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of raising these issues because mm. you know, in, in the, the history of architecture, both the Western and the kind of uh, non-Western, there are certain similarities. And uh, the, the funeral monument is throughout civilization, human civilization, a constant theme, right? You find that every, on every single continent, the, the step pyramid or the, the dome, whatever, it's the same thing. And it has a fundamental relationship with ground and it's a, uh, it's a holy item. So yeah, I, I think I, I don't disagree. I, 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 I have no problem with the students rupturing that. They've made the argument that the ground plane, most of these groups have made the argument that the ground plane is increasingly no longer the frame of civic right. space. I think they have to make the argument. I think the, the larger problem is just maybe is just setting this thing on that as opposed to, and we don't see the drawing really of, 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 of what the nature of that 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 landing is like if you say I'm abandoning this plane mm -hmm. and I and I'm, I'm reestablishing the civic plane. This has got to go. This has got to go somehow. You got to access this. Right. You know, the, 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 you know. Then and then you then 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 everything. Then then the whole idea of, of I guess it's interesting, Wilfred, because what they're arguing for is is abandoning the ground. And and, and I'm totally 100% convinced that that is a viable argument that that can be made. The, the, the question is just what are the consequences of that abandonment, you know? And 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 and, and, and is it is it just the is it just the lifting and replacing? And and I'm I'm with you guys if if, if it's like well that's in and of itself not satisfying. Yeah, I'm I'm 100 down with that idea that it's not satisfying. It's just the placing up there. But I really love the idea of 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 of, of, of fundamentally abandoning the ground plane. And and, and 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 giving it over and, and saying that it, it's no longer either the habitable realm nor the civic realm nor the nor the that that has to be re that has to be remade or reenacted in 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 a in a different dimension. I mean, uh, so I, I'm with you. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to negotiate between what, what, what you're arguing for and what you and Annie have both kind of suggested, and and where the students are coming from, which I which I think has its own has its own viability. You know, yeah. uh, you know, like. To hell with the ground plane. It's it's uninhabitable. It's polluted. It floods. It, no, it. I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing for sticking everything back on the ground plane that's being flooded. I'm not arguing for that. I'm just saying, what is a modern interpretation of the ground plane? And yeah, yeah maybe to cut that. Anyway, but the to to elevate everything to the maximum height uh, that you're trying to rescue. Yeah, guys, we, we we have to we actually have to stop Zoom time. It just drives me crazy. We've 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 killed off two hours. You know, it, it, how we've done that blows my mind because it, it just it it really is. Uh, but I want to first of all thank you, uh, 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 jury members, uh, for, uh, uh, Annie. It's so lovely to see you and, and Pierre Jenna. I can't mm -hmm. believe you're off. You're around for a little longer. We have to have you, Maurizio. So lovely to see you, Wilfred. It's always lovely yeah. to have you as well. I mean, I can't believe we're we're on all these different parts. Any last quick comments? I mean, we just have a, a minute or two uh, relative to uh, what you've seen or what, what you uh, would like to see more of or or what you would recommend from students. Um, I, I just want to encourage that this is what you do while you're in school. You know, um, it, it's to kind of try to push <laughs> beyond what is that comfort level of uh, older people like us um, who, who looks at tradition and history in a different way. Um, I do think that we are studying relationships. And so a lot of the questions and that we talked about today was all about, you know, have you constructed or have you fully understood the relationship between things, right? So I would just keep that in mind as you go forward and finish up your presentation for the, I imagine you're submitting it, right? They're required to do a great. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, diagrams. Yeah, some diagrams. Well, I wish you good luck, everyone. Um, yeah. and in fact, take all the things that uh, I've said with a huge dose of salt because I've entered so many competitions and, you know, second round was, the, was kind of the best uh, that we did recently. Just ignore what I said. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I just want to add something. Uh, I mean, you guys were tasked with the hardest tasks of all, which is how do you represent others? Well, you have to also recognize that you deny those others the right to represent themselves. Mm -hmm. So always take that uh, with great responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think like as you move forward and also as you're preparing for the final submission to keep that in mind, uh, it's always uh, a useful reminder, <laughs> I guess. But thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Maurizio. Uh, we didn't really talk too much about the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the way the, the building works, the compound works as a, as a generator of uh, its own uh, little ecosystem. And uh, probably uh, when you do your submission, you have to make a little more emphasis on that. Uh, 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 more emphasis, emphasize, uh, emphasizing that uh, more than the uh, how uh, how you are applying your contextualism, uh, because it can become so literal that it, it may be rejected, you know, at, at, at first sight. Great place to end. Rejection at first sight. Rejection at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> Not nice love at first sight. I, I like love at first sight better. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, love Thank to you. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Bye bye. Great break. Bye. Uh, guys, uh, I saw Michael just uh, popped in. We're going to uh, pick up again at in a half an hour. Uh, so, hey, Maurizio, let's, you and me, let's catch up sometime in, in the next. Yeah, morning. yeah, for sure. All right, sweet. That's Look it. forward to seeing you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. So uh, we have a break until three. Uh, uh, I need to get some stuff organized uh, and uh, uh, we'll pick up at three. Uh, I'll see you in a little bit.
Andy, how are you? Gabrielle? You say something, David. I was I my volume off. Sorry. <laughs> No, no worries. I was just wondering. The, the, so far, the, the reviews have been the weirdest reviews I've ever been on. I mean, quite literally, the weirdest review I've ever been on. We'll have to see how uh, how Michael Benedict and and how Heather, how our, our last little group here holds up. We can't hear you. Should be able to hear me. Yes, can you hear me now? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's Martin. Hey, Martin. Hey, hey, how are you? <laughs> Good, good, good. Yeah, sorry, I hope I'm not late. I'm, I'm sort of just on time, I think. No, not only are you, are you not late, we, we don't have a super rush. We've got one project to do, and then I'd like to show you guys the other four. And oh, wow. Your comments. So it's nice. It's a, a nice afternoon. We were Great, just talking about nice, it. yeah. It's been a weird day so far. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. It's, 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 uh, it's been, been kind of a... It's, and, and part of it is Zoom time, although I've gotten used to doing Zoom reviews, but, but I mean... It is amazing how Zoom time just gets eaten alive. You know, just it, like, it, it's just, yeah, it's it feels like 40 minutes of Zoom time feel like 20 minutes of studio time, roughly. Yeah, yeah, it's really true. Hey, Michael, how are you? Hey, good to see you. Good, good, good. You know, we're waiting for Alice Kim, but Alice may be uh, a few minutes late. Let's give her, oh, it's only three o'clock right now. It's a, 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 a couple of minutes in. How have you guys been doing? Third review today, no, the second review today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this I is the second one. I dropped in this morning on you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I had to say this obviously be my 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 first day of reviews. I was just saying. I mean, it's been a weird day of reviews. I mean, for various reasons. I mean, it may just be the chemistry of the reviewers, or the nature of the project, or something, mm -hmm. or or Zoom time, or the. But I, I don't know. The reviews you were on earlier today were they how were how how did they how did they run? Uh, I, I thought the uh, uh, James and John's project was very interesting. I oh, sweet! James and John are here. here. Like, that's so nice. Yeah. They're 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 out there. Yeah. 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 And they're smiling right now. Right? They're, they're, and I like I like the bamboo gothic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bamboo gothic indeed. Was, uh, I think it was very kind of you to sit in this morning. I've been. Uh, no, it's fun. It's a great project, and it's you know. It's actually quite similar to mine, uh, uh, David. You'll see tomorrow. We uh, uh, non non air conditioned school. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. much smaller. Small. Much smaller. Yeah, that small thing has some advantages. I'm, I'm realizing this kind of idea of a big building. It's just it just remains hugely problematic. In I try to scale it down every every semester, and this semester was like, oh right, we have a program. We actually have a title of a project. How <laughs> right. we, we, we will end up with buildings? <laughs> Well, how it's can we not end up with, right? Yeah, right? How can we not end up, with, end up with buildings that are buildable? Yeah, yeah. And yet, and yet here we sit. <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes it's you? nice <laughs> to have a little bit of mass. Like when you're when you're in some sort of urban environment, it's it's good sometimes to just have a little bit of mass to throw around too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I hear you. Yeah, man, Michael, that was so weird because while you were uh, drinking that coffee, the shadow vanished and it actually projected the background into your face which was really oh. <laughs> wow. like that melting nazi, <laughs> melting nazi scene in the in the oh, of the well, you want to see yeah. where i really am <laughs> what's yeah what's what's actually inside so yeah i'll give it two more minutes and uh Pretty you thrilling, could, you could, huh? michael you could also do this the other way around you could have some some like average like background and then in reality you just sit in an amazing I don't know, Louis Kahn <laughs> building or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, I've, I've nice. got one of those. Here we go. Hang on. <clears throat> Where did it go? I had a truly annoying experience. Oh, nice. 
I had a truly annoying experience this year, which is that Andy, uh, uh, while I stepped away from my screen, he screenshot the, where I'm coming from. And then all the students in the studio used that as their backdrop, which was really creepy. It was really, it was like they had invaded my space. It was really, it was really actually quite unpleasant, uh, which, which means I like to use this one. Wait, Michael, your background keeps changing. It keeps scrolling from one thing to another. How did you, oh yeah, that's, it just keeps, Evolving. Oh, I like that one. Elephants. Pretty good. Right, so, okay, I'll keep this one. Then. I'll keep this one going. So Alice, Alice may be coming in a little bit late. I mean, she knows the project. I mean, the main thing is Alice is. Uh, she has a. She was doing a whole forum this morning at, at the GSD that she and John Friedman organized and. Uh, she'll drop in soon enough. Uh, but but I'll, let's go ahead and start, and let me uh, let me fill you guys in about the, the project. So, uh, just I sent you guys a, a bit of a brief, but I'll, I'll just go over it again. So the um, let me go back to the. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let me hold on. Let me just escape. So the uh, studio is the title of studio, Hot Human Absolute. I mean, the, 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 the really straightforward, these are like this set of things I'm super interested in. I mean, really interested in hot and humid, uh, generally speaking, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. And, and, and then I'm particularly interested in absolute architectures and absolute forms uh, and, and the, the, the uh, this uh, competition, uh, which is a student competition, uh, just struck me as a kind of a useful vehicle uh, to pursue that both because we're an online studio, we can't visit a site. So then where the site is, the, the far, the, the more other it is, the better. And then also just because uh, I like the idea of a competition as a kind of vehicle to kind of move uh, work along uh, the semester. So the competition itself, you'll see it, it, it's reasonably, it's, it, it's for a school. It doesn't say what the school is, an educational facility in the town of Colombo uh, on, in Sri Lanka. Uh, you'll see that the, the, the school uh, in the projects, eh, it's sort of, it's there and not there. It, it, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, some of the students had really clear ideas about what the school was, others less so. The project really became, uh, for various reasons. I mean, one of which is, uh, one of the reasons I'm interested in absolute architectures is because of their, their potential with regard to sustainability of having very, very loose fits to program and as a consequence for the possibility of, uh, 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 of them being essentially unrecognizable at school buildings like Goldsmith Hall. Goldsmith Hall could be many, many things, uh, including a very good school building, but it could be many other things also uh, quite as easy. Yeah, it could be, you know, you, you, yeah, actually it would be a, a great field hospital, right? I mean, it would be a, yeah, like, a COVID wards, you know, it, it would be a great, yeah. I mean, you know, you, yeah. So the, the, uh, the only kind of point I'll make about this uh, 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 image is the site, which is this kind of large square area here, is adjacent to a canal on the east side. That canal is part of a larger system of canals that the Dutch use to move through a series of wetlands uh, behind the kind of coastal ridge. I'll talk about it in a moment. And it's now essentially blocked up and, and the source of, uh, of uh, uh, dengue fever bearing mosquitoes so it's not as pretty as it seems and then behind the site there's a, a, a golf course so the site's open from the south southwest and it's open on the east side and it sits itself in an area of Colombo like here this uh, kind of adjacent map in the middle right like the, the coastal line of Colombo is a kind of higher ridge of ground and this whole area behind it is wetlands that were have gradually been turned into agricultural land and, and now are part of this kind of you know, incipient urbanization that's just happening all over the world, and especially in hot and humid areas, it's kind of hot and humid tropical band around the middle of the world where so much construction is going on, which it really uh, interests me a lot. So again, there's a bit of a program. So the thing about hot humid, I mean, I'm really interested in it for a lot of reasons. I mean, uh, the, 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 the main reason I mentioned this at the presentation, I'll just re-mention it again, is it just seems like everything is becoming hot and humid, you know. Like I mean, Michael, for quite a while, when you when you first came to, to Austin, it was Mediterranean, and I got here with Mediterranean plus occasionally a Gulf, and now it's essentially hot and humid, right? It's essentially it's transformed, right? And all these, I mean, the, the line of what's hot and humid is just it's just taking everything over. That's the kind of first uh, 
the first reason I like it. And the second reason that I mentioned is there's so much construction going on in it. Uh, and then the third reason, and this is the reason I like it most, is only cold weather, super cold weather architecture is the same in terms of like getting, being the primary driver. Like, like hot and humid architecture is just, hot and humid drives people so crazy that their architecture goes crazy as a consequence, right? So, I mean, the, the Hirkatsura Villa is all hot, humid architecture, right? I, I, I love this. It's really my favorite example, you know, like this, this paper thin architecture, lift it up, you know, open it operable, completely operable, even so you step up so people passing by increases wind speed, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, also that even in the cold winter, you have to huddle under a, under multiple layers of blankets around a, a coal fired thing and your house is going to burn down. But to hell with that, because if we have to go through another hot human summer again, you know, like the idea of that the, the architecture is totally targeted at this one crazy problem because it's so terrible. Hot humid is terrible, you know, and, and it generates this really heavy energy. rain. Heavy rain. Yeah, but but it's really humidity and heat in in, in in Kyoto and Tokyo in the summer is just miserable. In fact, it's like it comes in a wave, and, and you have to get there before that wave because after that, it's just forget it. It's, it's, and there's great Japanese literature, there's great Japanese movies about how life becomes essentially amoral and crime goes up and suicide goes up and hot humid and it just drives people like a streetcar named Desire. <laughs> kind yeah, of it, thing it, that, precisely right that, that kind of like yeah i mean i love that that that, that fact of it but as a as an environmental uh, driver it, it's it's really mm -hmm. profoundly strong and then uh i mean there there's some there's some kind of disagreements about whether or not uh uh, uh hold on i need to double check one thing Wh whether or not the kind of correct strategy for dealing with it is light construction or heavy construction. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, you know, the 20th century most of, most, mostly argued that passive response to heat and humidity was light construction, light frame, lifted, moving air. But in actual fact, uh, Khan at Dakar and many architects we talked to uh, talked about using kind of thermal cool and, and going ahead and living with condensation and just getting air moving across these cool services as a kind of, as a great strategy to kind of deal with this stuff. So the, the um, hold on one second. Where are we? I know I'm screen sharing. Can you see my share? Yeah. Why yeah. is it? Okay, so for some reason, and now you're seeing sl uh, slides of the site? Yep, yes. 81, yeah, right. 2008. Yeah, so so the, the weird thing uh, is that the other thing then that I'm particularly interested in is this kind of condition of, you know, uh, just continuing uh, uh, the urbanization around the world that, that, that that's been fueled by on the one hand the sudden available uh, availability of low interest rates and cash and it just international construction that's really not controlled by any kind of oversight so much as it is by controlled by private desire and the kind of larger argument that 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 particular way of making the world doesn't generate particularly interesting civic space and the intersection of that comes then in, in something like O'Reilly's argument that that we we might be looking at absolute architectures for those kinds of conditions, uh, precisely because they have on the one hand a, he well he makes the argument that they have a kind of very powerful relationship with with the notion of civicness and I'm interested in them because they have at the same time a particularly powerful relationship with the notion of a loose programmatic fit and sustainability, which is it's a really kind of interesting kind of cross section. So the the uh, the program itself, and you guys may remember this from the the uh, we the presentations. I mean, it was supposed to the students were supposed to carry on the forward the legacy of, of Jeffrey Bawa, the great tropical modernist working in Sri Lanka. That actually got abandoned fairly early on, in some large measure because uh, in, in discussions we came to the kind of point that uh, that that tropical modernism is itself a really powerful agent of of colonialism, you know, mm -hmm. not necessarily not necessarily the thing you want to continue, and also Bawa himself was a, was a kind of was 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 on, on the one hand a kind of member of a, of a certain a very peculiar class within Sri Lanka, but at the same time we felt that as outsiders, it was quite difficult for us to make any kinds of claims with regard to what was or was not Sri Lankan in Bawa's work, and and it became difficult to actually carry that that forward. Uh, 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 a, a, quick, a couple of other things I want to mention just quickly about, uh, nonetheless, the students struggle with that issue and I'll show you some, not the project you're going to see, but uh, some of the other uh, projects. There's a couple of quick things, you know, uh, I mean, here's Texas, uh, you know, compared to Sri Lanka, it, it's wetter there in Colombo than anywhere in Texas, you know, three meters of water a year. Uh, uh, 
it is the site itself sits in this kind of area, as I mentioned before, uh, a, a series of wetlands that the Dutch attempted to drain to the coast uh, and make arable land out of uh, that is, uh, I mean, one of the kind of real charms about this project was that because we couldn't visit the site, the best we could do was think about it in this kind of strap terms. But the one thing that we do know about the site is that it floods uh, annually uh, up to about a meter uh, deep across the site. And, uh, uh, and that's only going to get worse. So that, that, that's a kind of truism of the project. It's tropical. Uh, so the sun diagram is really remarkable. It's straight overhead most of the day. You know, it, it, it's very quick to the sky, very quick down. The, it, the bulk of it is overhead, uh, directly overhead, more or less directly overhead over the course of the day, which is true of the tropics always. There's uh, generally a wind all year long. In the winter months, uh, December, January, February, it's a colder monsoon coming off the Himalayas, the, but the bulk of it is a kind of warmer south, uh, southwesterly uh, 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 spring, summer, fall monsoon that's coming across the Indian Ocean, uh, uh, bearing uh, relatively moist, uh, warm winds. Uh, I mentioned in the kind of email you, I sent you guys that I asked, we spent a lot of time uh, with the students trying to narrow down kind of first principles that they believe in in their own work and trying to just you know use those as kind of starting points to make the architecture so that the students should theoretically be able to tell you why the buildings they're doing are good uh, this is just one of them uh, i'll show you quickly the five projects and then we'll, we'll talk about one and then hopefully we'll have enough time to maybe talk again about the other ones this is the first one it's kind of an interesting project with a where, where the, the students proposed a kind of large radiator so this is a, a Michael, you saw this this morning, John and James, with a, a series of cooling fins that go down and kick geothermal water up, air moves across that to a series of habitable spaces on the backside. The second was, as you said, the bam, bamboo Gothic. It's kind of a, it was actually a really interesting argument on the student's part to make a, using only available materials. I mean, the, 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 the relatively available materials in Sri Lanka are, uh, that, that generated, uh, the contextual pre-modern language, uh, which is uh, hardwoods, uh, uh, clay tile, and uh, uh, cut rock, none of those are available anymore. The, the, most of the clay tile pits have been dug out. Uh, uh, most of the hardwood forests have been cut down. Most of the rock quarries have been now preserved and then closed down. I mean, the available materials are bamboo and plastic trash. And this was a project which was really about, okay, if, if you accept that you have bamboo and you have plastic trash, you know, about how far can you go in towards generating a new <laughs> vernacular, which is a really interesting, a very interesting kind of an argument to, for the students to make. Uh, uh, this is a third project was about, uh, it's kind of absolute kind of the presence of this kind of uh, quite memorable poetic form that sits over a kind of water infrastructure down below, a kind of a thing that's used to clean uh, both flood water and, and uh, rainwater to generate drinking water. Almost, as you can see, almost all these projects set a kind of level that's higher above ground and almost all of them act as a kind of civic place where in a in a in a flood people can come why are there why are there profiles of heads in the water uh th that you'd have to ask the group but that's those are the those are the cisterns i think they're spectacular it, the, 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 yeah. the question the group should actually ask is why are there why why shouldn't there be but uh, fair enough it's, it's, the first... it's a gallery of famous modern architects like you see me like the slightly bigger one it stumped the first group as well. First group of critics. Don't worry. Don't feel bad if you're stumped. It stumped them as well. Uh, and then. Well, the, I think the, it's because it was a cistern spelled S I S T E R N. <laughs> and then a project we just saw, uh, which it was a, a, an argument for a, a new religious school, Piravena, lifted up above a public forum. Piravena having been the kind of typological form throughout history that had been the initial public space in, uh, in Sri Lankan history. Uh, and then that be, super, being superseding this or being floating above this kind of new modern forum connected by the housing for this religious uh, school. And then oh the god. last part of the, I'm sorry? I said, oh my god. OMG. Yeah, the, the reviewers, especially Wilfred, got really hung up on this preserved stupa that had been lifted off the ground. He said, you can't do he, can, he, goes, he goes, he said, you can't do that. I'm going, yeah, you can. You can't do like, yeah, you, you like, 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 what, what, what? What? If Rem Kulhas can do it, you can do it. Yeah, so I'm just saying, it was that kind of review. That's why, we, that's why when you entered here, we were all going, man, that was a weird review. Anyway, uh, the, then this last project, which uh, you're going to see, uh, uh, Youssef and uh, uh, Brandon. I'm not going to introduce it for them, but before we uh, jump in, any questions? 
Wait, are we going to see one project for two? Yeah, you're going to see only one hours? project, and then nice. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not going to take that. You're not going to see it for two hours. Uh, you're going to see it for as long as it takes to review. And then what I'd like to do is ask you guys to look at the other four projects because it's a competition, and just kind of react and go, "Man, don't put that drawing in there," or "I would do this," or <laughs> you know, does that make sense? Just yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sweet. Well, right, no, so, I've had the advantage of of seeing a couple of them earlier, but. I think right. Martin's going to be hard pressed. Anyway, no, I mean, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm curious. You know, I'm, I'm, I think the, this, the idea of sort of like tying kind of the absolute architecture idea to sustainability, and in, in some ways, I, I think that's, that's interesting to me. Um, and I'm just curious, how much, how much of O'Reilly did you, did you bring into the class or have them read? They, so we, we read, we read two chapters. We read the, 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 the important first. The introduction to the possibility of absolute architecture, and then the first chapter, which are, which where he lays out this very long argument towards the archipelago. Is that right? And it's the yeah. one where he comes back around and he talks about the plinth. But but he basically lays out this. I think it's such a correct argument that 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 the, the model of a city that we should be looking at is not the Greek city; it's the Roman city, and it's, it's essentially the idea that that urbanization proceeds on a on a very strange assumption that civic civicness is somehow bound up in it, but it's not clear that it is at all. Right, civicness is bound up merely in the provision of infrastructure and, and, and our thankfulness for that. And that, that it then becomes the, the arguably the, the role of every block mm -hmm. to, 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 to generate its own civic world, which is why he then, argue, he, it's one of the reasons he, he makes a kind of argument for the, 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 the reconsideration of those quasi monumental architectures. He's not interested in sustainability at all. I just think it's super <laughs> interesting because of the loose fit of program, which I, I, I'm particularly drawn to. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah, and you'll see. I mean, I mean, this first project, this, this, this project you're going to see, may not be the most absolute project of all. Uh, it, although it started more absolute than where it ended, I, I will say in its, in, in, in its favor. So, well, why don't we why don't we dive in, uh, Brandon, Youssef? Uh, why don't you guys uh, uh, take off, and and uh, I'm going to keep an eye out for uh, Alice if she kicks in. Okay. Uh, hello. Can you see my screen? Hi, my name is Yusuf. How's it going, um, Michael? How's it going, Martin? Hi, I'm Brandon. All right. So to begin, we'd like um, to just very succinctly describe the project to you guys. Um, we are proposing a school for the performing arts that strives to maintain public space at all costs. So to protect <laughs> against floodwaters, we have created a bowl condition out of mass that buries itself several meters into the earth. Students, as well as members of the public, ascend to a protected community space near the upper lip of the bowl. Programs oriented for students are located at the lowest levels, while the public occupies the spaces farthest from the ground. The tower can be understood to be a blank canvas waiting for public occupation, particularly in moments of disaster. So, one of the drivers of a project was the idea of public ownership and how civic architecture in the 21st century must be able to respond and adapt. Um, this image right here that you're seeing um, is our site as it appears um, presently. So with climate change becoming a more pressing issue every year, the city of Colombo and its suburbs must brace itself for far more flooding. The norm in civic architecture today is to place public spaces at the ground level. However, when floods occur, these spaces arguably no longer exist. Due to our proximity to the canal, the problems are only multiplied. With the insertion of our school, we strive to create a space that maintains the possibilities of public ownership at all times. Our bowl condition acts as a dam to preserve safe spaces within and above. In worst conditions, the public may arrive at our school by either boat or floating debris, where they can find temporary refuge in the form of fresh water, food, and shelter. When floodwaters recede and the ground plane becomes hab habitable, the edge condition where the perimeter walls meet the ground becomes activated with our farmer's market in an effort to make the school feel as welcoming to the street and community at all times. So what we've done, both Brandon and I, we have grouped our principles into uh, three overarching ideas. We try to focus on making our school more resilient, more inviting and incomplete. So this diagram will explain the, the resilient part. 
so as Brendan mentioned, we're like our school is designed to fight back and protect from the flood in this area, and also to provide uh, an oasis in the inside for, for the inhabitants. So in terms of re resiliency, we have assigned about 15% of our site to grow bamboo. That will be used for lighter construction on the site afterwards, like creating the shading structure or the sheltered pods. And we're also proposing a rainwater collection system that would limit the school's dependency on public resources. That would also be used as passive cooling techniques with the heat stack effect and some uh, uh, geothermal walls that go into the ground. And so inside the school, there's also going to be a, a man-made oasis that would offer uh, tranquility and peace at the same time creating a buffer from the surrounding noises. And of course, we get to harvest the, the solar energy in that part of the world. So this is a view looking inside this oasis that we're offering. So we're, we're trying to create this, this lush, uh, green, baked nature in there. And so in terms of the community engagement, we want to give our community uh, the, the sense of, of uh, ownership and then make them engage with our building. So the school will offer spaces at all times for the community to gather, whether it's the low market spaces or the community gardens or the shelter from the floods. And the school will act as a landmark, both in form and in function. And it will also act as a well in terms of the place where people come together and meet. So this is a view looking at the corner. Uh, so we're offering this, this market, the farmer's market on the lower plant, and that would go wrap around uh, to the top of the school level. And in the back, you will see the, the, the community gardens that we're offering also. And so because we wanted to engage the community and give them the sense of ownership, we wanted to offer an incomplete building. We want the community to decide what happens after work, we, uh, we're done construction. So what we're doing is we're providing the infrastructure and the raw materials for the community to complete the building as their needs change over time. And we're using the bamboo because of flexibility and ease of production, of course. And we're using the bamboo as a metaphor. So the bamboo is growing on the school side and when it uh, matures and it's ready to uh, be used, it will be used to serve the community. So now, um, going a little bit deeper into the uh, projects, um, this view you're being, uh, seeing right now, this is um, kind of what arrival to the site will um, kind of look like. So from this perspective, this is a perspective from the highway that runs um, along the north side. And this is kind of the view you will see, um, thousands of people will see each day on the way to work um, from the highway. And this is a view from the south. So looking from the street approaching the building, the south corner recedes in order to open up the facade for more complete public occupation, both physically and um, visually. So looking at the site plan, to the west of our school lies a large golf course. This provides quite dense natural, uh, quite a dense natural edge for the back up, the back side of our project. We anticipate arrival may take place from this facade during times of flooding, hence the large stair on the west. Um, the canal as well as Lake Drive run along our eastern edge. In normal conditions, all arrival will take place along this facade. To the north and south, there are numerous different two and, two and three story structures serving as housing embassies and places of business. There are additionally a few high rises um, that can be located um, around um, our site. Um, that just kind of create this like assorted mix of scales. So looking at the front elevation, um, this shows, uh, this represents the scalar relationship to our immediate neighbors. Um, we recognize that most buildings in the neighborhood take an exclusive rather than inclusive stance to the street, typically walling off the lowest levels. To make our project feel more public, we desire to soften the street facade as much as possible by situating our farmer's market along the street. To imply vertical circulation, we also slope to the street edge to, um, to make it feel a little bit more inviting. This plan that you guys are viewing is showing the protected community forum at the top of the bowl. So there are three means of egress derived to this level. The street edge circulation acts as an extension of the farmer's market. So these spaces 
um, that you see are especially necessary in times of flooding as the vendors are encouraged to migrate up to safety. Stairs along the western edge allow for a space to rest as well as a location to dock a boat um, in times of flooding. Um, and then the south edge serves to quickly bring the public to the tower. Students, um, once they reach this uh, level, students um, descend um, into the floors below. That's uh, where Yusuf's mouse is. There's two ways, that one and then there's the one for the auditorium. But um, students descend into the classroom spaces below and the public is encouraged to either stay on this level where they can um, access our community garden, um, our cafe, or they may um, circulate upward to the library or the temporary shelters above. This longitudinal section begins to show the relationship between the tower, auditorium, courtyard space, and classrooms. The classrooms are all oriented towards the center. Bamboo plantings climb up the inner edge, acting as a natural screen. Um, and the classrooms are shaped to encourage airflow up and out of the exterior edge. And so here also we're uh, trying to show that uh, we're trying to minimize the use of the HVAC system. So we're trying to keep the airflow as much as possible. So you can see there's like all the spaces are open on both sides and we're trying to, to utilize the Bernoulli effect and the heat stack effect also on the side along with the geothermal walls that build underground. So just quickly, this blown up partial section showing the auditorium um, begins to explain some of the construction of this outer wall. Um, we're assuming that the outer walls are going to be constructed out of concrete. Um, they're supported um, by fins that pierce through the ground, terminating in these wide slabs that um, are act to steady the school. Um, this also represents our cistern at the bottom, and we'll get into that. You'll see um, a better view of that to the section of the tower. So now looking into the school directly below the top plinth, you see the upper level of classrooms. All circulation takes place along the exterior edge. These separate, these, uh, the walls separating the studios are the heavy geothermal shear walls that pierce really far into the ground to bring up the um, cool from the earth. Um, and they also support these open floor pl uh, plates. So now looking at the lowest plan, it's pretty much organized in the same manner where you have circulation along the back edge, but um, there's also access into the oasis space in the middle. So this section is cut through the courtyard looking towards the tower. The scaffolding for the tower, from the tower extends down to the level of the oasis where it backdrops the lush living plantings in the middle, creating the connection between the two. And finally, this section through the tower begins to represent occupation within the floors. So the auditorium acts as a foundation for the tower. From the top plinth, the public descends into the theater where they may find seating at the upper deck Student seating is on the lowest level. Above the cafe on the top plinth is the library intended for both students and the public. Um, and temporary housing can be found at the highest, most protected levels. So these pods um, that you see up there are intended to be constructed and taken apart when necessary. Um, rainwater um, is collected at the very top and brought down to the cisterns um, underground. And so now we're going to go in, with rendered images to go along the, the tower. So we're going to start from the bottom going up. So this is a view of the auditorium. And as you can see, it's open in, uh, to, the, to the oasis and has like a little slot for, for air circulation and light. And you go up one stair, and this is a view of the cafeteria. And then one more, this is the library. And then this is the shelter or the housing, like the uh, temporary housing level. And finally, we have this is a space uh, like we imagine a classroom or a studio space uh, to happen like this to be open completely on one side. And this is our project. Let me know if you want me to go back to any specific slides. Right, thank you. That, that's I think that's actually the other thing about like um, online reviews that it's so hard. You feel like. You don't really have the time to sort of like look around the whole presentation on the wall and sort of digest and sort of like look at certain drawings, but you're just like stuck with whatever the last image on the screen is, um, which as a reviewer makes it always hard yeah. for me. Um, so I, I go ahead, Mark. Sorry. Yeah, I, I just I just had a um, two questions really, and and those are like not not even 
deep or philosophical questions, but just really simple functional questions. The, the first one is, um, it, it seems like the project works or operates, is meant to operate in conjunction with flooding and like rather like then fight it, actually kind of integrate it. Um, does your, your pit, like the courtyard, the sunken courtyard, does that transform into a big deep lake when it floods or do you try to keep water out through these like That was walls? my exact question. That was my oh. first question. <laughs> Very so, good. so uh, as we go back, so uh, so right now the the flooding limits uh, is about a, a meter high, and in this rendering we're showing the the flood at a two meter high, so worse than that. But then our walls still extend way beyond that to up to five. So meters you're high. trying to keep it dry, in other words, yes, you're doing yeah, the Dutch exactly. then. You're yes. you're sinking a bathtub down and then yes. yeah. okay. So in the beginning, we were thinking about like bringing the flood water in, but then when you think about yucky, mucky, brown flood water, you want to keep it out. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so Martin, the other reason is that, that the reason it floods here is because specifically we're in a flood. We're in a you know classic urbanized spot, right? We're we're in we're in wetlands here. I mean, the, yeah. The the, the 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 cause of the flooding here is not rain specifically, but runoff. Yeah. Okay. Um. Good. Yeah. And, and then and then well, I, I let I let Michael Michael ask his. Like, I, I got my first question. So. Yeah, you know, the um, I'm, I'm. First of all, I just want to congratulate you guys on on a tremendous amount of intelligent manipulation of the land, of the building. Really, really beautiful uh, renderings, great line weights. Just like I feel like you guys are, you know, pros, close to close to pros. And um, so I'm just like I'm super impressed. Um, so the critiques that I have are sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, above and beyond. I love the idea of a building that res that uh, responds to the flood. I think the way the stairs go down to the water um, is very clever, since you don't have to determine exactly how how bad the flood's going to be. But I do think you'll have a traffic problem because uh, you know you're going to have boats. Only two or three boats are going to be able to get to the stair at the time. So if there are you know, people in boats five, six, seven layers out, they're going to have to step onto other people's boats. In other words, you haven't really created yet um, a, a decent landing system. Yeah, like you, a need, dock, it's a, like, a you need a system. ramp, actually, you, like, like they yeah. do in those little Italian towns where you haul the boats up. Yeah, it's a really good point. Or, you know, yeah. or, or or something that floats, or something that allows you to tether all along the outside wall and walk along the outside wall to get to where the stair is. I think it's just one step more elaborate. Uh, when you just think of you know a hundred a hundred uh, little little boats tied up to this thing, or two hundred, because this becomes a kind of a life center. Um, yeah. You know, for weeks at a time, and I think that's really terrific. The idea of the pit excites me architecturally because of the kind of the yin yang of the tower and the pit. You know, the the sort of the wonderful tension between them. Um, so I, again, as an architect, I'm really super excited by it. But I have to say, I I do worry. I worry that a lot depends on on it never being breached. Uh, during flood, and a lot depend, and I also think it's going to be as hot as hell down there. It's going to, like, when the sun shines in there, there's no cross breeze, unless you install gigantic industrial sized fans. It's going to be stiflingly still, and humid and hot. Well, so uh, Michael, the, the site itself so place you don't want to be. I was saying the, the site itself, like the the area, is is pretty windy most of the time, actually. Like sometimes yeah, the wind doesn't. A wind does not go down into pits, and it certainly doesn't go down into pits that are surrounded by walls. Mm -hmm. um, it's two or three layers of walls. I think to if you seriously want to make this this lowered level, maybe mm -hmm. we shouldn't call it a pit. I think you have to get into mechanical ways mm -hmm. to uh, blow blow air through it uh, generally. Because uh -huh. it, it's just not going to be able to partake of natural breezes. Um, well, so yeah. I agree with you. And like we're trying to minimize, so we're not trying to eliminate it completely. Yeah, but it, it, 
it's funny it's gone through a number of different stages so michael it, it was initially the whole thing was initially covered the, the, that pit was initially covered and roofed and then at various points in time there have been channels of air that have that have been directed into that space and then positively drawn out i mean they, they've, they've set up yeah, venturis yeah. for it but right now you're right it's it, it what has to happen is somehow the tower has to get lifted and air has to be brought underneath that zone somehow to, to, to allow it to, to move through. Yeah, and you know, 90% or 80% of the power in an air conditioning system is, are the chillers. The fans are, are relatively inexpensive power-wise. No, you can yes. move quantities of air relatively with a okay. five, 10 horsepower motor, um, which is kind of nothing. It's less than a, a car. Oh yeah, and on the site, like we're gonna use, well, we're gonna apply PV panels on the site so we can use uh, yeah, but um, also, and I have two more questions. One has to do with the utility of the bamboo wall. Like, that would have, that would have been my next question. <laughs> okay, Martin, take it. Um, I mean, my, my question was something like, well, the, so you have, but you used bamboo once apparently down in the pit as kind of something that grows and regrows. And then you use dead bamboo, it seems like as a cladding on the facade of the tower. And there is some idea about how that can extend or like build, be built back or sort of be built back up. And I don't quite understand that is, I guess, is my question. I don't quite understand why you need that cladding and what it does and how it performs as a facade or, or as a, yeah. Yeah, because if it's just like bamboo fencing, I have some in my backyard. Well, so um, the thing is, uh, as David mentioned, uh, so like, the rarity of the materials uh, available on, uh, in Sri Lanka in general. Uh, so we only have bamboo and, and plastic uh, rubbish. So, and like, we kind of feel guilty enough to use concrete for this uh, ball and the tower, the infrastructure that we're offering. So to balance that a little bit, we're trying to you know, provide some, some renewable source of, of uh, construction materials. What, what, yeah, what but... does the bamboo give you? that you wouldn't have without okay. the bamboo, other than like a railing that prevents you from falling down. It doesn't, okay. it doesn't give you any additional space in the tower, it seems, or maybe it does. I, 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 it's just like. Hmm. Yeah, so, so it, you guys should go back to the, kind of, to the, the, the deep history of this bamboo is, is worth knowing. So, I mean, the, the initial proposal that they wanted was that this tower would always be unfinished. And they went mm -hmm. through iteration after iteration, iteration after iteration after iteration of a, of a building that somehow was unfinished. So that's what they wanted, like iconographically in, in the city. It looks like, looks like scaffolding. Yeah, so exactly. it turns out, of course, that scaffolding in Asia is most, in, or in Southeast Asia, for even for skyscrapers, it's made of bamboo. And if they had rendered it the way that that, sky, that scaffolding is, which is mind-bending, like some of the most mind-bending photographs I've ever seen is like Lloyd's of London, or not Lloyd's of London, Hong Kong Shanghai Bank mm -hmm. in construction with 60 stories of bamboo mm -hmm. scaffolding going up the outside, 40 stories of bamboo scaffolding going up the outside, which is, it, it's an incredible image. And the, the images of this kind of scaffolding, which is, which is, and it's, a, I think the idea was that, that, that there would be, that the building would be kind of perpetually enclosed in the scaffolding, which is itself iconographic of a thing which is in, con in construction rather than a thing itself being in construction. But it's not drawn correctly for it to be that way. I think Martin, that's, that's the long history of it. Uh, 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 I mean, I, I like the I like that idea. I actually like the effect and the affect that that has of the, the sort of tower as kind of like one of the monumental symbols that's made entirely of bamboo. I mean, I would think that like maybe the tower needs to shrink further and the bamboo needs to actually take over. The bamboo needs to make the space and the, all you have left of the tower is, well, one core, probably two cores, which you will need in the end. But but all you all you have is like two concrete cores and everything else is bamboo in between. And like you occupy the bamboo and the bamboo does all the work for you. I, I feel it right now it's sort of stuck in between like, oh, is it just a facade or is it is it really structural or does it make space? I, I would, I mean, I would try, at least one, one iteration would be to sort of like go all out bamboo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's, but it's got to be drawn either way. It's got to be drawn correctly. It's got to be drawn as that kind of bamboo as opposed to this kind of like somehow kind of a uh, Saul the wit kind of yeah. interpretation of bamboo, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't, I mean, the bamboo is not, there's no glass in there. So it's, and it's not really providing much shade. 
um, I do think it, I mean, I'm not one to always ask for performance in that sense, but I think this does need to perform um, uh, by providing shade and yet letting air through and that sort of thing. And I would apply it more surgically. I would like right now it wraps around the core. Like, why do you need bamboo around a core, a concrete core? I would have it just be where yeah. people are. Um, I also have some questions about structure. You know, you have an awfully long sort of uh, uh, de Mendes Rocha sort of long span between two cores. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised you don't have truss work on the, on the facade, which I think would work well with the bamboo. Yeah, In other words, you actually make the faces structural with large diagonals and so forth. I made them get rid of that. Uh, I, I, they they yeah, actually they had, had big, giant, stinky. They're, they're, well, it wasn't that they were bad, but theirs were really bad. So I just made them get rid of it. I just like, yeah. I mean, the really, other, the other solution is uh, to use the, the roof thing, that big deltoid roof, which is quite iconic, and say, okay, you're going to be structure. And, and then I can the floors. Yeah. Yeah. Hang the floors yeah. from it. Yeah. You saw a thing. You hang something on one side. I don't know. Or hang it from the middle or something. And then these are, when I see, you call this temporary shelters on the right. Mm -hmm. I hope it's three floors of temporary shelters. Yes. Because what's yeah. the floor to ceiling out there? Like 20 feet? Yes, these are about like four to five meters, I think. I have I have one I have another observation like with regards to the, I think I think your whole the whole composition what I find interesting about the idea and the kind of Martin we just lost you yeah he's frozen we'll get him back in just a second Michael this this, this affords you an opportunity to, to cancel out <laughs> well, and anything what, Martin was what ridiculous thing was Martin going to say uh, <laughs> do you want to skip to another drawing uh, uh, while, while yeah, Martin's yeah uh, you know, that, that, that that Mark's, uh, and, Martin's back oh, right. there you go he's back oh sorry Martin um, we didn't hear the last five minutes oh sorry like so, so the, those two those two components of gather and mark the tower and the courtyard um which are sort of like foundational moments of civic of, of a lot of civic architectures, like from, you know, the, the churches, uh, the Pisa baptistry and tower, or Leonidas Lenin Library, like the United Nations, like and, and I mean I think I think they're, they're sort of like, and I like that you're using these and you're sort of transforming them a little bit, like the gathering space actually becomes something that has to do with climate and the courtyard and shelter. Um, and the tower, I think, is is a little bit more vague, and that, that that's where I have my my issues. Like, I, I I like the idea of like, yeah, that becomes temporary housing, and like that's monumentalized in that tower, right? Um, which is like, I mean, in some ways, like the only building that that's like more like that's more trivial, but but also powerful in that way is the United Nations slab, which is like it's just offices, it's just an office building but it actually kind of talks about the UN as, as an office organization, as a sort of like, um, and so I think, I think there is an idea there for the tower. I just don't think it's quite as well worked out as maybe the idea of the, of the plinth or of the, the gathering space. Mm -hmm. um, so that, yeah. that would be, yeah, I think that would need a lot more sort of like Pungent, because it's just it's just I think it's just weaker than the than the plinth yeah. part yeah. as a design. I think it would look I think it would look better too, just just purely look. Uh, if it were three floors lower. If um, the whole tower think, were three floors lower. If it were yeah. like, say, th this tall. Just so that I because I think it would compositionally be come down to a scale that's similar to the pit. And I think the then, two then you could more then you could then you could there. almost hold it off the ground. I mean that, that's the other kind of thing I've been thinking about listening to you guys. It's like <laughs> is there any way to get is there any way to get air through back through here? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and I would also de-exaggerate the floor to floor heights. I mean, yeah. it seems like the tower is really not about that. These are not banks, and I, there's no need to impress once you're in the tower. I would get those floor to floor heights as low as I could, and maximize their utility. Think of them more as a grain storage or a, a, a sort of something you for refugees. I mean. 
Exactly. Yeah, think, that's that's how we're thinking about fancy. it. Like we want to, yeah, to offer just more space for people as a refuge. Yeah, but then don't make such. Yeah, such yeah I agree. Problems. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't mind there being some civic programs in here. I actually I I actually I mean I I wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. give the whole thing over. I mean I I I think that the I think the way it's drawn or detailed currently it's a little too mm -hmm. kind of it, it's too kind of hotel lobby mm -hmm. casual right now in terms of the way the architecture <laughs> right. works. You know, just the the, the yeah, bamboo, the, the concrete. Is, yeah. yeah, I I think the there's also a competition is, between the between the sort of like iconic shapes that you're using here, like that roof and, and the kind of repetitive nature of that. I, I do think you need to resolve that. Like they, they compete in my opinion right now. So I, I would either pull up the, whatever that Concrete structure is. The bamboo over the whole yeah, and, and just let it have a, a, like an edge like that everywhere and almost disappear into the sky and like form a di different kind of monumentality. What you're doing here is, is very much a sort of a classic monument roof of any kind of like good old modernist tower building, like that that kind of like lifted up roof, like, you know, GSW in Berlin or something. Um, but but I, I think I think there's actually something in my opinion that's that's nicer about just having the bamboo at those kind of like torn edges of the bamboo just disappear into the rain clouds or whatever you have there. Um, I'm just looking at this now. It's so funny. I mean, the project is, it, it, we're all sitting here working on it because I think we're all excited about it. I mean, I, I like it. You, you look at this section and you go, why can't that section happen behind there and bring air in underneath the, underneath the auditorium? Like it's then slightly mm -hmm. lifted up somehow. You know, uh, it, 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 it's several different problems. They're all, they're all tied together. I mean, anyway, sorry, guys. Keep, yeah, keep, and it's always it's always good when you have uh, problems right next to each other. Yeah. Uh, more than one problem, and it's right next to another problem because that's exactly where one you look for the one move that solves all problems at once. Yeah. You know? But but you're hearing things that, that have to be resolved to, to, for it to get to the competition, and, and this this whole the whole mm -hmm. question of the presence of this bamboo, I think, is really really critical. The question right. of getting this, the air into this courtyard critical. I think. Uh, why don't we? Why don't you flip through your drawings again? Like, look at the plans mm -hmm. briefly and sections and. Uh, um, just... question, I had a question. Like, uh, the ocean is nearby, no? No, it's not. It just appears that way in their drawings. Big note to them. It, it, oh. it, that's kind of vanished. It looks like it's a block away, but it's actually five, ten miles away. Oh. I think your Sorry. best line is almost the site plan. I, I I really appreciate the the site plan where it gets drawn in context. I think that's actually quite nice. Like this, this drawing, or there's um, another one that's further, or 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 something like this. I I, I feel this is actually a very nice drawing. Um, yeah, although this whole area, right, what that is and how it where the street is 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 more convincing in your other drawing in some ways. That's true. Yeah, no, it's true. It, it needs more resolution. <laughs> I think, but maybe you can sort of like copy over some of the line work from the other drawing into this drawing. Oh yeah, there's definitely two people working via Zoom. Um, I I feel I feel you need a sort of um. To, now you you're submitting this as a competition, right? Yeah, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. I feel you need a what kind of perspectives do you have? In terms of the, renderings, or yeah, well, renderings or or, or drawn perspective, or like I mean. Perspectives can Wait, can be stop. other than rendered. <laughs> so they, they have these they have these these Lumion drawings that are yeah. that, that have their advantages and disadvantages. And then could you go back to that one section you guys had cut where it was just rendered in gray? In perspective. One more, keep going back. Like the, and then they have yeah. drawings like this, which are were kind of mixed between linear and then some kind of V ray uh, 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 and I'm wondering where you guys are on that. I like this a lot. Yeah. I, I'm absolutely on the side. I was just gonna I was gonna say I think you need some Pierre Vittorio style, like axon or some like some brute like a brutal drawing, like a, a black and white drawing that shows the entire project, the tower and the pit, that is not niceifying it. It's I mean it, it's it's a brutal it's sort of like a performative brutal project, and I think this one here has some of that quality like of, of the presence like the, the absolute absoluteness of it I guess as form as urban island. Um, 
And I think your pers- the rendered perspectives from my point of view actually kind of niceify it, for lack of a better word, a little bit too much. Like, I, I think you need to, I need to, you, 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 I mean, axons were, were basically our, our sort of like ways of sort of keeping your distance from it. And like, that's why people like Rossi or Aurelia, I mean, really draws a lot on Rossi or Ungers, use them a lot because they, they are objective, so to speak. Um, at least, you know, you distance yourself from it. You're not in the space. And I think your project deserves like like one at least really nice drawing of that. And I, I would sort of look into this style here a little bit more. Okay. Also, I think the reservoir at the bottom needs to have perspective in it. Yeah, it, it's weird. Also, structurally, needs to be tied to this. The, the, these yeah. Two things, yeah. If this thing breaks that, I mean, it, it, you have to figure out how that how that actually works, right? Mm-hmm. Something like what what Martin just drew. I think all the perspectives through the courtyard are, are really great, where you sort of look into the lush foliage of the of the sunken courtyard. Um, this is yeah. Nice. Well, really that nice. was very surprising, I have to tell you, because I yeah. I couldn't see where all the tree roots go. It just. True. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I, 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 if you could go, I, I think the, the the weakest perspectives are the interiors, the, the mm-hmm. interiors of the, of the public spaces in the tower, where it just it, 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 I think these drawings are actually quite good. You, you call them hotel lobby drawings, I think, or something, this David. Like, yeah. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's where it's where these it's where basically these applied materials. I think this one's okay. This one's all right. This this one I can live with. Let's go onto the let's go onto the to the, the interiors of the tower. Yeah, this is the one where, where this stone material, this, mm-hmm. Yusef, this should be, you should take this file and erase it from your hard drive. And then you should make a commitment on the internet that, you, that no one can give you this file either. This, this, this should be taken from you. That's all I'm gonna say. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's some weird things happening in that drawing, by the way, if you go back one. The other is that, that somehow light is like this core, you should just connect these things. Right, like the light here is coming from there, and and you don't. This whole structural system should bind into that core, and and I, I would, I would, I would. I, well, I might yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we didn't get to talk about that part, but that's where you can just right. go look at the rainwater coming down the. Oh, oh, gotcha. So, so can't you in this space, like, can't you use the bamboo? I mean, there's a layer of bamboo here. That, that has a certain depth, right? This this kind of like layer, if I look at this, there's a certain depth here that mm-hmm. in theory allows me to kind of walk right around it. So, so couldn't you use the entire width of this space to, you know, do something with it and like put walls in? And then you just like, if you have a plan, you just walk around and you circulate through the bamboo and like it, it maybe it becomes wider and like it fits stairs but it also fits walkways and so there's a whole armature around it and then and then you have a sort of like the center is occupied by things like I'm, I'm just looking for a sort of like organizational principle right then you can get rid of then, yeah. then you can get rid of stuff like this whole thing in favor of just yeah exactly uh, uh, like it, it needs to be a sort of little bit more rigorous i feel mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting. Well, let's go to the drawing of the library, like one level up. Yeah, the same thing here. I mean, like somehow the, the height of this, uh, 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 you know, or, or yeah, the books, to the books are through. super high. Yeah. And why wouldn't you put bookshelves this way? <laughs> well, yeah. so like we it's... put the, the bookshelves right between the, that like, connected the two cores, that's why. I mean, there's no other reason. Well, uh, that would, I think it'd be cool if you just went ahead and made them structural. Like you just said, uh-huh. well, all right, that, there's your Michael. There's your trust, buddy. I mean, the, it's it's the it's the it's the, the library is a, 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 a is, is two trusses. But then I would say one of them is here, and one of them is there, and you can see through it to the third truss. And those things actually, they they that's that floor. Yeah, and the book the bookshelves seem you, to be at, at double the scale of the people. You the only people. ever need a truss every other. Um, floor, you know, you, you could, you could, you could actually kind of have a structural system that's quite interesting, in a way where sort of you have a truss here, and that ties to that core, that one ties oh. to that core, and then that tries that goes here. I mean, like, and, and then in the background, there's there's the core obviously somewhere, but you, I mean, like, you don't need a truss on every side, like, or you, I, th- I think there's some some 
real flexibility there that that could be interesting or or you do it like that you can do a truss every other floor is what you're saying that one you know that one gets gets a truss here that one gets a truss that one gets a truss that one gets a truss that one doesn't get a truss at all so i i mean i think i think you have you have some real i i mean i think the structure is actually your friend in this case Mm -hmm. I mean, we did look at the MVRDVs pavilion, uh, like we were looking at the, the trusses there, but you know that got changed over time. Guys, now here's what I want to do. I want to I want to wrap these guys up a little bit so we can uh, dive back in and and uh, let's take a few more minutes and and uh, uh, collect your thoughts on on uh, Yusef and Brandon. Who I, I gotta say, I, I, this project for me, I, I, there's a lot going on, and the thing I'm most happy about is just for the two of you. Like looking at y'all's portfolio, I, I just feel like this project is closer to a building as a as a whole thing. I mean, there's all kinds of problems, but it's closer than you guys have gotten in your portfolios. And so I'm, I'm comp the, the plan evolution over the last two weeks, the sectional evolutions, those are all things I'm I'm really really happy about. I mean, I think there's 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 plenty of issues here, but uh, but I, I I'm I'm particularly pleased with the way the way the project is going. So, but now you're getting good, decent, really useful input from Martin and Michael. But let's let's get them there to 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 finish it off for them. Yeah. Well, listen. I think the tower really needs really needs work. I think the base is really nicely conceived in concept. Uh, the tilted walls to the outside are, are very interesting in the way they shelter. The whole flood story, the sunken courtyard, you probably shouldn't call it a pit. Um, maybe take a few trees out um, and maybe find a way to blow some air in there. Um, I think there is more work to make this a credible uh, competition winner. But I, it's really got the bones, uh, really great bones for it. Yeah, I, I would agree with with Michael. I think I think the tower needs the most attention, and that and that's serious design attention. Um, I think there's. I mean, you guys are obviously like very creative and have a lot of energy and a lot of skills. So I think sometimes the skills and the energy sort of seem to pull in different directions a little bit um, in the in the representation. So I think I would really, you know maybe re like edit and, and sort of ask yourselves like which are the drawings that we need that are really the crucial drawings that are absolutely that that have to be a hundred percent like spot on and then like maybe there are some drawings that get reworked because you figure out that you need that drawing and it's not good enough yet and it needs to sort of like be streamlined with those others but then there may also be just drawings that just don't make it into the competition set. Mm -hmm. I, I think that editing would be also another thing that's that could be. Uh, I don't think we need to show for competition. I think it's best not to show fifty-five sections and views yes. and so forth. Uh, <laughs> section, uh, sections. Uh, I, I, think, I think the sections are actually the, the vital drawing, right? The, yeah. the, 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 and and partly because the, they are they have so much currency right now, right? Just like the. Yeah. You know, it, it's the, the the drawing that the critics all ask for first. Where's your section? You know, and, and rightly so. You know, so. So I I want to say something about that stair. You know, first of all, it needs a handrail, but second of all, it's structurally improbable. I think you have just sort of revealing the edge of the stair. It's really it doesn't have to be. It's not that interesting to see the edge of the stairs. I I would give them a smoother appearance and a more plausibly structural one. Right, right. Like you just can't make a concrete stair do what you say it can. I have a, a close friend, Richard Summer, who used to be the dean up in, 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 uh, in uh, Montreal, and he, he fails students for putting uh, exposing the sides of stairs. <laughs> 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 and if they, put a stair, if they put a stair behind glass, he, he literally will set them back a year. It's just a rule. He tells them that on the first day of class. <laughs> Well, where is he now? <laughs> yeah, well, I just stepped down as the dean, but only because- We don't need them, Michael. Cool. We don't need them right now. No, but listen, student, I know why people do it. It's, you know, it is, it says stare very loudly uh, and it minimally obscures the view. But I think you can just, like if you have a uh, upstand beam at the edge of the stair, mm -hmm. it can go up two feet. Then you can put a pipe rail on top of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it holds the stair, it gives it some rigidity. It's not that obstructive. I think you just have to like 
right down on the stair. This is very, very schematic. Mm -hmm. It's a diagram of a stair. It's a diagram of a stair. It is. And again, right, I think me... one more thing. I think these super high ceilings, I mean, I've noticed this all around. I've been on a few reviews at other universities. This is a common thing. You do a pretty straightforward plan and then you do floor to ceiling heights of 20 feet and suddenly the most ordinary plan seems grand and wonderful. Uh, you know, it's a cheap way to get your architecture with a capital A is just like exaggerate the vertical dimension. Um, I think you should um, bring it down, see if you still like it as much. But I think it's, you should reserve this kind of space for truly, you know, public grand functions. Well, I think that could be that. I, could, I think that could be that. It's just the library. If, it, it's just the way it's handled right now, right? It really, it's handled. The, I think the books and the presence of the books just feels literally like secondary. It doesn't feel like a, a thing that, it, I mean, and, and then in that instance, these kind of tall rooms in hot, humid climates they have huge advantages, you know, because, mm -hmm. because the way air moves in them, so. I wouldn't be afraid to stacking, stacking slabs into the tower like on the on the living levels the more people you can get in there and shelter the beggar it's, it's a big yeah. city there'll be many people like who, who need shelter and you could just like stack it and i think i think repetition is and, a powerful architectural tool sometimes so and I, I think you can still have the occasional door but right now it seems almost too boutique -y. i think it, it needs, a, needs to be a little bit more yes. abrasive the tower i think on the floor is where you expect people to live you need to have laundry and bathroom facilities. I mean, how would you like to be up there for two weeks or three weeks or whatever? Yeah. And you know what's going to happen is that people will just live up there and that'll be it. Okay. Hey, guys, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. I, at this point in time, I want to wrap up with Joseph and Brent, and I want to do a lightning round on the, <laughs> on the, yeah. other, the other four projects where we just look at them for, for uh, let me run through some drawings on each one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let, let's get these guys to exit out. Brandon and Yusef, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up and uh, share mm -hmm. this screen. And uh, uh, what I want to do is just quickly uh, blast through this stuff. Uh, uh, and this is literally imagine that you're a jury member, right? And 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 you're you're doing your first round where you're you're blasting through these things. You're just like clicking through images, right? So I'm going to quickly tell you, but I, I, Michael, you saw this project this morning, this so morning. John and James's. Uh, uh, but the essential idea of it is that uh, they're they're proposing that their idea of contextualism in the in the sustainable is is like a like an oxygen mask. It's not a contextual building. It's a building which is really designed as a machine, very much. Uh, and it goes into, it could go into Houston, it could go into Sri Lanka, it could go into, it could go into, you know, it could go into the Galapagos. It could, the, the point is not contextualism in any normative sense, but contextualism is a kind of machine. So the idea of it is essentially, as I mentioned before, this kind of radiator that faces towards the oncoming wind, brings up thermal, uh, uh, thermal uh, cool through these fins, and then directs it through a series of kind of larger kind of gathering spaces that have kind of operable louvre edges that can be op open to close to the increased airflow. Now, this is their essential diagram, which is not correct yet. It's, uh, the, it, it doesn't explain, doesn't make the leap to their building yet, but this is the basic idea of it. Uh, here's that kind of louvered wall that we talked this morning about the nature of those louvers needing to be kind of probably wood, probably pulled out to get a heat stack uh, for, so that they also don't gain heat. The, the, the sectional drawings, the drawing on the right, really confusing, doesn't really help you very much. The drawing on the left, that kind of heat chimney between the radiator on the right and the kind of embedded rooms below the social rooms uh, at the bottom. Here, the kind of plan level, the kind of entry plan level, the plan levels as you go up. Uh, these kind of looking down through this kind of core space between the radiator on the left and the the, the habitable spaces on the right, probably those rails need to be opened or, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is a kind of entry space down below looking up into that space. Uh, view from the kind of main public view from the highway. Uh, probably, you know, the, this building needs to be opened up somewhat. These are, these are, these are gathering rooms, uh, like lecture halls. These are kind of more large classrooms and there are kind of smaller classrooms and gathering spaces in the Radiator is that back planting? beyond. Is that planting on the wall? Is that, that greenery? That, it is greenery, and it, they need to show how that's going to be kept alive with uh, where the planters are, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Here's the kind of scale at the street. 
So that's that, that's that first project. So quick quick reactions. Um, the planting, the way that the facade is organized and broken down, reminds me of Lake Flato's like Austin Library, which is not a good thing. God, that's um, the kiss of death. I think <laughs> yes. I mean, I know well, what I'm what I'm saying. Like, if you want to do an a contextual building, if you want to do a brutal big machine in a city, then don't do little design nods. It has to be brutal. And I, I think yeah. I think that I think that, that corner, like if you if you can if that's explained exclusively through this is where plants grow best, then I'm okay with it. But it seems to me, it reminds me, the association that I have as somebody who lives in Austin and looks at a lot of bad contextual architecture that like thinks that breaking down the scale is like the only good thing to go, no matter how small. Um, that that's just the association that I have with it and I feel like I would I would at least test that I would at would least you, sort of like would, would, would it be better if that if that surface was here like, um, like, like and and then and then say and then this say this edge was left open and I mean this is a kind of funny building because there's no way they can get around the fact that it is a collage of various pieces put together Right. So and, and so they're, they're going to have I mean, I think it's I got to tell you, first of all, I have to say, Martin, I, I do think it is better than like Plato's a public library. I, I know that that was no, that was I think that was, that was a logo. That was a little bit of a um, I, but it, it, I think I think it is. It seems um, it seems, let's say, it doesn't seem like ruthless enough. It seems design. It seems a little bit designy for sure. All right. So so in terms of ruthless, where would you. What, 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 where would you go? I, I think I would, I would have to, I would actually have to look at where the plants grow best on the facade, honestly. Got it. Got it, got it. All right, so, so um, that, that would, I, I think you? the roof needs to be bigger. This. I think the roof needs to have fewer columns. Why do we need a column per, per beam? It just seems crazy to me. Anyway. Seems great. All right, fair um, enough. I'm I do a, think the green, I, I'm okay with the green wall like that. But I think it needs to be just better rendered, maybe, to show the air get, might it. Right, because it's, um, here it's quite nice. Right? That's actually nice. Yeah. yeah, here it's here it's quite nice in this drawing, right? Like where where you go. I think All right, torpedo shaped columns, which are super super prominent in the plan, kind of disappear in every other rendering. Like when uh, you look at yeah, the plan, that's yeah. all you can see is those. Hmm. Yeah. Right here they disappear, and you want them to you want them to read like they're going through the floor. You want to uh, well, like have a little more material presence. Floor. Yeah. What? Yeah. And they have a very unique shape as though they were under a bridge and dealing with flows of water or something. Yeah. So they're um, trying to maximize, they're trying to maximize surface area in some ways. And, and then also, uh, uh, you know, allow airflow mm -hmm. over them as foils. But they, 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 well, could, then they, should have, they could. They should have fins like a motorcycle engine. Right. Right, like actually, like actually articulated as as as, like as a, things. Like cylinder heads, yeah. Right, They're and then they, they, you, yeah, you should probably. Damn it, I hate this program, and I especially hate it right now. <laughs> like <laughs> you, 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 like you want these things to read like they're going through somehow, right? That they're that they're that they're going through yeah, these kind of more a neutral hundred, surfaces. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I don't know what that is. It looks like a strange kind of body tattoo, but, 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 but it, it's, it's a it's fire firewood uh, fire pipes. Fire, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, I just think a the couple plants. Of... The plants actually seem quite well drawn. I felt like if you go back to the plants. I, I actually kind of thought those were. I would. I would not poche the columns. Yeah, I think it, it, it reads like, hard because yeah. because because then what happens is this surface, which actually is not is open in the plans, actually reads like it's closed, right? Like it reads like here you see it. It's just right. It, yeah, it, it's a real problem. This reads like it blocks mm. air. Right? It's the torpedoes that are that are killing it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, graphically, graphically, I think it's site plan. Uh, I, I think if you're going to draw the plants like lushly. In the elevations, and you have to draw them lushly in the in the plan, don't you think? Yes. Um, yeah. 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 Why not? Yeah. 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 So I, I think the um, second. I, yeah, I was disappointed to see the same three floor plan repeated mm -hmm. four times um, oh, in the section. 
you were you were disappointed by the fact that this the replication the replication of the of the sorry little... yeah like why really you wouldn't vary that I just this, thought that like was... you wouldn't vary this to where it's it it comes it's a so those sections a small are one and then it a, and like... then a bigger one and then a bigger one yeah here. cut and paste cut and paste cut and paste yeah. Yeah. I would imagine I would just invent some and doesn't you don't have to justify it. Just have Perfect. those sections be a little more confusing. Man, this is actually the most effective way to do any review, I just realized. The, the, the just, mm -hmm. just go through the drawings. The students make no presentation. <laughs> the faculty member makes a presentation, and you just give information. It's really useful. Yeah, I, I've got to do this. Yeah. Uh, let me see this. Uh, uh, let's get back to this thing really fast. I, I mean, I think, I, think the, I think the sections still probably, in my opinion, need the most work. They're, they seem... Um, they just seem a little bit under developed. Like it, 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 it's hard to put my finger on it, but it seems to me that there would be more indications of of kind of structure, or even like if, if these are like high performance fins somehow that like blow air through. I would I would imagine that like the, what I would be looking at here would not necessarily be the underside of the slab, but there would be some other kind of like lowered ceiling and, and like so I, I mean i think there's just um without knowing exactly what that stuff is um but my my impression is that there would be a lot more stuff there like i, I feel like i would look at um at sort of like some of neil denari's early work or so <laughs> let's say it, you know i think the, the machines of neil denari in like, like the tokyo forum or, or things like that um, I think that one of the things in that regard actually is that the, that that theoretically the the louvers on this side and the louvers on that side move, and so you'd expect even in this drawing to show some difference where some of these are slightly brighter, and some of these rooms are slightly brighter, good. just as a that's as good. a consequence of, of the way this is all done. You know, you get that you get more variation right now, especially it, it it just feels it feels all the same. But in actual fact, there might be tremendous variation as a consequence of the the that'll of, help more open and one mouth being more open and so forth all right i would also you know show show golconde as a precedent like why the hell not why the hell not yeah fair enough all right quickly uh let's just uh, all right so let's go on to the next one i'm just looking at time here all right so this was the the uh, uh, we, we talked this morning about the fact that it's not really a wind catcher. They're really heat chimneys. But, but this was a project which was developed. And we talked this morning about taking this outside kind of uh, large high bamboo thing and actually probably making that of lightweight steel and then transitioning to a bamboo structure in order to protect the bamboo once you're further in. But this, the general idea here was that this is a very much a kind of mat building kind of taken up three floors. Uh, with a very kind of hard, lovely kind of geometry of, 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 of cores and public spaces and that that is what makes the building civic. Mm -hmm. And then these kind of uh, heat chimneys become the kind of identifying factors and features in the, the kind of landscape of the city. And then here's that kind of concrete core that comes up and stabilizes the whole thing, which is simultaneously public and so forth. And that the building is conceived with regard to program and flooding over time in terms of abandonment of programs. Like, for example, here the amphitheater during flood, and then here the amphitheater during the sun. We all are aware of the fact that we desperately need Sri Lankan scale figures. This is the kind of larger approach in this kind of question. And this was this group that was interested in making a kind of trying to find a language which was, which was hmm. somehow appropriate. And then here's the kind of beautiful entry sequence. And then some of these spaces we talked about the fact uh, that this group it, it really is thinking of this as a structural system and that they need to find a way to. Uh, uh, really render these triangulated panels as bamboo uh, constructions that, that then allow air in the middle and that right, right now the render three as a kind of floor all the way through. Uh, uh, but I think these are pretty spectacular drawings. Yeah, I think, um, I think the atmospherics of this project, especially the, you know, the views through the rain and, um, and the sort of the dramatic, all of them are, yeah. are really really interesting. I think the yeah. they could be photoshopped a little. I think they get a little too dark. Um, yeah, they, they, they've been I lightened up a bit already. Really, as it is. Yeah. Yeah, it just the, gets yeah. some curves. This one's perfect, um, especially the the glowing lights inside. Um, you know, I think it's it probably makes sense to talk about these outer elements as steel. 
like to, to right. assure the reviewers that the viewers that the steel is doing the hard work and the safety work, and the bamboo is, is frankly atmospheric. Right. And I think this well, it's, it's, it, but it's, the but it's not. It's, it, it's not. So the, I, I think the idea, just just to be clear, the, the idea I think it was that you go. What's what's missing in this drawing? What, what's hard to read in it is that that there are actually concrete cores that are occurring more or less here. And so you could have a kind of steel structure, uh, two bays of bamboo, a concrete thing, two bays of bamboo, something steel that's related, two or three, something steel that's related to this structure. And you, you get this kind of hybrid structure where, where you primarily mm -hmm. read the bamboo, actually, and the bamboo is actually doing a hell of a lot of work and it can. It's just, it's just yeah. a question of getting it to borrow. <laughs> I agree. I, I think that, that would be. Yeah. No, I think this, uh, of the projects I saw this morning, this one, it's, it's in a certain way the most surreal, but also I think, uh, you know, the most heady, the most post-postmodern. Um, I think this has a good chance of, uh, of, of uh, getting an award. I, I, have, I have two um, comments. I think the quality to me, the quality of this project is in the mat itself, not in the towers. In fact, I find the towers distracting at parts. Like I, I find them distracting like when they become these big elements. This plan actually works pretty well because they're they're sort of present here, but they don't think they're integrated in the overall geometry. I want to cut the towers off in some of the drawings. I just feel <laughs> that the urge to just like slice them down and focus on the mat and have them be That's voids crazy. in the mat or something. Like if you go to the <clears throat> section that, that we just had open, this one, I, I, I sort of like want to slice it off here and like have this be an element that sits in there, but is, is integrated. I, I think they just read as not as, as sort of like, I mean, a mat, the nice thing about a mat is that things are integrated. Um, so Martin, I, I think what would help here is a drawing. So there's a reason for these towers being quite tall, which is although the, the, the context looks like it's low scale, there are actually quite large buildings in it. And, 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 and actually when you see it drawn that way, when you see it drawn against these kind of large apartment towers without the, 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 the wind kind of these wind chimneys, the, the building kind of, it vanishes civically. So I, I, I understand what you're saying. Their argument was that these, these tall presences uh, make the building a kind of landmark, which they, right. felt, which they actually felt was, uh, was one of their principles that the building had to serve as this place in, that you could come to in a flood. It had to be a place that you knew where it was, uh, which is their argument. I, I mean, think, um, maybe, <laughs> maybe. I'm not, I'm not 100% convinced. I, I just think, I just think th for me, the quality is, is in this part of the project. That doesn't mean that they, they have to go away. It's, it's, I think that's like where for me, the real innovation is. One last thing I think I like, I think when something like this happens in the relationship to the ground, that to me becomes interesting. I would actually, um, I'm, I'm wondering if, if sometimes there aren't any kind of services or pieces that need something that's drawn as a solid that would make the ground plane even more, let's say like there's something that's actually kind of ground that comes up right. here and then does that and then so this is all ground and this is ground so actually the ground the solid ground goes up and it doesn't sit quite as flat because i, I really enjoy the moments when the ground starts to be modulated right so that's I, actually I that, that's the, so you hear i think so, every that, i think every actually, column right it does actually every happen, column just doesn't show a little on a little footing there should be no columns that go into the flat into the flat floor. They should all have at least a two or three foot little concrete pimple. That's that's this thing. Yeah, we we, we talked about that, that one. That's that we talked about this morning. That that, that yeah, also right. That these, the way these things Every, were conceived was you should be able to take the an individual piece of bamboo out, and so there needed to be the kind of registration of of uh, of, of of pieces. The footing. They just all they need is a footing. Yeah, yeah. David, but, all they need is putting the size of the smaller one on the outside. Right, but Martin's but, point about the ground, it, it, it does do it in some places, Martin. It's just where yeah. the section is taken, right? So in, in some places it goes all the way up. And it, so it's, it's a weird question of where the section is taken and then how the interior of the section is drawn, right? Like that, that probably there should be light lines as opposed to dark lines. I, I would, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's exactly right. It, it doesn't here. Like I just want to read that line more. So maybe that's just really a graphic thing. Right. So that I think that those modes are really good, like when it's not flat, but when it actually kind of is kind of two pieces that fit one way to the ground and the one bamboo. Way to, one way to save the towers, I, I like the towers because they are kind of surreal. 
and you know they'll be obscured from the ground by the bulk of the building. It's it's an, you know it's an old classical trick. These things have to be big to be seen at all from from the ground. Otherwise, the building obscures them. Um, right. And I do think they have a civic function. I think I would like to somehow make the claim, even if you can't exactly design it, that people can walk around up there a little like the Berlin uh, uh, government building, you know, Renzo Piano's yeah, spectacular. thing. Spectacular. Yeah, totally, yeah. It's different you should get up there and people should line up to just to be in them. Yeah. It's one of the great yeah. spaces in Berlin. It's a great space. Uh, and so why, be- why can't people get up there, uh, you know? We can get up into the Texas uh, Capitol Tower, Capitol Dome. We should get up into these things. They should be for experiencing. Okay, cool. Let me just let's go back and uh, I, I appreciate. I actually like this plan very much, and I, I agree with Martin. I, I think I think that the the, the the map tends to get lost, right? So the, the, in the drawings right now, and and and, and somehow it's, it's an issue because it. Uh, I, I'm thinking of this. What, what was funny, but the reason I was laughing was I was thinking, yeah, there's going to be Martin. There's going to be a Martin on the jury. There's going to be a guy who's going, I just want a mat building, and I hate this building because of the towers. And there's going to be a Michael guy on the jury going, I, but I love the towers, which means that they're not going to agree and it's not going to win, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 because the, Mike, the Martin guy is going to go over my dead body, and then the, the Michael guy is going to go, let me show you how. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I think that there's something to the fact that that like the the the, the in drawings like this, the map doesn't read quite enough, right? And and mm-hmm. I actually think that the thing about the, the 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 multiple dots of ground coming out would help a lot, right? And then and actually being very discreet, like I think in this drawing, and it, this is I love this group, but because they're getting there, but the idea that this wall could do this with regard to. Uh, uh, with regard to, to cutting through that thing like that, as opposed to being pushed back and being discreet, yeah. And then we've got it. They did draw a rail in. I'm not I'm, that, that detail. It's Michael, yeah, do you like that detail? Yeah, yeah that's very yeah. good. I'm glad of it. Yeah, yeah, it's got to save like money it. somewhere. <laughs> I also like, quite frankly, I also like that they get dark up there. Um, but they did dark, yeah. Yeah, the dark at the top. Um, um, yes. Yeah, why? You know, we always want to stick light up there like it's a Gothic cathedral, but I love the dark up there. But I, I think I think at the same time, I would stress moments like this a lot more, like because they, I, I would have almost missed this if we if I hadn't looked at the at the project like that, that you can actually walk across there. I think those moments where it weaves kind of like there's, there's this cross weave of space happening. I think that that's um, quite important because it, it makes so sort of you have the space that, that moves in that direction and then there's kind of something else going on right. up here. I think it, it, you need, they need to cast some light up there. Yeah, well, and it, it, it can be subtle, right. but it has to be noticeable because I would have I would have almost missed it. But but again, so if if for example they 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 develop this floor system as a as a panelized system, then you'd also read that you'd read that that mm. even if it's done very subtly, dark. Uh, and and but, you know and, and embedded in there are these kind of darker bits of bamboo. You would perceive that map much more precisely running through the whole building. True. Right? I think that would really really help a, a, a lot with this. Uh, all right, one or two more drawings here. Uh, let me just. It's, it's a bit like the Cordoba interior, the the mosque, the mosque. mesquita in my favorite building in the that, history. That, of I, I think like we we actually you have spaces that are directional when you actually kind of have are in one perspective. Right. But then in other perspectives, it completely becomes a, a sort of field condition of um, columns. Uh, I thought that was a weak drawing. That this was a weak one. drawing. Oh, this yeah, one. one. Yeah, I, I, I think it's weak. In part it's like those, peop- those paste-in people, that's not a school. That's not anything. It's, it's just... Yeah, it, it, it's a strange drawing. I mean, I, I agree. You really want to see into a classroom or you want to, you want to understand what these, what, these, what these barriers are actually doing. I agree. And, and I think... Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be cropped down, right? Just that much drawing. Uh, just draw less. Maybe. Right. And just sitting there and having coffee, just like what? Right, it's a school. Yeah. Like be at least mm-hmm. be at least be doing your damn homework. <laughs> <laughs> at least sit there with a the computer. This drawing I think is pretty great. I mean, I, I think that we, again, I think the, the crucial thing in this drawing that would, would really be that you that you indicate the system of construction here somehow at the at the, at the damn it, my mouse is just 
I can't jump to drawing for some reason easily. But here, like this is this, this is a, a very weak moment that the that you you want to understand that there's some inner core here that these pieces are attaching to, that they're being attached to, so that you can replace them individually, right? I, I love this. You know, I, it, it, the section shows that one of these, the, you know, these some of these benches have benches around them as well, which I think would be great to see. Uh, I, I, again, there's a bit of a mystery as to how this material is that material, and it, it's between the columns as opposed to behind the columns. I understand the plastic is an infill, but the kind of concrete slash stone is an infill. I understand. It needs to put some lines on it or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is a nice overall or nice drawing, though I think, um, because yeah. like it shows like. You know, there's some people up here so there's a sectional like a, a little bit of sectional yeah. variation like there's some cross like, i think it's a pretty rich this is a pretty yeah. rich perspective yeah i agree all right let me get uh, we just have a minute another minute or two uh yeah and then this thing I, I just think it needs yeah, better scale better scale deep. figures yeah yeah better scale figures and but this this conjunction these two drawings you need to see them side by side really to, to make the, the point of this. And I thought these diagrams were, I thought this diagram is just terrific. I think- It doesn't cover... have the towers. The one without the towers. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> why it's terrific. <laughs> compare, I mean, compare this to the next one. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's so much better. I mean, look. Which one's better? I mean, I have a clear- The one with the towers is better, Martin. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next next uh, of our, 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 our buildings was, uh, 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 so this is just a very interesting project from the the uh, from the point of view of of absolutism. These is four ruthless bars, four spaces that go up through them. The 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 this is the canal view, right? The, the kind of public view. Uh, the, 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 this is a, a culinary school that then these spaces open up as uh, uh, market spaces during the weekend, and then once a month, uh, a long table is opened up down the length of this building that that cuts this way through and disrupts the whole market space. Is this supposed this is to be raining? I'm sorry, it is supposed to be raining, raining in this drawing. Yeah, yeah. And that, and there's blue sky. I don't. Uh, we, we've gone over the, the dilemma of this drawing. Uh, uh, the, 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 then the, the basic kind of organization of it is that down below this is kind of remarkable. Uh, cistern, uh, water catchment area that cleans water, both water coming off the roof and then water, flood water coming through these uh, openings that are, that are set at that kind of flood line. But you bypass that space to get back to what's that kind of hydroponic farm at the back. Here's that, that overall kind of organization. These four kind of block buildings broken into kind of usable kind of classrooms and kitchens down below. And then a kind of a, a gathering space in the center that becomes the kind of got the, this kind of table thing. Here is the, the view kind of from a distance. So you see that uh, this is the smallest, I think the lowest of the buildings we have in the class uh, in terms of a, a kind of adjusting to, to context. Here, a terrific diagram, I think, that shows you, this is the kind of clearest drawing that goes, boom, there's the axonometric Martin that you wanted, right? That, that just kind of goes, this is, this is how it's done. This is how it's organized. Uh, here a little bit, the roost a little bit people are a little insane making uh, all over the place. This is that kind of drawing of, of when it then opens up to form a table. That's that table that it opens up. We need Sri Lankan people. The table, I think the actual opening up should be more transformative. Uh, these sides are a little annoying. Uh, this is it then when it transforms in flood, the scale of this drawing is off because it suddenly makes these boats look very small. Yeah. It makes the building look very small. Yeah. Is that, here's how water works in the building. Uh, collected by the roof into these kind of gutter beams and then carry it down to these cooling walls to the cisterns below, which filter the water into the, there's the view of the building along the thing. Here's the view of the tower open. This is the view down into that cistern space. It was kind of noted at that, that review that that space should be drawn much more really from sitting on that ledge rather than slightly high aerial view. Here's that kind of space below. Uh, the, the first review team got That's really hung up on who, on who these heads were and, and as opposed to why do you have to know who these heads were? You might not know who these heads were. It's just like the carotids or who the hell, you know? So, I mean, they, they, they need to have an explanation for it in the, the presentation, but I don't think they have to actually have specific people. Uh, I'd be interested to hear your comments on that. Here are the plan that are on. Yeah, I'm sorry. And then these renderings, the renderings desperately need correct scale figures. Uh, uh, yeah. 
and this is the hydroponic tank and the hydroponic kind of garden in the back. So quickly, guys, uh, uh, give me your reactions, responses to these drawings. Okay, so I do, I do like the, uh, this is probably the most absolute uh, in your terms of the projects we've seen. Um, I think the, the main thing that would improve, I do agree that the, the mystery of the heads in the cistern is, is beautiful and amazing. And we need to see another picture of them. Like I would do three shots of that uh, from different angles. Um, I, Cause I just think I, you know, I love it. The, the, I love thing, it too, like, yeah. I have, one, yeah. I have one other thought, Martin. Um, I think that the roof, the big folded roof, um, just sort of waving your hands and saying it's concrete, I think is a tremendously missed opportunity. I think it's, that's that is not a beautiful roof. It's just a folded piece of paper. And yeah, I would love I, I, it, uh, it needs, with, it needs know, another go around. Yeah, or, yeah. It needs some life. That roof is very dead. I actually, I honestly wouldn't even mind, and I, I hate to say this, I actually even wouldn't mind it. I mean, it's an it's an impossible cantilever at this point in time, in, in the way it's thrown. Yes. That was brought this morning. Uh, I do think it could be. I, don't, I I actually don't mind it here. I think here at this edge, I actually wouldn't mind it necessarily if, if at this point it were actually supported. Uh, I, you know, we had a really interesting discussion with Pankaj uh, Virgupta, and he made this really great point, I, and I found it really kind of heartening. He he was talking about the first project he'd done moving from America back to India, and he said it, he showed his cantilevers to a structural engineer, and the structural engineer is a really good guy. He goes, "Why do you do cantilevers at all? You know, it's a waste of steel." And 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 it really kind of completely varied this, his idea about what and how he was thinking about. So, I mean, I understand it here, but, but, but this edge out here, the idea that it might be supported and that supports might actually form a, a, a kind of threshold from how you enter yeah. this to that space down below, I think might be useful. But, but I agree, I, I, it was talked about this morning, this needs to be kind of deliberated further a la Candela and, the and underside, Torojo I think and the so soffit, forth. The soffit needs to be given some love. The soffit itself. The soffit's been big and small and big and small and big and small, but yeah, you're right. That needs material. You, you could also do the, the Mies thing and have something awesome. back there that kind that of holds it up. Hides it from the, hides it above, a hidden above a kind of structure that sits above it, a kind of a, a, a framework, like the back like, side like, of the like Kind of like um, Chicago Mies IIT. Um, yeah, yeah, no, there was a great article this weekend in the New York Times about how guitars are made. And the, the top surface of the guitar has a hidden structure underneath mm -hmm. it. It's quite beautiful. And it, 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 that kind of guitar surface thing. I, I, think, right. that, I think the I, top and the bottom of this roof have to be different. Yeah. I think right. so. I think overall, I, I love the diagrammatic plan organization, like the, the very kind of rigorous gridded well gridded or banded depending on how you look at it right like the, which i think is, is actually the smart thing that it's, it's actually sort of a checkerboard pattern for starters but then it forms these coherent pieces that then kind of form longitudinal spaces that way or depending on where you open that up and i, I think that's actually really strong because it, it hovers between universal space and actually kind of like highly specific spaces um, I'm not quite sure how this guy is integrated. Does this, this does not sit? Is there a section through that somehow, like this way? Uh, there, there's not, and, and and that that thing has been evolving over time. You know, it, okay. it is it is it is uh, it, it's it's a it's a funny thing that you, they have a the diagram of the flood and, and and why they're going back here, and 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 this kind of this kind of edge of the thing being kitchens and part of a market and these these things opening. And there being a kind of hydroponic market back there, the actual renderings, I'll show you the rendering. It's not, you want it to be more full of people, more, come on, this drawing just needs, this, this is where it is, right? So it sits okay. here at the back of these spaces. Here's where these kind of kitchens open up. The market, you've just come through the market, the kitchens open up. You're theoretically buying food and there's, and, and then these, this strange thing is across this hydroponic pond from you, which now right at the moment looks like that the shark pit at a doctor no which i really like you know like <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I i find that part really beautiful that was drawn but yeah it's it's it, it's never quite been resolved but i you know martin t talk to me about it talk talk to me the I mean, groups about it yeah. my initial reaction was that that this sort of like falls off it's almost like oh that's a different building right that's not really part of that and and so i would go go back to that the, the axon where you kind of see the the overall 
something yeah here, right, here some, something like that my my feeling is that they this kind of the gridded structure that sets up the rest of the project should somehow start to organize this a little bit more visibly too so so you get a sense that it's not a bar that's completely off but that it's actually kind of something that's integrated into the overall organizational pattern and and you know maybe there's a way in which the roof actually when when you look at the section like you know this is kind of like the roof and well this was a really crooked line here but this this is sort of like where it stands right now and then this is kind of the other thing maybe this cantilever gets shorter and then this one gets gets longer and then it ties back into something that happens here or well this is actually kind of not not a good solution that i just threw there but i'm glad um, you said that because they've tried that and, and it, they've iterated the absolute hell out of this it, thing yeah and it and it, we, what, they, what they came to in the end was that it was better to offset this to divide this by the same number of bays as this one over the larger space so that you uh -huh. came up on this platform and you saw it but but it might be that actually what what the thing that you're hinting at which i actually like a lot which is that maybe these units inside here realign themselves with these with these i think, that I that, think it could be subtle yeah. as that yeah yeah so that you now you look at this diagram and you go there's this thing again and again yeah and again and again, and you go one, two, three, one, two, three, and it binds the whole thing together. And then this this other world around there obscures it a bit. I, Does that make sense? I think that that could be all that's needed. Yeah, I think that that yeah. could already maybe do the trick. Um, my, the other, my 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 pre pre preference would be to make it crazier. It's, Michael, it's been at one point in time, it literally looked like Dr. Seuss had drawn it. It was Dr. Seuss level crazy, which I I mean I'm fully behind. You know me. I'm I'm like. And it just wasn't, it, it, it just... That seems it, to be the impulse behind it. Suddenly we have parabolic hoops, you know, it just seems like it's trying to be happy and, and loose. I would give it an amorphous plan. Um, it's like, it's like against, a, it's like a museum in front of a forest. Um, Dude, it, it had an amorphous plan and it looked like every 60 year old landscape architect, you know, working today. <laughs> you know, honestly, like, like, you know, organic versus, and you're like, just shoot. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, do they want to win the competition or not? We're not hearing from any students, which actually, is, it, it, either they're horrified or this is, this is useful. It, 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 interesting to know. Uh, uh, they're probably under the table. It could also be that it needs just a bracket on that piece that like some something that happens here actually is more tied into that system and then in between here it can be amorphous well actually you, you guys are pointing out a really beautiful thing and it's almost worth giving a studio or as, as, as a vertical studio project i don't know what i just did i don't want to draw it which is, is which is that the, the site it had these bars like this and then the site actually did this Right, so, or, or the available space. And the question was, how do you put something back there that relates to this? And it's, it turns out, you go, there's gotta be a precedent somewhere in Roman architecture, in Greek architecture, there's none. It's an incredibly difficult, it's an incredibly difficult problem. All right, all right, so, so, so uh, hold on. Uh, I'm gonna clear your drawings, Martin, is that okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. All right, so now I've got to find my mouse, which is there. All right, back to this. Well, uh, one or two last comments about this, and then we're going to move to the, the last project. I, I liked, so there's a perspective where you see the heads lurking out from below. Um, it's not the full underground perspective, but you basically just see the heads kind of peeking out. Oh, yeah, it's this, it's this, um, yeah, it's, it's, I know which one you mean. It's this one. This, this yeah. one. And yeah, this one here, I, and I think there's something extraordinarily creepy about it that, you know, you have this, you have this sort of clean, beautiful, somewhat like modernist building. And then underneath, there's like the postmodern revenge kind of waiting to kind of creep out from the sewers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that should be strengthened. I think, I think that gap. That that line where you see their heads lurk. I think that is really the main theme of this drawing, not the space in there. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm I, I, I just I keep trying to get the mouse to turn to a pencil. Use your, use your trackpad. 
it's not my trackpad. You don't want to hear what, what happens when I use my trackpad. My voice turns <laughs> into a, ro a robot. <laughs> it literally, it, 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 students, we have a, a system for it. The students go like this. So I immediately know that I'm, I'm, I'm sounding like a robot. Where's that drawing? Uh, it's, it, it, it's a big drawing. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, so for me, you know, Mark, now I agree with you. I think this is an interesting drawing, but I, I think you'd have to close these panels up. Right now, these are really distracting from mm. this, this whole thing, right? And, and you, you tone this whole thing down. You come slightly closer to where you, you get a sense of people sitting on these stairs. It opens up just a little bit. And, and yeah, this, it might be also at an angle that you come at it from a slight angle as opposed to dead on axial. You know, like I, I think, I, yeah, all right. All right, any last comments about this project? I'm, I'm good. Yep. All right. All good. I'm empty. Sweet. Uh, so this last project is, is, that we're, we're going to see is a super interesting project too. So the, 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 the basis of it is the, the idea that uh, the civic space in uh, 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 Sri Lanka has this history, a big civic forum. They began as religious schools, Piravena. Uh, uh, Buddhist schools uh, in which there are a number of uh, uh, elements. There's a, 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 a stupa, a Bodhi tree, a gathering hall, and then a kind of green space. And in this proposal, there is a, a new Piravena, which is lifted up in the space frame. We're all aware that space frame is a steel space frame is a bad idea for a hot, humid environment. But the students that work at the school, they paint that space frame like the George Washington Bridge. Okay, let's just Part of their part of their worship, most uh, or twenty roughly twenty percent of the schools in in Sri Lanka are still this Piravena form, and it's like it's like a it's like a like a like an Episcopalian school here. Lots of non Episcopalians go to Episcopal schools. It's just a standard form of, of private school, um, and it it floats above a forum. So the, the the space that's on the ground has been turned into a kind of public forum in which there are various kinds of programs: swimming pool, debate hall, library, that. That are, are concatenated on that space, all of which has been lifted above the, the ground plane of the street. So the ground plane has essentially been abandoned in favor of this lifted world. And then the, the students of the Piravena live in this kind of vert, the students and the monks live in this kind of vertical thing. There are in the, at the bottom level, there are there are, are market stalls that open onto the forum and open onto the street. So just to give you a kind of or, a, a kind of idea of the organization of it, it's based on this uh, remarkable set of precedents, these kind of high mountain. Uh, 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 religious uh, uh, precincts. This is arguably the most extraordinary, the, the Sijiriya. The Sijiriya. Uh, but, and, and you can see in them a couple of actual things that, that play into the, the, the development of the project. One, the, the kind of presence of this kind of central water body. Uh, as a, the second, the kind of the, the disruptive nature of rocks and rock geometry, which is this very interesting type form in Sri Lanka is the only place I've ever seen it where almost every garden has a matrix of paths but somewhere in there there's a rock that disrupts that matrix it's really intriguing you would like it martin very much it's just like this intentionally disruption in the matrix that that it's, then sets up the way you perceive the whole space it's really yeah, it, it, it's it's super fascinating I'm, i think i'm going to go down an internet rabbit hole after this <laughs> yeah i've never seen this Right. Um, so then, then there, each of these, they have certain elements I mentioned being kind of true, the, the, the gate, the, the gate, the, the, the mm -hmm. central hall, the Bodhi tree, stupa as this kind of a, a source of, now in their proposal, so the, the, there's the diag the forum, the, so the forum uh, has this kind of matrix of paths, it's disrupted by the rock, uh, there, are, there are badminton nets, there's a swim pool, there's a lecture hall, there's a, there's a debate hall, there's a library, the library is one of the ways up to the, the Piravena. There it is in plan. And then the Piravena sits above that as this uh, uh, steel frame, which is held up by the, the frame across the front and then by the rock and then by the library coming through. And then you can see that it's basically a kind of, uh, a kind of U-shaped ring of, 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 lecture, of meeting halls around these kind of open element, the Bodhi tree, the stupa, the stupa and the, the Bodhi tree has been brought here from elsewhere. The stupa also preserved from flooding uh, uh, in the area. Bring the Bodhi tree. 
Yeah, you can. You, there are, this is actually, this is, of course you can. It's not gravity, Michael. The, the only thing you can't do is have buildings fall over and kill you. You can lift stupas. There's we only got into one a big building. argument with Wilfred about this. Don't, don't Wilfred me out, duty. Every Listen, single man, one of these. There's only one Bodhi tree. It's the Bodhi tree. But every single Buddhist temple in Sri Lanka also has a Bodhi tree, right? So, no, so you can so, have one of those. Right, you can have one of those, or you can move one out of out of an incipient of, uh, out of an incipient floodplain. Right, so there, there okay. it's, you're right. There is only one Bodhi tree. Fair enough. We and in fact, what's really interesting is the oldest Bodhi tree in Sri Lanka is grown from an offshoot of the original Bodhi tree. So, That's what so I'm just, saying. Just, so, so there's this really remarkable heritage of trees in in anyway, but just so don't Wilfred me out here, man. I'm just saying that you're. <laughs> just, he was like, you can't do that. And I'm going, yes, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the oh. Bodhi tree, you're right. It's a Wait, Bodhi you tree. See this, you see this building here, David? Yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. And then here's the, the Piravena plan, which we, we it, it, the, the fourth spot here is a is an open, there's, a, there's the, the stupa, the Bodhi tree, the library, and then there's an opening which looks down into the opening of the swimming pool down below. And then here, the, the perspective across the canal here it, in flooded conditions. So you can see this, this, this unfortunately floods the, the, the forum, which I, I, I want to disagree with my group about. It shouldn't really flood the forum. The forum really should be the, the high ground. Here, the, I'll just show you the kind of quickly show you, take you through the drawings. Uh, used to a section here, the, the view from the pool the view into the forum from a kind of higher view level. There's the library beyond with these kind of, and there's this, in this, this project, there's quite nice, there's, there, there are these systems of circulation where you're always circulating around the outside. So you're circulating the outside of the library, you're circulating around the forum, you're circulating around the, 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 the Piravena, and you're circulating around these rooms as you work your way up. Here, the least nice drawing in the entire thing, the, the view at the Piravena where you go, wait, I got up to here for this? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, so back to this thing. So guys, feed, information to this group. I have well, one very the, specific comment. Thing. Michael, do you want to go first? Well, I was going to say quickie. This is the best rendering of all because it has the complete dynamic range. It goes from black to white. I think that they need to go back to all their renderings and uh, you know, give, it, give them the decent, uh, uh, like up the finesse of the rendering the light quality and get the dynamic range to match the this. dynamic range there. Plus, they yeah. need to get this. This thing has got to be accessible. I, 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 like this, this surface, this, this drives me crazy. Well, I'm not talking like about design form. changes. I'm just going. No, 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 no. I, I understand yeah. what you're saying. I'm just using it. If you want to win the competition, it. you like a couple of those perspectives really, really are under under rendered. Right. I, I think this rendering is, is technically super nice. I don't like I feel what's difficult about this rendering on this like from looking at it from this side is that there is now a real competition so obviously we have this element right which is sort of like the dominant element and that that kind of makes the space in relation to kind of that ground and then we have this piece back here that has the same kind of it, it's sort of an awkward situation because it has it, it's sort of like it, it's it's like a really weird section <laughs> That way, uh, it's so weird. Um, but but it's that's actually kind of cool about it. Well, for lack of a better word, that's not a very academic word. But I think what happens is that this one competes. The slab now competes with this tower in this rendering, and it makes me sort of it. It feels that there is like really two elements that are approximately worth the same. And then in a lot of the other perspectives from like, or even the section, if you, if you flip further through, it actually seems that it's much more of a diagram. Oh, that's um, the elevation right there, by the way, I, I agree with you. It, it, it seems like it's, uh, we're, we're, it's an interesting discussion. Let me go back to the, the section that you wanted. Yeah. Uh, I, I like, like that. something like this or, or something like, well, maybe not that, something like this where it's really like, yeah, this one here, it's it's more like the Peters Schule, like the Hannes Meyer or a project like that. That's really kind of awkward in a, in a way that it has, that that's the project. And then of course there's structure and stuff above and below that that it needs to hold up or, or to function. But it's, it's really sort of like a giant kind of tea or, or something, I, I think. I like this 
better. I think this is clearer than the one where the tower competes with the slab, in my opinion. It's a, it's a funny because we, we got into this. Is a, this is the, 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 this, I mean, theoretically, the project could, could get rid of this whole face, right? And then it's just the, the school floating above. But it, I swear to God, when it's gone, it's worse. It's far better with this wall there. It's weirder. It's less, it is less understandable. It's less predictable. It's less, it's less clear how it works. I, I think, I think this wall, as much as I, I think this elevation is just absolutely brilliant. But I, I think that it's still somehow too dense or somehow too, it, 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 you're right. It, 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 what, what's happening right now is you lose the it's form. It's too unclear. It's just I, I don't mind clear. it being unclear. Let, let me, I'm just sorry. Let me just flip forward to it. What I think is my favorite elevation I've seen in the school this year. I think this elevation, this, this kind of pixelated, impossible to focus on That's surface nice. is really nice. But, but what's, getting, what's getting lost in all this is the form. Right, the forum, the the the, the you're, Martin, you're right. The di the dialectic is is the dialogue is this dialogue up and mm -hmm. down. And mm -hmm. right now, this thing takes away. But if you completely remove this face, then it just becomes too diagrammatic. So it's it's a it's a really weird uh, uh, phenomena in this project that that just that 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 you need that wall. But but getting it here, you see it again. It's too strong. It, the, the, it's too something. It, it too too. Now it's better when you when you, when you turn away from it and you focus on the elements of the forum. You know, it, yeah. I think it's good. I like the wall as it is. I just think the drawing needs to punch up a little bit in terms. Of I like the, the wall there. more than this guy. The, like the, I, the library. Yeah, I, I think this this is good, but I, I want this to be more of an element like this, or or maybe it's actually a question of. You know, it could be that the library comes up, but then is reflected by some sort of like, like it actually kind of manifests itself as a void up there that, that then sort of like ties this void into that one. That, so, so you have these elements that are kind of like scattered throughout. I actually don't mind this at all. <laughs> I don't either. I, I, I don't mind I, the idea that it's been lifted off of a riverbank uh, somewhere. I, I, I just, I think it should be bigger. <laughs> you're not fighting with the enemy here I, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and the tree should be bigger too the tree looks like a weak thing I agree, I think the tree should be bigger also. it needs a I, big ball for its roots it needs an upside down box for its roots there, there's a yeah. bit of a question what is superstructure and what is infill right? Like, I, so, so this is obviously superstructure this is superstructure and then is this Part of the superstructure or part of the infill? This right now reads as infill just as much as that or as that or as that. No, the, then, library is, the library is actually structural. So the library, the library holds up one part so, of that frame. Yeah. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of an odd element. You're you're wanting it to be purer and and they're wanting it to be less pure. And but no, I, I, I think actually, it should be I think it should be structure and show some diagonals, diagonals. Because you've got that big obelisk monolith thing, which with which is supporting part of the roof as well. It should and be, I think yeah. I, I wish it was just sawn off at the top, and and, and this thing came down. Right. But you're, mm -hmm. I think, I think Martin, you're, you're, I think both of you guys are right. I, I think this thing actually, when you look at it, actually, it's the thing which is least kind of, kind of clear. Maybe it should be more open. Maybe the kind of the way the brick is stacked, or the way the stone, mm -hmm. the stack, larger bricks are used to make it more open, more evident and then the frame might get expressed through it somehow i mean i i i, I think you guys are pointing your you're in the right you guys in the right direction that you go well the, on this one it's the the tower that sits on the rock and here you you sort of want it to read through and it's surrounded mm -hmm. by the by that structure one of the something something along those lines i think would be would be great i gotta and i think sorry. the inside of the stupa dome is hollow right so you can see up into it uh, I don't think so. No, the stupa has a, it is a, it's a solid, it's a, it is essentially a concretized mound and it has a tunnel into it. And then the, the tunnel has a circular tunnel that, it, that it, 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 along which uh, uh, the uh, shrines are placed, but it is itself a solid mound, which is really mind bending. Like there's a middle, but you can't get to it. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Boy, it's so improbable. But um, I think if the tree, if the tree has a root ball, then the root ball and the stupa get into a dialogue, which I enjoy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Mean, that, that, it's, I, the, yeah. it's these surreal objects standing in relation to each other 
which I think is the, is the, is the secret of the project. And for me, the library belongs to the space frame. I don't mind. It's another T. But the library is also, it, it's sort of like a weird in between. I feel like the library is big enough to have another weird object sort of like embedded in it in some way that, that, that sort of like then navigates between kind of the weird objects and the yeah. space frame. I, I, I think it's like the library is just not quite the class of space frame that these pieces are because it has different dimensions. It doesn't adhere, like it's, it's inset. So it reads as less important, but at the same time, it's so massive that it also doesn't quite read as like one of those weird objects. So I, I think that, and I'm not saying that that can't be, like you can't have either or, or like both end, um, but I feel yeah. it, it's not like, may, it just maybe it needs to be more complex in that way that it, that it is both end really. Yeah. All right, here's the thing guys. Thank you so much. We got to, we just, we're right at five, like five, we, we just ran through the time. This was the best review that I've been on. So the most useful, like, like, like the, the most useful Zoom review. I, I, I realized I'm going to change the way I do reviews. I'm not going to have the students present at all. We're just going to talk about what they've got and talk about <laughs> what, what you understand from it. You know? Like, cause it's really useful to, to just hear you guys kind of like, like that, think it through. That, 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 that works because it, you, it, it's a competition, and you. Oh yeah, you're right. That's right. That's right. That's right. If point. you if you guys were a screening committee for the competition committee, that, that's know, a good like, point. That, that, that's, that, how, that's, 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 that's how you're going to get evaluated in a competition. What's going to win? But, 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 win. But I've always yeah. said that that all studios should be competition studios. At the end of the review, the jurors should say, "This is the best project." Everyone else has to repeat the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 <laughs> like, 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 you know, like, I love the idea of just saying, "Yeah, it's like practice." You, know, you didn't get the commission. Sorry, you know, like, get back, yeah. get back to the drawing board. Yeah, listen, I, I, I'm going to stop the share here and, and ask uh, all the students to kind of join in. Uh, I, I really uh, uh, appreciate that, guys. I don't know if there's, we are literally out of time and I need to, to meet with my group again, uh, but I, I just want to say thank you. That I really, really- uh, It was my pleasure. A lot of fun, David, as ever. And I look well, the first two sessions, the first two sessions this morning were really like, 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 like a fucking morgue. I mean, that's all I can say. It was, it was like a wake. It was like looking at dead bodies and having people go, I never really liked them anyway. You know, I, that was, what it was, that was it was like it was like two funerals. It was it was terrible. So I, I really appreciate you guys putting the energy in and being super positive. I think it's a great way to end the day. And and uh, uh, thanks a ton. Really, I, 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 yeah, I think, project. I like the, well done. I mean, I like the positivity in the projects. I mean, I think there's of, of course not everything is resolved technically or formally or conceptually, but but I just think there was a daringness in the project. There was like an outgoingness and like. That I think was was really nice to see, and like yeah, I, think, I love how undoctrinaire. It it, it I mean it just it just seemed I mean, like you guys yeah. had fun doing it too, which I think is important. Yeah. yeah. Well, this whole und the whole thing about undoctrinaire. I mean, I, I just I, I, I and it, it's it's got to be tied to, in my mind to the notion that that we're a generation that doesn't understand sustainability, and this next generation could use that to kill us. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 the way because I was educated right at the end of the modern, right at the start of the postmodern, and I swear to God, the students just felt like the professors were idiots, right? And, and you had this power as a student and, and it just seems like there's this thing out there. It's not actually technical, right? It's actually cultural and, and, and the kind of questions about projections about it, it just seemed like this, this kind of realm where students could invent like whole wholesale invention, you know, like, like and, and it just seems like this kind of moment for it. Uh, and I, uh, so yeah, you're right. The buildings are not resolved. You know, not only the buildings not resolved, the engineering is not resolved. The, the, the mechanical systems, the actual way it might work, is not resolved. But but even then, uh, we we talked at length with Tim Crest. You know, uh, uh, Michael, you know Timmy. You know, he's he's now a partner at 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 uh, at, at Bureau Hoppold, right? And and he's like, yeah, you know, we don't hire engineers. We hire architects, and because we need them to come into the office. To, to, to think about what these things might be, you know, and what they might do. So that was kind of the starting, the leaping off point for the studio, which I-, which I Well, had. let me say, I will, can I offer just one slightly critical comment, the ones I saw? Absolutely. I think the students gave rather too sober uh, narratives for their quite mm -hmm. surreal proposals. You know, like those first few statements, they were also very, very serious. I, I think an art statement 
I mean, you should hear you should hear Dikers present a project to, to executives. I mean, it's truly metaphorical and wild. He, people will listen to a great story, and I think a lot of these buildings deserve a better story than they got. It's a, it's a good point. I mean, I, I, I think it's a, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. That, that's really on me because yeah. I was trying to, to just redress yeah. this issue about you've got to, you've got to be able to tell someone. You have to be able to, you get stuck in the elevator with the mayor and the mayor wants to know why your building's good. And all you can say yeah. is, well, I, I, you know, you've got to have a reason. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, but you've got to be able to say things like, I mean, this is, the, yeah, this city needs to bring the mountains right into the middle of the city. Like, what? And because you just like yeah, leave an image right. in someone's head or something, you know. I, I damn it, Michael. Thank you for ruining our day again. Here, <laughs> here it is with you. It's, it's like up, down, up, down, and then you're right. That was great. You're right. That's that was a great statement. Intent. I, I, I not totally, my intention. I would totally buy that. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate Bye. it. Bye. Great point. Hey, right. Michael, thanks a ton. I'll see you on your review. Martin, I'll see you too. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great work. Bye bye. All right, so here I'm gonna go 